All right, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> here we are, another uh, outward stream, getting ready to get into it, very excited. Let's go, Jeremiah, how's it going, my friend? Hopefully you're having a good day. I am pumped to be back into this whole chakram business, been having a lot of fun with the chakrams. Um, last time I checked, we were in the middle of defeating Rust and Vengeance, like, at the very end, actually. We just need the last key, which is in arguably the hardest location. And then we can move on. What's up, random guy? How's it going? What's up, guys? Alright, the one thing I do want to do is maybe get... Maybe get some more stamina foods. I don't know if I had enough last time I left. Yeah, no, I guess I have eight marshmallows. I'm fine. That's, that's actually a lot. I guess we're good. We need to find Dreamer's Root, though. Starting streaming outward later on Twitch. Oh, nice, my dude. Well, good luck. What build are you going for? You gonna do whatever pops into your head, or are you gonna pick something exclusive? How can I help you? There's so many different things to try and create. My favorite part. I think I do need some money here. I gotta buy some of these potions. If I if you don't buy potions for the last two parts of this quest, you are screwed. That for Sheen? Yeah, what's up, Jeremiah? That's awesome, dude. A rogue build? Oh, nice. Yeah, rogue builds are sick. You can't go wrong with a rogue build. Yeah, rogue builds are... are really, really fun. Rogue builds have really good fashion, too. Rogue builds have really good fashion. Because there's just a lot of different armor pieces that look amazing with rogue builds. How can I help you? Alright, we're gonna buy these, and these arguably a bad idea, but we're gonna do it anyway. Okay. We're gonna take this now. How much am I at? 34%. We'll just take one of these to get completely rid of it. 0% corruption. Save two of those for later. And we should be a okay. Should be. Okay, let's see. Do, do, do. We have a lot of keys, too, that I don't necessarily need. Fill up on water, and we're good to go. I gotta find the exit, though. I think I just have to go to a train. We also get to start Caldera today, which will be fun. I'm not sure if I should be worried for any specific enemies over there, but we'll see. Mighty Suck, what's going on? Welcome to the stream. Holy Moses, what's up, my guys? Hey, Sheen, would you say a Fire Ice build's more powerful? Um, Fire is easily more powerful because you can get it buffed higher. But Fire, there are more enemies completely immune to Fire. I don't think there's a single enemy completely immune to Ice. There are enemies resistant, mostly Wendigos, but I don't think anything completely resistant. So, if you wanted to deal the most optimal damage, I would go with ice. But there is a way to buff your fire damage up to like a hundred and... Actually, I think past 200%. It could get kind of crazy. Don Weaver, what's up? Frostlin, what's going on, my friend? Starter on Twitch and YouTube. Oh, nice. Okay. I think we go left. I think there's a bridge that we can get to pretty easily. No work today? I'm here for some sheet shot shenanigans. Nice. It's awesome, Jeremiah. Glad you got the day off. That's sick. Hopefully we could find that lay world. I think it's just around the corner here. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it isn't. It just depends on the day. But hopefully it'll be right here. No, it appears I already grabbed. Oh, yep. There it is. 
Look at these little guys. Thinking they can hide from me? Ridiculous. Ridiculous. And Dreamy's Root. Now we can get rid of that Lay Wilt and have perfect mana cost. Kibo, what's up, my friend? How's it going? Faltano? Good morning, Sheet Shots. How's it hanging? What's up, Faltano? Let's go pretty well. How you doing, man? I'm excited to be back at Outward. I mostly been playing Hogwarts Legacy this weekend, so <laughs> I haven't played Outward much this weekend. Currently working on my top five chakras video, which surprised me. There is a chakra on there that is actually really good that I did not initially think was really anything. Also, Vigilante grants three chakram or uh, three protection, which is interesting. Three protection from a chakram? That's kind of cool. Happy love to everyone. Yeah, happy Valentine's Day, everybody. It is the Valentine's Day stream. Hope you're all having a good time. I'm wrapping up the final new Sirocco achievement before looking to start my second playthrough. I was actually considering the fire build you did a while back. Um, is that the one with all the magic? Or you have the legacy chest, the crimson avatar stuff? Oh, it's not a bad build. There's some stuff I would definitely do different, though. If you're going to do a fire build, you always want to use the white hat. I think you take the black hat and legacy chest it. The white mage hat is, I think it's the wide white hat, maybe? It's S tier. It's probably the best for fire damage. Just because it has really high negative mana cost as well. It fits into both. Top five best food items, maybe? That's not a bad idea. I know Sierzo Ceviche might be on there. Sierzo Ceviche is pretty S tier. Especially early game, because it can be made relatively easily, I think. Thanks, Sheen, from the Outward videos. They have helped a lot. Awesome, dude. Yeah, you should be good to <laughs> stream now. You might know what you're talking about, <laughs> hopefully. Watching some stuff. Went with Kazite Spellblade. We'll probably use Philosopher as well. Oh, definitely. With Kazite Spellblade, Philosopher is perfect. It's really weird because a lot of people, are, you know, you don't want to use Philosopher because mana region is not necessary. But whenever I use Kazite Spellblade, it feels like Philosopher complements it almost perfectly. It's just one of those things that it doesn't feel like it should, but it just does. Antique Plate Helm with Economy is the best in my eyes. Oh, you can't go wrong with that, Faltano. Of course. You can't go wrong with the best option in the game, right? <laughs> Love that set. I need to do a... another. I need to do a run with just that full set, just for... Just for the memes, you know? I don't think I've live-streamed a full set of it. Howard has a bit fun to watch. Yeah, it's it's pretty fun. All right, I think we're in the end, which means we need to get to the train. Which means I don't think there's any enemies. I'm pretty sure I cleared everything. But it won't take long because I know where I'm going. <laughs> you play Demon Souls? Yeah, or can I not play? <laughs> oh, we're definitely playing Demon Souls next. That is, that's the idea. I don't know if I'm going to stream Harry Potter again. Or whatever it is, you know, Hogwarts Legacy. Uh, for right now, because I'm currently working on content for it, so. We may just move on for the moment, come back to it if I can. But it's a pretty fun game. I don't know if someone asked me about it earlier. It's a pretty fun game. I like the magic system. The combat's very well done. From what I have played. Shoot your train. What's up, Yo2? How's it going? Still very new to the game, so I'm learning as I go, of course, from your videos, but I'm planning on spamming Elemental Discharge and abusing Sky Crown, Mace, Frost damage with all the buffs. Yeah, that'd be the way to go. Take the Ice Infused, spam um, melee attacks with Sky Crown, and you're just going to be absolutely destroying. Yeah, again, I don't know what it is. It's just Philosopher feels really nice with that region for... Because I spell, but I think it might be because because I spellblade is pretty heavy on your mana. You've got a boon which is eight mana. You've got the infuse which is fifteen. We're already above twenty mana in one single thing you need to cast, and then elemental discharge is fifteen per. So, minimum you're casting thirty mana just to use your ability. Let's see. We need to go to mana transfer. The best part about this place is it is killer on your frame rate. 
machine grinding videos yet. <laughs> Just want to see Bloodborne already. Dude, I'm excited for Bloodborne too. Bloodborne will be after Demon Souls for sure. Any recommendations on armor combination for Zagus, Saul, Enchanted with Crumbling Anger? Honestly, just go for physical damage because it inflicts pain. So Zagus armor would be really good because I mask. Boots could be the scaled leather if you really wanted it to. I think maybe I'll take... We'll just do discipline right now. I was hoping that would last, but that was a lot longer of a walk than I anticipated. Take a little bit of water. Our mana regen's fine. We'll do more of it, though. With mana regen and the philosopher, you really have really high mana regen. Currently buying the last legacy game later. Oh, really? I don't know if I know about that one. What's up, bud? No, I don't think so. Not about that. Also, Rogue Engineer. Wow. A lot of fun. And blast. You're dead. I hate when they stand in their own green goop. It's like, get out of there, man. Come on. What are you doing? What are you doing? Get out of there. Ooh, particle. We've been pretty unlucky on those. Maybe today our luck will change. Totally not watching this vid with popcorn in my bed. <laughs> That's epic, my man. The perfect way to start the day. Or maybe end the day for you, I don't know. Using any mana on your build with Zagasaw? If not, you can use Shadow Kazite. Oh, Shadow Kazite wouldn't be a bad idea either. Do I want to... Weirdly enough, I don't know if I've used my Fishing Harpoon at all this whole game. Good thing I don't have it in my inventory. And you know, I was surprised... I think last time I did the Sorobor faction, there was a part where you get to come in here, and that was really cool. I'd never seen that before. Start your day? Nice. Perfect way to start your day. Thinking of a more tanky armor, since the saw is quite slow. His Zagus arm would be really good. Um, You could also go Zar boots. Zar boots are really good boots. They are probably the best of the Zar armor, considering negative stats and positive stats on them. They're pretty good. Technically, the chest plate's the best, but the chest plate has pretty high neg or, uh, bad bonuses. If you get past those, they're pretty good, too. Yeah, I really love to team up in this area. We're just gonna eat a few attacks. Ooh, look at that. Sit down, my friend. Have a plate full. I wish I could put food on my chakram and throw it at the enemy. Kind of like serving them dinner, but then they die. That was a weird thought that just came to my head, but it's where I'm at right now. I feel good about it, too. Throwing dinner at my foes. 17, 14 p.m. for you? Ah. A little, a little bit later. <laughs> What's up, Matthew? How's it going, man? Ready for this? Wait, 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 wait. Yes, it worked. It's sometimes an insta-kill. Get it going. He's cake. I don't know why I'm picking those up. Oh, bullion. I need bullion for later. The bullion. Bullion. The best food ever. Wrong chakra for those foods, though. You have to use the pizza for that? Yeah, fair enough. I guess I can throw the pizza at him. Okay, are we buffed? No, we're not buffed. I want to do a build around shield charge and shield infusion, but I don't really know how to give it an angle. It's so weird that shield infusion is a mercenary skill. Um, It works very well with it just because of the running. So what you do is you take mercenary, and then you go... If you want to use shield... Oh, wait. Shield charge. All right, yeah, you, you could do whatever you want, honestly. Then don't use Gong Strike. I really don't like Gong Strike. If you want to use Gong Strike, I don't actually think it fits very well with uh, Mercenary at all. I think it works completely differently. Oh, I didn't buff my. Oh, that's a problem. Why 
I definitely dodged, buddy. I mean, this is one of those moments where the elemental does more damage than the shell horror. Like, Gong Strike can work, but I don't think it works as well if you use Shield and Fuse. Like, Shield and Fuse is technically better. If you take that route. You attack more, please. This was a close battle, honestly. I got almost down to half health. A lot closer than it should have been, that's for sure. Mm, do I need palladium? I don't think I do. But I do need those. Healing, please. Where is my healing at? Here we go. You tried brand with this build yet? I have not tried brand with this build yet. And the thing is, I'll probably try and grab it before I go to Caldera. It's going to... It's going to be stupid. That That's the problem. It is going to be too good. <laughs> Well, especially with this hat, because it buffs cold damage. This hat is crazy with this. It might be the best hat for me to even use. I was kind of surprised by that option. Again, I wanted to use Ornate, but I didn't work out. Where's the other guy? Okay, he's over there. If I can bum rush this dude, we are in a good spot. If I can't, we're immediately put into a bad spot. So let's keep that in mind. K resist. What do I want here? Probably rebuff with water just in case. Oh, does it get a little bit better healing too? That's a good idea. Punch of paste. There we are. Alright, the big boy. Hopefully that guy didn't move. Oh, he moved, alright. Alright, we're gonna drop bag because we are overweight. Dang it. I think I aggro both. And I dropped my bag in a bad location. It's fine. He's gonna walk over to me and he's gonna slap me in the face. Nope. Ooh, good impact. We're gonna switch chakrams, I think. Maybe a good idea to use both on this guy. He's kind of a more tanky. That was a mistake. Okay, we go around this corner. There we go, he's on fire. That's what I wanted. Oh my word. That was good damage, actually. That was really good damage. We have much higher physical with this, too. Yeah, that's what I thought. Sit down. Sit down. Does it have more impact? I think it had less, didn't it? That frost is just destroying. How much frost damage do I have? 26? That's from the... Dude, That is it? That's from frost and fuse alone? I have 26 damage. What? Plus the hat bonus and the cool boon? No, I don't have the cool boon. I can get even higher, actually. Dang. Like the design of this unique elemental, oh, he's he's pretty fantastic. It's one of my favorite enemies to fight. The what's he called? The chromatic arcane elemental. Oh, hey, he dropped two particles for me too. Now the problem is, I don't think I should have this chitin because I think the chitin is putting me way overweight. Yeah, it was. Look at that health, though. I mean, my health's back up. Everything's back up. I love this. It's fantastic. <laughs> That's fantastic. Okay. Angel food cake gives us discipline. That I did not know. That may be really easy to craft as well. And we're just going to run heavy for now, I think. I'll probably move some potions to my bag. Uh, what I would probably do for the last cave is grab Mofinos because there is... A insane amount of loot that I don't want to miss out on. See you, Don Weaver. Somehow I never freed the Trog Trader. That's a pretty fun quest. I mean, it's not necessary in any way is the thing. 
That's why a lot of people don't even need to do it. It's good for potions, but like... I feel like the Trog Trader's there for your first couple times through the dungeon. Because you're going to be getting full and you're going to be spending a lot more time in the dungeon not knowing where to go but then again the first couple times you do it you don't know how to do the truck so it's kind of a weird place it's a fun quest though you get to save a little truck you get to save a little truck it's pretty awesome morning sheen what's up corvo how's it going man i seen you joined the discord i think that was pretty sick welcome to the stream we are going to pre-buff, because I know for a fact... See, one of the things about this area specifically, first time I played, there's no indication of where the enemies are going to be, and it's a pretty dark area. So you don't know if you're going to get jumped or not. And I always like that. That was pretty cool. Truck Trader is a blessing for those of us that like hoarding items, buying and selling things inside a big dungeon. It's a godsend. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's just in a weird place where if you know what you're doing, you don't need to do it. But if you don't know what you're doing, you should do it, but can't, you know? it's. But it's a really fun quest. I'm glad it's there. All right, should I bring Lantern? I think I'm going to. If I can aggro the Shell Horror... Actually, I can grab this right now. There we go. That was easy. All right, Shell Horror, come on, buddy. We don't want to fight you and the other guy. That's a terrible idea. Three, two, one... Brace. That was way mistimed, but it's fine. That hit him every time. That was awesome. Uh-oh. Get the big boy on us now, too. Deals really good damage. He should die. I'm going to switch to the other guy already. Yep. If I can... This guy... What's surprising about this dude is he has extremely low impact resist. Compared to his buddy. Although that is nearly impossible to dodge. Which I don't like. Okay. I feel like that should have hit me, but alright. I feel like these guys have insanely, like, low impact resist, but then they are homing tracking missiles with those stupid decay things. Let's buy potions for 45 silver, plus the unique boss in the electric hatchery drops the purity potion. Oh, does he really? That's interesting. Interesting. Watch your money guide finally. I was just wondering how do you get rid of the corruption that early in the game? You didn't touch on it in the video. Oh, that's where we're that's what we're talking about. Um so the reason I didn't touch on it in that video is because it is it's unnecessary to even worry about corruption. Now you do need to worry about it in the sense you don't want to be sitting in corruption the whole time. But really after you get done with Wind Temple, you can just go from Wind Temple to Berg and buy the the potions. There's the two potions in town that you can... I think they're the purity ones. No, they might be Sanctifier. I don't remember. But the little red ones... I think I have one in my inventory. Sanctifiers. Yeah, you buy two of the Sanctifiers and it'll cure pretty much everything you have. Now, that's gonna depend on how well you do the, the Wind Temple, because if you get hit by the enemies, they actually corrupt you more. So, you gotta be careful, but... For the most part, I never leave there more than tainted. You could also... I guess you could go there with Boozu, but you don't really need to. But yeah, corruption, I mostly ignore it until I get back to Berg, and then I just cure all of it and then move on. Innocence, Sanctifier, Purity, right. I never even use Innocence, I don't think. Probably should, but I never do. It's pretty good for the last part. Pretty good for the last part. But I'll uh, see you, random guy. Good luck, my dude. Alright. That's literally the entire dungeon. I'm definitely going to go back to... 
Actually, we may go back to living quarters because I'm pretty sure that the ice elemental was active. And the ice elemental is outside here. We're going to go back to town and grab a Phenos. I probably should have done that beforehand, but I didn't. And since it's a DOT that heals corruption per second, Sanctifier heals 20%, Purity is like 50. Right. Sanctifier is... How long does Sanctifier last? Not Sanctifier. Innocence. I wonder how long that lasts. We should test that. Recommend upgrading the Sanctifier to Purity. One Sanctifier gives you three Purity. Yes, it's a much better idea. But oftentimes... Especially when you're in Berg, you don't have a Particle yet. If you do have a Particle, you 100% should do that. Good day, Sheen. What debuff is this? Those flying stuff around you? Ah, Arthur. What's going on, my friend? So this is actually a Hex that you can apply to enemies, but I got it applied to myself. So I'm weaker to decay damage. Um, And I deal less decay damage. I got it from the Centaur creatures here in the Antique Plateau. They're, I think, the only one that inflicts Curse Hex. I don't know for sure. But it's pretty annoying because they're almost always going to inflict it just because they have a homing beacon attack. But it doesn't hurt too much, especially since they're relatively easy to kill. Innocence lasts for about 2.5 minutes. Okay. So technically, it's better. I would think. They're harder to make, though. Not too difficult, though. Alright, let's fight these guys over here. Just for the sake of it. For Say we did. And I should have Hex Cleaner. Does that cure this? It does, actually. Look at me knowing my stuff. We'll do Frost Infuse. And we'll get... Hopefully, it's kind of hard to get the Brace off against these guys. Keep swinging. Okay. Now this is the guy we can brace. Well, I missed almost all of that. And that. Ooh. It just got slapped. Ooh, sting leaves. Those could be useful. I think I need to craft the cooldown potions with those, and I don't know the recipe for that. Maybe the alchemist has it? There are two alchemists. Maybe I'll, I'll check both. Yeah, pure illuminator. Yep. Pure illuminators. That's the one. Some people refuse to do the puzzle, and for them it's probably not worth it. We're talking about the elemental compass puzzle. I would agree. Sorborian Trader can sell Innocence Potions. Always worth checking on your first money-making run. What's up, the Steed? How's it going, man? I'll probably check him when I get into town, honestly. Hopefully... Hopefully he has one. If not, I can probably learn the recipe. I don't know if I have the materials, specifically, because I haven't really saved up any Boozu Hide or anything. I think it takes Boozu Hide for all three of the Corruption stuff. Making the puzzle is mid-game more likely. Right. Look at this beautiful view. Is that the Sorborn Caravaner? No. Maybe. I don't know. It's kind of too far. I don't know if we'll check it. By in-game, you're drowning in gold bars. Right. <laughs> pizza delivery build. Pizza chakram pot. Master trader set. And all the pressure plates you can carry. <laughs> Because they all look like pizza boxes? They do, don't they? That's interesting. Huh. You know what would be funny? Is to take the pizza chakram and put it inside a pressure plate. I don't know if you could put chakrams in pressure plates or not. Obviously, it's a waste. But I don't know if you could put them in there or not. What do I got on me? Veber? <gasps> Fear the Veber. Or not. Pizza boxes in your neighborhood are weird. <laughs> They're heavily armored. 
I was hoping I would just find the ice elemental down here. I'm guessing that they moved it. There's no way it stayed the same. Oh, hey, what's up? Oh, wait, that hit and it did no damage. That was weird. That was really weird. It hit him, but it did no damage. Because he dealt impact. It dealt impact to him, but it didn't actually kill him. Freaky, what's going on, my friend? How's it going? Good morning? Good morning, man. I actually have a pretty good morning. I, I woke up, had a good breakfast. Not Pop-Tarts, you know. Not a Pop-Tart breakfast, because that's not a good breakfast. Might taste good, but not a good breakfast. You finished your faction quest, and what about the Hound Mask? So I did finish the faction quest. Hound Mask, I never ended up grabbing. Mostly because I didn't end up using the Ornate as much as I thought I was going to. Uh, but Hound Mask is really good. Is that what you're asking? Why am I not using it? <laughs> it's evening over there, yo, too. That's funny. Yeah, I, I should probably grab the Hound Mask. It's actually in my Sierzo Legacy chest. Because it up your physical damage. It'd be really good for the Ornate Chakra. Yeah, yeah. I just didn't end up grabbing it. I should have, though. Which pop darts is the one you prefer? I like the s'mores and the double fudge pop darts. Greetings, friend. Those are my two favorites. Let's go grab our Mafinos, just straight up. And I'll check the clock tower puzzle, and whatever it is, will probably determine where I head next. Um, Mafinos, where you at? There you are. Good little buddy. Okay. That was a very roundabout way of doing that, but it worked. And I keep getting all of these health potions stuck in my pocket, which is not what I want. We're going to keep the bag on us, actually. Let's look up the recipe for Stingleaf. I believe the potion lady should have it. She should have it, yeah. S'mores are the best in the freezer? Oh, absolutely. How can They're I delicious you? after the freezer. Delicious. Let's see. Cold stone endurance potion. There we go. The endurance potion is the one that gives me the cooldown. Which is S tier when it comes to chakrams. I think. Oh no. Endurance. What am I? How can I help you? It's not endurance. What am I talking about? It's spiked alert. No, not that either. I said endurance potion. What a ding dong. Endurance potion is literally the endurance potion. What an idiot. Yeah, endurance is eggs and nuts. I know endurance. I don't know what I was thinking. Gonna use wolf mage helmet. It's her favorite piece of armor. Totally not a lie. <laughs> yeah, totally. Let's go check this lady in here. If she doesn't have it, I I don't make it enough to know the recipe. No. I'm with a native woman who's currently making me fry bread? Really? Is there something you need? I also don't know what fry bread is. I think we're just out of luck, guys. We just we just got screwed. Do I have enough discipline potions? We'll buy more. Also, look at this. 20 cold resist. Doesn't have any cold damage bonus, though. And no stamina, which is the big thing. Oh, I do have discipline. It's in my pocket. One of those journeys where I just got everything wrong. There we go. Fantastic. Nice. Which this game had transmog system? I think a lot of people do. And it's especially worse considering there's a mod for it. And I, I kind of like how the mod did it, too. But yeah, some armor, armor combinations just don't look well together, unfortunately. What, energizing potions? Yeah, that was the one I was looking for. I couldn't think of what they were. I know it's Sting Leaf. And that's it. I don't ever make them. We're going to take one... What particle do I have the most of? None. That's good. 
Okay, uh, one ice particle and this. Three purities, which is way more than I need. You like deep fried bread? Sounds good. Make the bouillon. That bouillon. We should be good to go to the boss fight, I believe. Raining, really? It's gonna rain on my parade today. Sounds good. Alright, all of our stuff. Actually, we need to repair. Really quick. Stingleaf, crystal powder, ley line water. It's that easy? Really? Okay. What's up, A1? What's the plan for today? We are checking out Caldera after finishing the Antique Plateau dungeon. Which means beating up on a boss. And that's about it. That's surprisingly easy. Want to buy something? All right. All right, he says. All right. All right. Voice acting is... I mean, they didn't voice all the lines, but I, I think the voice acting is funny in this game. For sure. Why can't we get this armor set? I feel like it's kind of cool. Look at this hat. I want this hat. It looks positively ridiculous. But also sophisticated at the same time. I need that in my life. Never been to Caldera? Well, get ready and buckle up because it is quite the ride. I actually like Caldera in terms of difficulty. So it'll be pretty fun. Okay, I need crystal powder. Do I have any saved up? I do, actually. What I have not done is craft potions, so we may run into trouble over there, but I doubt it. Okay, let's see. Sting leaf and... Wait a minute. You get three? That's a pretty good potion, then. I didn't realize it was that easy to craft. Again, it's one of those things that if you never do it, you're not going to know. How many did I get? I got nine energizing potions out of that. Those are so good for this, too. Wow, I'm actually kind of happy about that. We don't need any of those. Or rags. Now we're good. Huh. Let's sleep until daytime. I don't like traveling at night. Caldera is rough. Caldera is rough. It's definitely a step up in difficulty, but it is a lot of fun. Dis, what's going on, my friend? Unfortunately, I don't speak your language, but welcome to the stream. Yeah, there we go. It'll be daytime. It's almost daytime anyway. Prefer eating pumpkin pie? Pumpkin pie is also a good way to go about it. Imagine using AI to complete the voice lines in the game, like a mod to fix it. Interesting idea, Benji. Interesting idea. I kind of like that idea. Now we've got the bouillon and the predator. The bouillon de predator. Where do you live, Sheen? I live in the Midwest of the U.S. It gets really cold over here, and it gets really hot over here. And that is... That is the best description you're going to get out of the Midwest. It's... Where people go to be miserable in many different ways. So you're not hot all the time, and you're not cold all the time, but you're, you're a little bit of both, you know? He needs to live in his ass. <laughs> you're in Canada? Oh, yeah. <laughs> not much better. Uh, fun, though. Fun you live in Canada. I've never been to Canada. Interesting. So only have Outward on PS4. I've tried several times to do the compass puzzle, but I fail every time because the bedroll and fireplace don't work. Yeah, it's same here. It's like I said, it, it just doesn't always work. It's very unfortunate. Unfortunately, I don't have any advice either. It just doesn't work sometimes. Sounds balanced to me. I mean, I guess it's a bit balanced. It's balanced in a bad way. But at least it's balanced. Let's check this real quick. If it's purple, that would be ideal. It's yellow. That is... 
also ideal. Unfortunately, ooh, maybe not ideal, because the yellow is the most annoying. Here's why the yellow is annoying, and I'm going to describe it. The yellow elemental, or light elemental, can show up behind the hippodrome. Okay? This location here. This doesn't sound that bad, right? But the lamppost is all the way over here. Okay? So if you explore this entire area, which is where it should be, it could also be here or here, which is completely way far away. I mean, you got to go all the way back over here or all the way up here. It's very inconvenient as an elemental. Google translated DS comment for you, Sheen. Excellent builds. He's constantly... Oh, awesome, man. Excellent builds. Appreciate that. Thanks, Jeremiah. That's cool. But yeah, that's awesome, Dis. Lighting is the most difficult to find. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Most difficult to find just because it's all over the place. After you know where it can show up, it's not too bad. But those first few times trying to find it... Oh, man, they're horrendous. They're horrendous. Oh. Oh, hey, it's right here. What the heck? I got lucky. Dude. This is the most luck I've ever had. Look at this. It was right on the way. Okay. I'll take it. Huh. <laughs> Ice and Ethereal is probably the easiest. Does it really spawn there a lot? That's funny. I've seen it there before, but it, I don't know. That was a goofy. That was just luck, I guess. The Ethereal is definitely very easy to find because it only shows up in the lake. Ice isn't bad. Although ice can be tricky sometimes. Decay is not bad either. The two hardest are the light and the fire. The fire is only difficult because it could show up behind a house. And unless you know that, you'll never find it the first time. Because you would never go behind that house. That's really funny. I just found it immediately. I was like worried that I'd have to go all the way up and all the way back down. But immediately found it. Decay dies by itself a lot. Decay does die by itself a lot, which sucks. It's because it's always fighting something. There's Vebers, which it can fight. Um... There's the Blood Mages and the Blood Beasts. And it'll fight those constantly. And if it dies, it'll screw you. I, th I think. I don't know if you can actually find the dead body most of the time. I think most of the time it despawns. Uh, lose a, a Korean Vlogs. What's going on, my friend? What Chakram do you use? So the Chakram I'm currently using is the Frozen Chakram. The reason I use the Frozen is because it's the number one Chakram in the game. Um, I'm currently creating my top five on chakrams. It's it's number one because it inflicts elemental vulnerability and deals elemental damage, which makes it insane. Now, the other chakram I'm using is the ornate. Uh, the ornate is also on that list. It has a unique enchantment that inflicts chill, scorched, and deals a bit of fire and ice damage, which actually makes it really strong, especially paired with frozen, because then frozen does two times the damage rather than just. Extra 25%. And the Ornate Chakram also looks very cool. And does good physical damage. But yeah, Frozen Chakram is arguably the best in the game. Greetings from Russia. Great content. Prosperity to your channel. Thank you, Soru. That's awesome. Very cool. Now in the 4th or 5th? I think it was the... 3rd? I think it was the 3rd. I don't think I've done... Ethereal, Ice, or Decay. I was supposed to do the ice last time, but it changed on me. Thanks, I have to watch so many videos from you to help me so much. Yeah, no problem, man. I'm glad you're watching them. Absolutely. Frozen Chakram is... its You can't go wrong with it. It's a bit hard to get at first. Because you do need 2,000 silver to buy it from the Caravaner. But once you've got it, it is the best. Scorch does nothing if you don't set the target on fire. Scorch does nothing if you don't set the target on fire. Yeah. Because, I mean, it weakens them to fire, but if you don't deal fire damage, it's not helping you. The cool thing is, because it's a hex, you can activate Torment and inflict fire on them immediately. So, it really works with this because 
You can inflict them with Chill and Scorched, activate Torment to set them on fire and do damage, then use the Frozen Chakram to deal high frost damage. Oh, he respawned. So this is something interesting that I like. Um, the unique enemies in Outward that they added, for whatever reason, some of them will respawn. But they respawn as a lesser version. So check this out. Now he's got that. Activate Torment. Boom. And he dies. And that would usually do fire, but he died. <laughs> I'm gonna grab this. We're gonna make a ton of these. I am slightly worried about this dungeon. This dungeon that I'm about to head to is pretty difficult. Urban Pie and Assassin Elixir also boost your speed. Useful for running around after elements. Or elementals. Gotcha. I did not know Assassin's Elixir did that. I think I knew about Perkin Pie. That's neat. Yeah, Audrey, it's really cool. It's really cool. It's probably the most versatile Chakram because of that enchant. You can just do a lot with it. It's still not the best because Frozen is, you know, unbeatable. But it's still very versatile. You can do a lot with it. I have only one account. Uh build mage rune build i'm in the story now to build new sirocco ah new sirocco i recommend you clear a lot of caves as the final key is inserted the way forward opens ominously and the booming voices or it's voice i already screwed it up echoes through the halls even louder than usual and now we're about to kill him. That's what we're about to do. Okay, so I am going to show you guys this. For those of you who don't know, there are five secret locations in this dungeon. There are five in total. Um, we discovered them last time on stream, whenever I did this. We are going to go through them again this time, because it's very cool. And I doubt that a lot of people know about it. So, the first one is over here, which I already opened this one. Ready for the long gauntlet up? Oh, it's so much fun. So, the first one is right here. You gotta pull this lever. And then you come over here, and this wall will open up. Okay. And you run back here. There's some lore. A dead guy. A dead noble in a chest. That is the first secret. Have you done the trog that helps? Uh, I didn't on this character, no. I did not on this character. I will probably end up doing it when I do the clock tower puzzle. Only found two of them myself. Yeah, we're going to go through them for sure. I'll show you where they're at. What do I want to do here? I actually don't want to engage these guys without discipline boon because they are elementals. Or they have elemental damage, mainly. See, that's nearly impossible to dodge just because it tracks. All right, now he's on fire. He should heal a little bit less. We're going to get in here and kill this guy. This guy cannot live. We just got to keep getting hit by that because it's terrible. Sometimes this goes really well against these three. Sometimes it doesn't. It's really hard to tell what's going to happen. Oh my word, that is amazing. Three of those? Dang, that's perfect. Okay, second secret coming up. So if you walk up these stairs, there is a room. Also, here's how you know where the secrets are. If you see this symbol on the wall, it's a secret door. See how that outline? If you see this symbol on the wall, it's a secret door. That's how you know. What if the pizza chakra was a shield instead? You could build a ninja turtle build? Oh, that'd be awesome. This one took me a while to find. So if you head over here to the corner. There is a small button. You can see it right there. It's If you go to this side, there's not a button. You go to this side, there is a button. You gotta push it. Very hard to find. That one was pretty hidden. And you run all the way back out here. Ta-da! 
Secret torture chamber. With a dead guy. Ooh, he has good loot. And a book. Also has the button, which is interesting. Kind of cool, I guess. There's other secrets just around? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, don't worry. I, I think I remember where all of them are at. I may only forget about one, but I'll look for the symbols and find them. Oh, it's this already? What the heck? We're gonna have to fight the dog or no? I thought he would die. He didn't, but it worked out. Also, something funny. There's a beast golem that'll sometimes fight this guy. He actually spawns in the wall. Yeah. He'll spawn in the wall. Which is very weird. It happens to me at least 60% of the time. It's, it's more than 50 for sure. I need elemental damage. This is the big boy. This is the big boy. Lightning probably would have been better, honestly. Let's do Enrage as well. Need that button to get out. There's a death that puts you inside that chamber. Really? I didn't know that. That's cool. What's up, Jamie? Alright, we got the... Which one do I want to use? Frozen first, then we switch to Ornate. He should aggro. He does. Wait a minute. Oh, I was going to try and cheese it. I was going to hit him with the chakra through the wall. Because he obviously doesn't care. He's going to try and cheese me. Look at that. What a jerk. But this is a unique enemy as well. I don't know if you guys knew that. Oh, what is he doing right now? Okay. I think I split him. Yeah, I split him enough. That's going to hurt. Come on. Really? It threw the tube. You got me. We're going to go back here and take that potion just in case. Now we're good to go. Come back here. My discipline ran out. No. Perfect. Wait for him to attack. Excellent. And now he's just dead. Because he's 50% weak to ice. Epic! That's a fun dude to fight. Yeah, what's up, Jamie? How's it going? Be here for a bit. I have to work in an hour and a half-ish. Okay. Sounds cool, man. Got a particle from that, too? There should not be a secret in here. Yeah, no, nothing in here. Weird room, though. Very weird room. I think what it is, is there's... The teleporting rooms are connected here, so the beast golem just gets through the wall on accident. Either that, or he's supposed to be in this room, and he just kind of messes up. I'm not sure. Check this out. Ooh, cool cave. Alright, what's up in here? Eventually, we run into a bunch of golems. I need to be prepared for that. Oh, we're fine. That's not here. The battle for an age is who wins? Who wins? Clearly, the beast golem wins. Or not beast golem. The sword golem. Sword golems are kind of crazy. I'd probably put them on... If I was to make a top five list of the top five hardest enemies, sword golems would probably be number five. I don't know. I feel like they would be number five. They've got a lot of stuff going for them. Oh, easy kill. Easy kill. Is there a secret in here? I need to try and remember where they're at. Ah, yes. Right here. Secret wall. Where is the button for it? Aha. The torch. And another room with... Honestly, a lot of chests. More lore. 
some dead people. You know, you know how it is when you you be dying and stuff. Dead people. And, oh, those are greasy ferns. I should take those. Wiki not, might not be updated with this stuff from DE. It's not 100% updated from last I checked, but it does have at least Zagas boots, so it's getting there. I never got that uh, defeat scenario, though. Supposed to be in that room fighting the grotesque. Oh, okay. So he is supposed to be there. Just kind of goofs, I guess. There we go. That's not what we wanted to happen. We wanted to kill that guy, and he didn't die at all. No? We're not going to do it? I'm, I'm fine with just fighting the element. Oh, crap. What? He's, like, blocking him. This is the best I've ever seen a sword golem protect someone. Buddy, you're gonna get it. That's all I'm trying to tell you. Get out of my face. He dropped nothing. Oh, look, he's spinning. He's, he's doing a little dance for us. Doing a little dance. That scenario was there before DE. It was from DLC. Oh, okay. By the way, Sheen, did you finish Hogwarts Legacy? I have not finished the whole thing yet. No, I'm actually not even close. But I'm still playing it. I think it's pretty good. I mean, I had no major complaints. It's really fun. I think if a game is fun, that's really all I need. What's the best time to heal up corruption besides right before you die? Like, what do you mean? You mean... At what percentage? I like to do it at 50%. Are these guys still fighting? Holy cow, you're terrible at this. You can make the debuff go away with the hungry. Still have that debuff. Um, the tainted? If you're talking about tainted, which is from the corruption, you gotta buy these little potions, the little red sanctifier potions. You can buy them from alchemists, and it'll get rid of it completely. Well, if you have tainted, you can upgrade those as well to the sanctifier potions. Oh my word, you guys suck. Look at that kill! I'm telling you, Chakram Dance, while not perfect, is one of the most satisfying things in the game to use. We are going to use Ethereal this time, actually. I still don't have the Mist Boon. That is a mistake. That is a mistake. What's up, Stefan? <laughs> What's going on, guys? Welcome uh, to the stream. Someone call PETA version for the Golems? Yep, yep. That's how it goes. Should I do Ornate? I feel like Ornate's better here for physical damage. Ooh, can I get around this? Ah, here's the other secret. I'll show that in a sec, too. I'll kill this guy first. Step up to the plate. And he just gets demolished. Get out of my house, son. Outward becomes a lot easier when you use the right buffs and stuff. It's kind of funny. Look at that. I love the visuals in this dungeon. Glory to your crane. Ah, very nice. Welcome to the stream from Ukraine. Oh, this is bad. This is bad. They're all lumped up. I hate when they do this. Wow, that's insane damage. That's what I was afraid of. Oh, and I'm heavy. Uh-oh. Ah! Why am I heavy? The sword golems, okay. That got scary, didn't it? Heal up. And we'll go back in. Should I drop the backpack? We'll drop backpack first. That way I can actually play. All right, almost killed him. Didn't quite, though. Now you're in it, buddy. You're in it to win it. Yeah, that's what I thought. Mess with me. 
You want some of this too? Brace. Love it. We anticipated his attacks. That got brutal there for a second. Those beast columns are always the thing that almost kills me in this dungeon. I don't know why. Sadly, we can't buff ice magic that much because brand plus frozen chakra are brutally strong. Oh, yeah. I think if you used crimson chest and boots with the wide blue hat, you would be kind of overpowered. None of these guys are dropping palladium. All right, so here's the next secret. I think this is the third. Third, I think. So if you come up to this pot and you move it, it will open up a secret door all the way back over here. Into this area right here, and voila. Secret door. This is probably the coolest one. Because you get a little bit of lore, but you also get the... I guess you would call it the mistake that they made. This is when they were trying to test a lich. They were trying to create a lich, and they kind of killed a lot of people in the process. You get a lot of good lore. And the ornate chest is good, too. I think Ethereal is the most difficult to buff high. Ethereal would be... No, Ethereal is actually very easy. Um, Ice is the hardest to buff high. Because Ethereal used to be the hardest until Enchanting. If you think about Enchanting, you have the Culpal Chestplate Enchanted with spirit of berg which is 25 percent and you have the antique plate helmet and boots uh plus the boon cabal hermit hex mage so i think ice is actually still the hardest although with crimson plate it may get more i'm not sure the problem with ice is that the spirit of sierzo enchant is not quite as good as the spirit other spirit of enchants i think I haven't actually actually made that one. Ugh, words. I haven't ever actually made that enchant, so I'm not 100% on that. But I think it's what 15% fire and ice. I don't think it's 25 both. Because 25 both would be really good. Right now, doing an ice run. Yeah, ice runs are fantastic. Bet your armor of spirit Sierzo gives 20. Oh, it does give 25. 25 to ice. The blue and red. Then what the heck? I thought it gave fire as well. Oh, it's 15 fire. Then yeah, maybe... Maybe if ethereal is technically harder. I didn't know it gave that much ice. What the heck? That... That might be the best option for my build currently. Now that I think about it... Oh crap, this is another hard room. I thought it only gave 15 for some reason. What about lightning for a melee build? Lightning is the second easiest to buff in the game. Uh, Decay is clearly the first. Because you can get upwards of 300%. I think. At least close to that. Um, lightning is very easy as well. There's a lot more options you have with lightning. And you can have the... Monsoon? What is it? Holy Mission buff. That grants you even more lightning. Although that one's decay, ethereal, and lightning as well. That's another ethereal buff. That I wasn't thinking of. It's hard to think of every place you're going to get a buff from. There's quite a few. I can't believe I'm still this overweight. Even after grabbing the Finos. I am carrying a lot of junk. Okay, another secret room. This one is... A little bit harder to find. You can get around 300% in Decay buffs. Yeah, Decay is just nuts. She, next time you're on Outward after Demon Souls, would you consider doing a Corruption build? Yeah, I'll consider it. It's one build I've never done that I probably should. Good point. Really? Their ability to dance out of an attack is frustrating. Now we can make another... Golub Sword. Which is three. That's 900 silver right there. This is one of the best money farming routes. Okay, so here's the other secret. 
You can tell, if you have the lighting a certain way, you can kind of tell that there's a door there. But this one's a bit harder to find. You gotta go all the way in here. Think about playing lightning for the next room, using a shield as well. Lightning can be very strong, especially if you use the gold lit shield or gold lit shield and Fabius Palladium because Doomed is pretty good. There's a lot of options you have with, with lightning. It's pretty interesting to go into. But you're going to use the silver, silver armor with the Spirit of Monsoon. It's the best for a lightning build, clearly. I don't think there's anything that even contests it. The Cryptea armor is just not good, unfortunately. It has, like, very minute lightning buffs, considering how late game it is, and the fact that it... I mean, it makes you immune to certain things, which is nice. That's not bad, but... I don't know, it feels goofy to me. It's like in a goofy place. Fabius Palladium and the chimes? Oh, yeah, the chimes. Good point. Yeah. That makes... Oh my word, that makes Ethereal even better, because Ghost Drum... Dude, Ghost Drum's nuts. I really hate this duo right here. It's actually a trio. It's buff with ice. There's either two ways to go about this. You wait for the elementals to come to you, or you just bum-rush the golem. There's not really any in-between there. It looks like they're kind of coming over here. I don't think they heal themselves, which is a plus to me. He's just gonna keep waylaying on me, apparently. Wait for the lightning ball. There we go. Really? Yeah, that's right. Confusion all the way. Confusion is just so dumb. Makes every enemy easier. Except for gargoyles, who are immune to it. Bum rush the elementals and save the golem for last. That's a good plan, actually. The elementals are... Elementals are weird because they're not the hardest enemy in the game, but they deal so much damage. That is the worst loot I've ever gotten from him. All right, everybody ready? Next secret. This one is very hard to find. See this book? It moves. Dun, dun, dun. Now we go all the way back in here. <laughs> Will-O-Wisp. Again, Will-O-Wisp isn't that good either. I feel like Will-O-Wisp is on the same as the Cryptea stuff. It's just... It's there, it's nice, but the Gold Lit Shield or Fabulous Palladium are way better for a lightning build. In my mind, at least, you know. Here you get two things of lore, you get another chest. And this is second to last secret. Comet Incense, okay. But yeah, Will-O-Wisp, the whole Will-O-Wisp quest is kind of disappointing. Number one, it doesn't always work. Even according to the wiki, it's supposed to register every single time. If you die in a Cabal Wind Temple, the first time it's supposed to give you that death scenario. It doesn't. It just doesn't. Does not always do it. Which is frustrating. Uh, the shield is okay. It looks really cool. It's arguably probably one of the coolest looking items in the game. But it's not... It's just not nearly as good as some other options. I think it does do sapped, though. Maybe. Was able to accumulate 5 million an hour in one week. Wow, that is a lot. That's a lot of grinding for money. Well, relatively quickly, though. Impressive. Michael Wazowski, what's going on? Welcome to the stream. We're actually going to sleep here real quick. Elementals are so easy when they're single and five times harder when together. Yeah, the, m the more there are, the harder they get. Absolutely. And there's the last secret. This wall right here, but you can't do it. It's very interesting. Most of the secrets... 
Actually, the early ones, funnily enough, you can do all the early ones. There's the lever or whatever thing you need to push to open the door beforehand. Maybe only the first one. Most of them, you have to actually push the button and then come back to where the secret door is, which I find odd. Do an outward speed run. <laughs> uh, yeah, a few people asked me to do outward speed run. I just don't know how you would do it. Like, what would be the end game? Because you could do it up until Caldera. But Caldera, there's not really a way to speed run. Because it's just a grind. So I was never sure about that. How much stamina do I have? I should probably buff fully, right? Don't you have feather dodge? Yeah, but my backpack's heavy. Because my backpack's heavy, it doesn't let you dodge like that. Unfortunately. Rushing main quest like a madman. I guess maybe, yeah, just do main quest stuff. That's not a bad idea. You can do Blessed Boon. I believe he is weak to Ethereal. No, actually, I know he's weak to Ethereal. It's a dumb thing to say. I know for a fact he's weak to Ethereal, because he's a robot. All robots, weak to Ethereal. Boom. Easy. It's done. I actually probably don't need to buff this much, but... When you have the buffs, you might as well use them, you know? Especially if they're in food. Thought my tech stock was every buff from my decay build had disappeared. Ooh, dang, yeah. You have that, don't you? I forgot about that. We're going to use Frozen Chakram. Drop backpack in the fight, I believe. Yeah, we'll do that. Did I activate Enrage? I did not. And there we go. I'm interested to see how Chakrams do in this battle. Okay, they insta-kill. It's very odd. These Forge Golems are bigger than regular ones, but they're weaker. Make a lot of sense. Oh my word, did you guys see the cooldown? Wait, what? An extra 10 cooldown is... ridiculous. I need to get Elemental Vulnerability on him. Oh shoot, he's doing his thing. Alright, he's got Elemental Vulnerability. Now we can switch chakrams, make him weak to cold damage. Oh, this is weird. Their little dance they have is odd. Okay. Stay mobile. If I can get over there fast enough. Oh, I missed. Epic fail. That was probably the most epic fail I've ever seen. Ha! I missed everything. Like, that was so expertly bad. I don't even know what to say. Look at the beautiful multi-kills. You love to see it. You really do. What are you doing? Sit down! That work? Did that debuff him? This is turning out to be harder than I thought. I think I'm just gonna go melee. Oh, that one hurt. Saw it coming, too. That's the worst thing, is when you see it coming, you can't do anything about it. Ah, I hate doing that. Alright, we're gonna just melee. It's so much faster. Chakram just unfortunately doesn't do quite enough damage for me to use it. Wonder how many of that killed. Just one? It's very good at hitting multiple of them, but it's... Oh no, my buff ran out. Dang it. Doesn't quite have the reach I wanted to. Interesting how hard this fight is compared to what have been in the past. Ah! I hate when he does that. It's like, do it early or don't do it. There we go. I defeated him with the shocker of... <laughs> 
that was a very uh more much more challenging than i thought it was gonna be gameplay is smooth yeah thanks finn that's kind of a rough fight i'm not gonna lie I'm not gonna lie gg shane that yeah, thanks man that was uh interesting just weird to say i think maybe chakram dance would have been better for the minions i kept trying to use it against the rustlich and i think that was maybe a mistake you're a beast, man. <laughs> Thanks. Nice beat up. I did beat him up, didn't I? I did beat him up. I'm gonna destroy his phylactery. He's dead. Ugh. I guess I could come back, too. I always forget about that. Alright. Do I actually need any of this? Technically, the boot's not bad. Problem is, really bad physical. But it looks pretty cool. I kind of like this set. I, I know that a lot of people think the helm is stupid, but I think it looks kind of funny. Make me want to play again? What's up, Christina? It's a lot of fun. It's worth it. Alright, last secret. Touch the painting. We go back through the door. Deathless run? Not quite. I did actually die on this run. Um, I fell down a hole. <laughs> it was the, the best way to go, honestly. Czar fists. Excellent. Sneaks, that's for sure. Very memorable game. Oh, absolutely. Wolf bow. This is some pretty bad loot, not gonna lie. Because I light boots. Yeah. Now we make the long trudge to town. Sell stuff. Come back. How much does this weigh? 3.5 and 1. This weighs 4. This weighs 5. Hmm. Aha! Watch this. There we go. Now we can run. Aha! Big brained idea! Wolf bow with the ice enchant and it's slow down? Yeah. Pretty good slow down. I don't know. I'd ever. I enjoyed the Astro bow and. the Czar bow more. Czar bow was a weird one. It wasn't, like, the best, but it was kind of fun. Just because you don't have that durability thing. Kind of like the helmet, actually. That's what I'm saying, Michael or uh, Matthew. I kind of actually like the helmet. I think it looks a bit funny. Kind of like a... Honestly, it fits the part. It's a mechanical lord. That's what it feels like to me. Alright, we'll come back. I will try to do the clock tower puzzle, I think. I'd like to do it. Died two times in hardcore to fall damage. Quit hardcore since. Not recommended for outward, but was still fun. You just have another feeling when playing hardcore. Yeah, it's that's happened to me too. That's why I don't play hardcore anymore. It's because I always do something really stupid. I'll survive every fight, and then I'll just jump off a cliff or something dumb. It's it's goofy. Like the Scarlet Lich outfit too. Yeah, it's got a very cool vibe to it. I don't know. It's What's weird is that all the Lich outfits look good. I think the Gold Lich looks the weirdest. You either really like it or you don't like it. Has a pretty good monk feel to it. The Jade Lich... I, the Jade Lich looks interesting. I like the helmet particularly. I think it looks very good in terms of a samurai-ish. Kind of. It has that vibe to it, sort of. Um, the Rust Lich just looks very mechanical, and it fits its part pretty well, I think. We are going to sell all of these things I just got. How can I help you? Booyah! Lot of money. And gets rid of a lot of my weight. Let's go get our particles, because we're about to get one of each. Hate the rust helmet. Yeah, see what I'm saying? You either, there's people that hate it. They just don't like it. And then I think it's interesting. <laughs> I think it looked good with my lightning melee build. The silver armor and gold lich shield. That's a matter of taste. That sounds kind of interesting. I kind of like to see that, actually. Gravity always kills you once in anything. <laughs> that, that is it's true. It really does always kill you. Do I need to go other door? Gravity can be a beast. You know what's interesting, though? This symbol is, uh... 
for this secret room as well. Apparently, they use this symbol to denote secret rooms. That's interesting to think about now. Hmm. Worst part is that Rust Helmet gives you 25% to lightning damage. Yeah. Honestly, yeah, that with... Ooh, I have a build idea in my head now. I have a build idea in my head now. The J chest place looks uh, great with the Caldera Noble Helm. Good day. Well done. Interesting. Close. How unfortunate. I don't see so many different combinations I need to check out. 500 silver, one of each particle. So that is the second quest done. Now we need to do Caldera. Now for Caldera, I there's a few things we could do. We could get a bunch of money. Save up some gold. Or we could just bum rush it. Start it without any recourse, without any thought process. And see what happens. Merrick Hawk, what's going on? Tell us about your build idea, Sheen. Oh, the build idea for the... Light okay, so I was thinking, I made a lightning build, right? Um, it was called, what did I call that? I don't remember, but it was a lightning build, okay? I used the Whirlig Spear. Well, now I'm thinking maybe use Rustlich. Use Rustlich Helm. Use the Silver Armor. Use whatever boots you want, really. It doesn't matter too much. Um, and then you have... There's a weapon enchant in Caldera that enchants your weapon with five lightning damage. You could do that. And you could kind of just stack a lot of lightning damage, which I've never done before. I mean, I stack pretty high amounts with uh, my other lightning build. I still have that extra key. So I'm wondering if you could do it even better. All right, we're at that point where I do have a lot of junk. We're probably going to wear Mafinos for here on out because Caldera is, I think you all know, costs a lot of stuff. Okay. We're actually going to put a whole bunch of these away because we don't even really need them. Alright, let's do this. We are going to go do the clock tower puzzle until it irritates me because it usually irritates me very quickly and I quit. But we'll see if that happens. Bless you, Sheen. Thanks, Jamie. <laughs> lightning sword that only does lightning. Yes, okay. That was the one I was thinking in my head. Radiant wolf sword. Can you enchant the radiant wolf sword with extra lightning damage from Caldera? Remember my ER mods? Well, one is out. The blighted death. You can fight the... At Thea very second. Oh, mod is free. Okay. Dom Weaver, if you're in my Discord, send me a link. I'll check it out. Or I'll try to remember. Yes, you can. Okay, so that Radiant Wolf Sword with extra lightning damage would do what? 45 lightning damage? Because you're doing pure lightning, what shield would you use? You'd probably use the Fabius Palladium. Is there a way to get doomed onto the enemy? You could use the doomed hex, I guess. 34 plus 5. Okay, so it's 34, not 40. Radiant Wolf Sword is busted, and yes, you can enchant it. Okay. Alright, so chimes as well. Yes, chimes debuff. I always forget about chimes, dude. How do I do that? I I remember... You know what it is? It's ghost drums. Because I love ghost drums so much, I always forget about the chimes. Oh my word. That sounds so much fun. Like, that sounds amazing. It would be 39 raw lightning damage with the enchant. Plus Sky Chimes, which weakens the enemy by 25%. Plus Elemental Vulnerability from the Fabius Palladium Shield. So, negative 50%. Um, you could get Light Infuse from Holy Mission. Oh my word, is Lightning busted? I think Lightning's busted, guys. You just gave me a... That's, that's brilliant. Honestly, that's kind of brilliant. That's the Radiant Wolf Sword we really needed, isn't it? Lack Meteoric Shield? I know, Meteoric Shield looks so cool in debug mode, but it just doesn't exist. It'd be epic. No, that was the one- you guys remember? Okay, when I did my modded run, the Meteoric Shield is in the game, technically. 
as debug. But whenever it spawned in for the randomizer, it was like the whole size of the screen. It was massive. Do you guys remember that? That was epic. Gold Lich Shield inflicts doomed. That'd be a good shield to run with too. That was hilarious. It covered almost the entire screen. You have to do the compass puzzle in any particular order? No, it just have to complete it by seven days. Before it resets. Lightning's crazy good. You also get buff from the holy mission. Right. Oh, true for an extra 10%. Holy cow, lightning's insane. I think lightning and ethereal are probably the two strongest in the game. Decay? I don't... The problem with decay is there's so much that's completely immune to decay. It's the same thing as fire. It's like, technically... Fire and Decay are the best because they have damage over time and they have a really easy way to stack their damage. But then you think about it and you're like, well, there's at least a few enemies completely immune to burning or fire damage in general. And there's a few enemies completely immune to Decay damage. So technically, it's not the best. Ethereal and Ice damage destroy. There's not really anything immune to it. But then you think about... Um, lightning damage. I can't think of anything other than the lightning golems and the light mender that are even resistant to lightning. I think that's the only things. Thorny chakram bleed time. Dude, thorny chakram looks so cool. Too bad it's kind of meh. It does look very cool. Though. I bet you it's up there. It's usually up there taunting me. Because I had spell sword, shaman, and sage. Spark with the fire and wind sigil for the light and burn. You could do some insane damage. Where is this stupid little... What do you even call him? A jellyfish. That's what I like call him. Douglas, what's going on? Welcome to the stream. I made your Chakram build and played through the whole faction with Meteoric Chakram. Pretty good with all the buffs and boons. Awesome. I never even thought about Meteoric. Meteoric stuff is really good. And technically, Meteoric Chakram does more fire damage. Than the Obsidian. Radiant Wolf has infinite durability, so no problem with elemental discharge. Oh, so true. That's another good point. I love elemental discharge. I think it's one of the best openers. Uh, One of the best abilities for really good mid-range combat. I love it. Only a couple enemies that are resistant. Can't think of any that would be immune. I can't either. And it's Lightning is really good in Caldera. Because there's a lot of Medes and it destroys Medes easily. Where is this elemental? Is he going to tick me off? What I say? I said I'm going to do this till I get ticked off. You know what I bet? There's a hill back there with the bridge. I bet you he's up that hill. I bet you he's up that hill. Because I walked past it and I said there's no way he's up there. I bet you he's there. With the mod alternate start that obliged you to do only lightning damage. Oh my word. That's crazy. That's a cool mod, too. I like that. How do Ice Mages boost their damage? Two ways. Um, He's not over here. Okay, I had to double check. So, the worst way is this hat. The wide blue hat. 10% cold damage bonus. The other way is going to be... Uh, the Rust Lich Boots. You can get Rust Lich Boots. I think it's a 25% cold damage buff. And then Crimson Plate Armor... For the last buff. Now, Crimson Plate Armor is kind of iffy because it is pretty heavy on the stamina. So usually I don't use it for a mage. But I think it works for ice damage. Especially since it has such a high damage bonus for ice. Gene, don't be fooled. The alternate start with pure lightning can really screw you over though. Yes, well, it's really cool though. The th problem with it is... What you would really want to do is max your physical damage. Because I think you can get physical damage higher than anything else. And because of that mod, you would just want to do that since it converts it all to lightning anyway. But still interesting. What do people do in your Discord? Like, cool. yeah, we're just mostly talk about Outward. Ask each other questions. It's pretty chill in my Discord. But yeah. Lockwell's Revelation is also great for Radiant Wolf Sword. Oh, true. 15% more damage. Actually, technically, Heroic Kingdom's better for damage. If you went straight damage. The problem is, again, 
if you're doing elemental, having the extra buffs from Holy Mission feels a little bit better. I think that's the problem with Heroic. I think Heroic Kingdom needed an extra passive. I don't think 15% damage is enough. Because, like, I love it and all, and I'm using it right now. I mean, the damage is great. Where's my other stats, dude? You know, with Holy Mission, I have, like, four stats. It just feels a little bit off to me. I died to Lockwells more than Gravity. <laughs> really? More than Gravity. Gravity kills the most. I joined this. There's a link down below, Don Weaver. So, Sheen Crimson, Mace, and Chakra Build win. There he is. I t Look at this. He's right there where I said he would be. Oh, it's crazy. Um, I don't know, because Crimson would be so good, though, with it. Ooh, good question. The Hex Mage? Yeah, the Hex. The Hex buff. Oh, Lat Lockwells. I got you. I thought we were talking about... What's it called from... I think it's Kira Wax Breakthrough or something. No, that's not accurate. I got you, though. I was thinking of the wrong buff. The one I have is the Alchemical Experiment. Kirowax is from the Caldera. Okay. Then, no, I'm with you. I'm with you on that. Yeah, the Hex Mage buff would be really insane. The problem would be managing your stamina. Which I don't know if it would be a big problem. Depending on your armor set, you know. Fire, Ethereal, and Ice are good for people who do melee. You're more bound to using consumables with Decay and Lightning. Especially Decay. Yeah, I can agree with that. Lockwell's the one that gives you the extra elemental damage when sleepy. Yeah, so you're saying you died to sleep. I got you. I got you. That's kind of funny. I've never died to sleep. But I imagine... I always don't even use it, the buff that much, to be honest. Arcane for ice damage, cooldown, and mana reduction, but sadly not very tanky. Yeah. Mm. Tanky is pretty nice to have. Use barely no potions with my melee lightning build, so beginner friendly. Well, that's the thing, is you don't have to use potions. That's the thing about it, is it's really good without... It's, I think it's a bit easier to manage with, maybe. I I my, why do I need to type my birthday to join Discord? Oh, because it's set up to prevent bots. That's just to prevent bots, Don Weaver. That's really it. I died to sleep four times before I even understood what was killing me. <laughs> that is legendary. I can see myself doing that. Why am I dying? I'm tired. Ah, this makes sense. That's hilarious. I could really see myself doing that. Nice, Don Weaver. You also have to provide those wacky numbers in the back of your credit card. <laughs> Not quite, Newell. <laughs> Not quite. Hopefully, it's Decay. Although, likely, it'll be not Decay, since I said that. But I think we got the two hardest out of the way, which is nice. Use the circlet at 50 gold, bought in Sierra with Rain Enchant. Oh, yeah. I think 50 silver. I think. Not 50 gold. Dang it. It's gonna do it again. Come on. We'll sleep one time. If it's not fixed, it means I already did it. Because the Decay Elemental may have died on his own. That's it, though. Th that's the only, like, answer to this. <laughs> Douglas, yeah, just sent my credit card info to the Discord chat. Now <laughs> they'll accept me. That's the way to do it, you know? Scholar Circlet with Rain Enchant is always good to have in your pocket. Oh, absolutely. If it didn't pop up, most likely 
I already... I don't think I did the ethereal guy, though. Yeah, see, I know I didn't get it done. Alright, it worked this time. I'm telling you, last time, it did not work, and it angered me. But, we gotta go do the decay guy. Now, decay's tricky. This means walking through corruption, but I think we'll be okay. Yeah, did I leave my potions? I have my potions with me, so we're good. You like how the marshmallow tartines have still been in my inventory for the entire antique plateau? Wow. Completely changes the game when you use them. Do that all the time? <laughs> oh, yeah. I know most games use gold. Like, I think even Hogwarts Legacy is using gold coins for currency. Skyrim uses what? You have. Is it gold coins? I haven't played Skyrim in so long, dude. It's been a while. I think most games use gold, though, and then outwards, like, we're gonna use silver coins. Galleons. Ah, yeah. Septums. Heard you say you need a decay guy, Sheen. I actually might take your inspiration for your build, Jamie, because I know people want to see the decay build. Scrime uses gold coins called septums. Okay. Yeah. That that sounds familiar now. Again, it's been so long since I played Skyrim. When I was in high school, that was what I did. I I 100 percent of the game pretty much like i just went through one big playthrough obviously not 100 percent because there's clearly stuff i missed but i went through and tried to do every single thing possible in one run i think it took me at least a whole summer of playing that because i built up all the houses and everything and which took forever also i didn't know what i was doing so <laughs> recommend using shriek with decay build oh it's the best the problem is managing the plague. Which, no, actually, the, the issue there is Shriek is not the best decay weapon. The Scepter of the Cruel Priest is. Uh, because if you actually buff decay, then you're going to be buffing decay more with Scepter versus Shriek. Plus, the Scepter doesn't kill you versus the, the Shriek will actually eventually kill you with that. But Shriek is very good with decay build. It's just, it's so built for the decay immunity that scepter is a little bit better it's slower it is a lot slower benji that's true i might actually use wind i would probably use wind infuse with it if you wanted to really get it going you don't need to because you're doing so much damage but it wouldn't be a bad idea but you're not wrong low impact you die super easy with the cruel priest yeah it's more of a skill you kind of got to get really skilled with it, probably. Shriek is definitely better for usability. But I think if you really wanted to buff your damage, you would definitely go with Scepter. I see your point. Low impact is subjective. Yeah, fair enough. World Edge Axe was nerfed to death. It really was. Sorry, guys. I'm busy. I'm looking for something. It really was nerfed quite a bit. It's still very good as a thing, but it's nowhere near as OP as it was. Which I feel is kind of bogus, considering two-handed axes are already harder to use. Are we chasing me right now? Oh, I'm not about this. I love getting it just perfect. There you are, you little elemental. Come here. I've never seen him here. He's usually on the hill for me. That was a weird place for me to find him. Pretty easy place, though. Which is nice. I'll take it. The last should be ethereal. So, w this should be really easy if we get her going. Just wreck things? I The chakram's insane. I, th I think people really sleep on chakrams. There was a debate a while ago whether chakrams was better than guns. And I still think chakrams are better because they're more usable. Guns technically do more damage, but you gotta reload, you know? And in a boss battle, I really feel that the ability to knock over an enemy and use all this stuff is just better. The only bad thing about Chakrams is when you miss because it screws you. That's the only bad thing. There's no decay varnish. It's dark or poison. I'm going to assume you mean dark. Yeah, dark would be the decay varnish. Yeah. What about a Butcher's Axe Lightning and Decay hybrid build? 
Jamie loves that. Uh, Jamie's a pretty big fan of the Butcher's Axe. I am not the Butcher Cleaver. But to be fair, technically, if you buff both Lightning and Decay and you use it, it is good. Jamie did prove that to me. <laughs> this is not any enemies that use chakrams, right? Yeah, except for the ones that just walked fast. The blood mages. Dude, this is kind of a peaceful walk, I'm not gonna lie. I don't even need to do bloody business. Bloody business is another quest. It's like, okay. I'm not gonna do it. Don't feel like it. Also, technically, you can add elemental vulnerability if you have another weapon that inflicts it. That'd be crazy. Ooh, could you do Scepter of the Cruel Priest with... the Frozen Chakram for elemental vulnerability? That'd be interesting. He said, damn right I did, Sheen. That's what's left. <laughs> yeah, he did prove it was still usable. Remember about middle of the pack, but your axe made us create a lower tier. Yeah, it's... The problem is you really have to go full into it, you know? It's the same as some other weapons. If you don't fully go into that, what that weapon does, it's not good. But it is, it is good if you do it. Technically, every weapon in Outward is good if used properly. I mean, even the bad ones, like Sandro's Axe. And Sandro's Axe is still good if used correctly. Buff its physical damage instead of using Blaze. Uh, Nicholas, what's going on, my friend? Welcome to the stream. Great Palladium Shield. My problem with Palladium Shields is I feel like... The Marble Shield is just better, in a way. Honestly, more aesthetically pleasing as well. Three Blood Sorcerers in Bloody Business found at the Windmill have no business healing that fast. Oh, they're insane. Weirdly enough, they... They're some of the hardest enemies to defeat in the Antique Plateau. The best way to defeat them is just trying to split them up from each other. Very cool build, man. What's up, CS? It's a pretty fun one, I think. Why'd you think so as well? Weirdly enough, I'm having an issue with stamina right now. Oh, it's because of the bed. Look at that. Negative 50 mana cost, negative 10 stamina. Negative 50 mana cost? Wow. A lot more than I thought I had. Tent buff, hat buff, boot buff. I can get that even higher if I used the Gabri Wine, actually. Want to try Infuse Blood on duty? Bleeding, Poison, and Holy Blaze on one weapon? Ooh, good point. That would be pretty strong, now I think about it. Alright, let's see if it switched. It probably should not have switched yet. Yeah, it's a decay still. So we'll go out here and sleep. Technically, you can go in town, but I feel like sleeping will be faster. I went Meteoric Chakram with Butcher Cleaver. Wasn't the best option of main weapon for that build, but the elemental variety is cool. I think that is the biggest advantage of that weapon, is that it is doing two things. So you're never going to be dealing weak damage to someone. Because if someone's immune to decay, they're probably really weak to lightning or vice versa. Shane, please do a Czar location guide. Stat, thank you. <laughs> the Czar stones. Um, let's see. There's five, I think, right? There's the one in the desert, which is the skeleton quest. There is the one... Where's my stamina? There's the one by beating your faction quest. There's the one over in Cherisonese near Cabal Hermit. And there's the Czar Stone. Dang, I need to sleep again. There's the Czar Stone and the Ziggurat for the Jade Lich as well. We're going to use this instead. I feel like I may need to sleep more than once. Yeah, Jade Ziggurat, right. Chakram's like a weapon of his own kind. That's the way I like it. I like it too, and I was talking about this in the comment section of my Chakram video I made the other day. The reason Chakram feels so good is it's a melee weapon. If you really think about it, it is a melee. It hits with melee damage. It feels very melee. It's somewhat close range. I mean, it has that mid-range, but... Gosh darn it. It feels somewhat mid-range or close range. 
but it's not a melee weapon. Like, it is, but it isn't. It's a very hybrid type of weapon, and it makes it very unique. Very unique. Double dare you to do a thrice rot halberd build? Oh, I don't like it, though. <laughs> That's another one of those weapons. It's like Butcher Cleaver. It's a build that I just... It could be really good, though. Especially with Spirit of Sierzo enchant. Ooh. Would I go full into... I might go for... Ice with that one. Ooh. Here's where it starts to not work. I'm gonna go into town real quick. If that doesn't work, it likely is done. I don't think I ever killed the Ethereal guy, though. I would probably buff my Ice to the max. And then just have the Spirit of Sierzo have a bit of fire damage. What would I use for my helmet, though? Because chest would obviously be adventure armor. What looks good with adventure armor? Wide blue hat wouldn't look bad, I don't think. We could go antique plate boots. Oh, that doesn't really help with ethereal. Dude, could you imagine if Thrice Rot still had ethereal damage? You would make the best build ever with that. You could have antique plate helm and boots, right? Which both buff ethereal and fire damage. You could have Spirit of Sierzo enchant on the adventure armor to have fire and ice damage. You would have buffs to all three types of damage while dealing good impact. And then you could still take, you could buff your ethereal a bit more with holy mission too. That'd be crazy. You almost have 10k subs. I know we're getting there. It's pretty crazy. We are a lot closer than we used to be. Very exciting. Very exciting. Do you like the Three Brothers DLC better than the Harmattan DLC? Half the first builds in the wiki involve Thrice in them? Yeah. <laughs> I imagine. Um, so my opinion on the two DLCs is, is this. First off, I think the Soraborian DLC is the best DLC. Now, I think this for numerous reasons. I've seen people think the opposite, which I found was interesting. I didn't know anybody liked Three Brothers better. Three Brothers has more issues than Soraborian does. Soraborian issue, the biggest deal is the clock tower puzzle. It's not very well done. Um, the enchanting, some people don't like the enchanting. I personally find it charming. I like it. But I think Soraborian's DLC is the best. Number one, because of the Rust and Vengeance quest line. I think it is the most brilliant quest line I've ever seen. It is masterfully made. Um, the mis mystery of going through it for the first time is absolutely unmatched and you have no idea what you're doing where you're going so by the fifth time you complete it it just feels like such an ex a really just amazing experience there's so many unique enemies there's so much loot i think honestly the biggest advantage that outward has is loot there's so much to loot and find and that has the most loot the most variety of loot the coolest stuff there's you're just getting stuff constantly um, it is definitely more difficult than the base game, but it's not ridiculous. You know, it's not like crazy or anything. Um, you added vampiric weapons, you added enchants, you added the bloody business quest. You added hex mage, which has hex magic is really cool. I think it just has a lot of stuff it makes it stand out. Now, the issue I have with Three Brothers DLC first off is the town building was not very well done. Most of the buildings are redundant because building one building... So each building has two different upgrades, right? You build a building, such as, say, the food store. It has two separate upgrades. Well, those two separate upgrades are redundant because the one is masterfully better than the other. I mean, it's, it's not even close how much better it is. It grants you food. It grants you unique food every week for free. It's clearly better. Now, they were trying to go for a customization to where you could build your town however you wanted. But it just didn't work out. Because even something like the Alchemist stand. So, say you build the Alchemist building. Well, there's really only one upgrade for it. Unless you went heroic. And then there's two upgrades and you miss out on the one upgrade. Only to get your buff. So, the way they did it with the buffs feels really bad. Because you actually miss out on the unique abilities from that building. Because you have to go for your faction buff instead. So the whole idea of splitting the buildings up into two different buildings didn't really pan out as well as it should have. Um, also, I like the design of the Antique Plateau better. Antique Plateau is my favorite. 
area in the game. I think it has the most mountainous region. It has very cool. The whole trains being crashed all over the place and the mana lines everywhere is very neat. Caldera is also a very good region in terms of what is there. I mean, there's a lot of cool weapon quests. I like the weapon quests. I think that the region itself looks awesome. Um, the lava was a really cool thing to add. But again, if you look at Caldera, it's dead. I mean, it's dead. Everything's dead. That's what it's supposed to be, but it's dead. Antique Plateau has the mana lake. You've got various animals wandering around the place. You have lots of flowers. Um, different kinds of bandits, the sorcerers, the Kazites. It feels much more alive, which is what it's supposed to be. They're supposed to be polar opposites. But it's very hard for me to pick Caldera over the other when Caldera definitely feels a lot more dead. Now, Caldera is definitely more difficult, and I think they did a good job with creating an area where you need to test your build because honestly base game antique plateau doesn't really test your build's limits at all really they're not that hard i mean the rust and vengeance quest line is a bit hard i'll say that but the area itself not really story of antique plateau is nice as well yeah three brothers upgrades are introduced too late in the game and that's another thing it's that the three brothers all of it is just too late. I've talked about this many times. If you look at all of the upgrades, the armor, the weapons from Caldera or New Sirocco, it's garbage. I mean, there's so much stuff. CS, thank you for the donation. Awesome. For Super Chat. That's epic. That's fantastic, my man. Thank you very much. I cannot find this elemental. What in the world? But yeah, if you look at the armor, it's all terrible. Caldera male armor, I think is what it's called is just garbage it's completely useless overall um noble armor is arguably the one set that's really good cryptea sets okay but it's not that good considering it's lightning damage is meh um i'm trying to think of other armor sets over there the crimson avatar armor is pretty bad too i mean it's got some really good stuff for fire damage but it's not that good either it just feels wonky. Also, you have the way they did the weapons, which I heard that the GM, the CEO of Out or Nine Dots, decided to. I think he created the weapons himself for Caldera, the unique ones. Where the heck is this dude at? I've never had this much trouble finding him. And I don't like them. I don't like weapons with negative stats. Now, I do think that they're they did a really good job with those and making them fun because none of them feel absolutely horrendous to use. But it just feels like there's so many good weapons in the base game that when I get to Caldera and I find a weapon that makes me, I don't know, really good decay damage, but super weak to lightning, well, why not just use a horror weapon? You know what I mean? CS, you deserve a million subs. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. I appreciate the donation, man. That's awesome. So yeah, at that point, why don't I just use a horror weapon? I mean, obviously, if you want to min-max, it's there for that, clearly. Because people do use it. Shriek and Scepter are both really OP. It's just... I don't know. It's just a weird DLC overall. But I think what they did do good with... The best part of Three Brothers is by far the enemy variety. The enemy variety of the Three Brothers is unmatched. You have Gargoyles, which are a fascinating enemy. Absolutely fascinating. Very challenging, but very cool. You have these Scarlet Emissaries, which are also really neat, right? You have these nobles who have been completely transformed into basically demons by a lich. I mean, that is really cool. Uh, my matures are a neat idea. My matures are weird, man. I mean, they're just a they're a natural creature of the area. They're just they're just a creature that lives there, and they deal ice damage, but they're immune to fire and weak to decay they're like all over the place but they're kind of like a beehive almost in terms of how they i don't know nest up and stuff you have the ancient dwellers which are by far the most unique enemy in the entire game i mean ancient dwellers are fascinating there's there's so much mystery surrounding the ancient dwellers it really makes them cool and they're a very challenging enemy type as well then you've got the nobles. You don't get to fight nobles very often. I think only one time, but it's very fun. Uh, pretty good change from just regular bandits. Tor crabs, Caligrays. Caligrays are really cool, mostly because they're super weak to decay. So they're really hard to fight unless you use decay and then they're so easy. 
What's your favorite enemy? Overall, I think my favorite enemy would be... What's a good question? Wendigo. I think Wendigo is... Well, other than Ancient Dwellers, the most unique enemy in the game. It's a very cool concept, very cool idea. One becoming so just hungry, like just pure hunger, that you transform into a complete monster. And the ability... We see it from the first cannibal. I mean, the first cannibal literally transformed a cave that was a fire cave. Clearly, the cave was a fire cave. He transformed it into a complete icy haven. Like, that's nutty, man. That's nutty. Wendigo's really cool. Also my favorite enemy. Yeah, he's just incredible. I think they're not hard. Not really. I mean, they are at first. The first time you come up against a Wendigo, I think almost all of us were at least scared. I died the first time I fought him. It was terrifying. You meet him in the snow for the first time. Oh, it's horrifying. It is horrendous. But they're just a really neat idea. And then you get over here to the Antique Plateau, and you get to learn even more about them. Turns out that there's a whole storyline, which, wait a minute, I could actually do that. There's a whole storyline over here about a Wendigo. Do you guys want to see it? I'll do it if you want me to. It's not that hard. There's a whole storyline that associates with, like how a person becomes a wendigo and what truly happened during the war you should do it sheen okay I, i'll totally do it the notes are really cool found the notes about the storyline yeah yeah and i think i know where i did a video about wendigos and i actually missed one of the notes i think maybe two of the notes because they're not in that cave i didn't know that very cool sheen loves wendigos so much he tries to stay cool just to be a little more like them yeah <laughs> i don't know why i got rid of that yeah, I absolutely love it. Should we go top left? I feel like top left would be faster. What do you guys think? We'll go top left. And then we'll go back down and do the Wendigo thing. Again, there's so many mini quests is the other thing. In Caldera, there's really not any quests in terms of your caves. You have the weapons, which are really the only quests. Actually, I take that back. Caldera did a good job with quests because the weapons are the quests. So I don't want to say that. But I don't know. The quests over here, especially that Wendigo cave is really cool. Actually, quite accurate to the Wendigos from native mythology. From what I know of it, yeah, it seemed like it. As I saw the Wendigo first in my tent, or my first playthrough, and I jumped out of my seat. Yeah, man. Let's go, what the heck is that? They're scary. They're probably the most interesting looking enemy, I think. I'm ill today still. Ah, I hope you feel better, Don Weaver. Use the bird mask, good point. Good point, good point. I for, honestly, I just forget. I don't know what my deal is. I, I always forget. I think it's because I'm looking at chat. Like, if I was playing by myself, I wouldn't forget. Yeah, they're definitely scary. But, yeah, Wendigo's definitely the, my favorite. I just feel like the town building should have been done better in Caldera. Also, I, I... We talked about this before, too, but I think the way to fix Caldera is to add more samples. The biggest problem is that there are no samples in the base game. When they added Definitive Edition, they should have made samples in the base game. You wouldn't always want to grab them because they are heavy, but you could slowly build them up and store them in your stash if you wanted to as you play the game. The problem right now is that in order to do sample farming, which is arguably required for New Sirocco to do it the correct way, takes forever. I mean, there's no way to do it efficiently. You have to grind out the samples. When do you stream again after this stream? I stream every Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, Thursdays are usually later in the day, though. Usually about 4 p.m. to 12 a.m. Just so anyone who can't make it Tuesday can make it Thursday. That's been working so far. If I need to change it, eventually I will. But, but yeah, I stream Thursday as well. Agree, it's too focused on grinding. Yeah, I mean, if you just added it to the other regions. 4 p.m. on what global? Uh, central time. Sorry. Yeah, central time. 4 p.m. central time. So, like, it'd be like five hours from right now, I think. Ish. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. Why does the Wendigo have ice shards around him? Don't know. Uh, I think it's just a feature they added. Probably has to do with... It is interesting, though. It looks a lot like the moon shards that are in this game. We're going to buff quite a bit. 
Okay, this is the clock tower puzzle. And we're going to fight all of the elementals at once, if I can. I've never done that before, because they're always fighting something, but this is interesting. And I'm excited. So let's do this. We are going to take this. And another one, because we're a little bit low here. Which chakram should I... We're actually going to go ornate. Look at this. All, all these elementals. This is crazy. This is actually insane. This might be a bad idea to attack all of them at once. <laughs> it might actually be a terrible idea. Oh my word, look at this. This is crazy. I've never seen him do this. This is nutty. Oh yeah, this was definitely a terrible idea. Oh, I found a pole. Uh-oh, I didn't find a pole. Oh my word. Ah, it's so hard not to get hit. Oh, they block each other. Ornate Chakram has so much physical damage. Oh my word. They deal a lot of damage. Look at that. It tracks so far, too. Yeah, this was a terrible idea, but it's hilarious. <laughs> There's like so many. Okay, which one do I want to take out first? I'll go for the fire. Oof, right in the face. Right through the pole. Excellent. Excellent gameplay. Oh, they don't block each other. This is weird. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Oh, wow. That was crazy. I've never seen so many elementals in one location. So we've got two light particles. We're going to grab the mana stones as well. Oh, what? That's bogus. You're supposed to get... Oh, no. You, you're you supposed to get only one. You can get up to two. Okay. The other two come from earlier. One fire. One ice. And two decay. We got lucky on the decay. So you get three a total from the two you kill earlier. And you should end up with about three. I got five decay, though. That was really fun. Great gameplay. Thanks, CS. That was really interesting. I never seen all five of well, because usually what happens is is you start the bloody business quest, is how I do it. And then I come over here and they're fighting the bloody sorcerer. But this time I didn't do that, so they weren't fighting anything. They were just all chilling. It's kind of funny. Greatest of their time are usually misunderstood, Sheen. This bar fight was the call. <laughs> Fair enough. When you finish that fight, check your bag. You have an elemental immunity potion. Oh, I do, don't I? <laughs> Dude, I could have been immune to all that damage. Ah, uh, I could have been immune to all that damage. Hey, it's fine. We saved it for later, right? Saved it for later. Saw a mod that adds mounts, with the, which is very cool. It does. I haven't tested it myself, but it looked very interesting. There's a few different mounts. I think... Did Sinai work on that one? I think maybe he worked on that one. Seems like a pretty cool mod. What do you think should be added in Outward? Hard to say, really. It's it's pretty hard to say. I think... Oh, I know what, I know what should be added. I think passive... Passive animals and NPCs should be added to Outward. Now, we see this in the Antique Plateau, which is, again, why it's one of my favorite regions the wolf mercenaries are passive. Technically. What they'll do is they'll fight enemies with you, but they're passive to you. What I think would be interesting is if you had NPCs and different animals that were completely passive. Right now, we have no animal that's passive that I know of. Other than the coral horns. The alphas are not passive, but the coral horns are. What we need is more passive animals. Maybe even... Like, if they didn't even drop anything, would be fine. It just, there needs to be more stuff that you could just mess with. You know? 
And NPCs would be a really cool idea because you could have, I don't know, random caravans of people just walking around. You wouldn't be able to interact with them or anything, but they'd just be there. Be it would add a little bit more to the world. I know a lot of people's complaint is that the world seems empty. I would disagree, mostly because I know I play the game enough that I know that's not the case. But I think if you were to say that that was a problem, you could fix it that way. Just add a whole bunch of different things you could find out in the wild. Like a, maybe a caravan, like I said, or maybe just a random NPC has fallen off of a bridge or something and he's just sitting there mending himself, you know? Because I think, personally, one of the coolest things to run across is the quest at the very, very beginning where you have to give the guy a bandage so he'll give you a tribal favor. You get to hear a little story about how he tried to fight the lightning or what is it called mantis shrimp try to fight the mantis shrimp and he got a hole ripped in his gut and he somehow fixes it with a bandage so i think stuff like that would add a lot you know it's very cool some skyrim-esque interactions during our travels will be fun yeah just even if like i said even if you couldn't interact with them it would just add to the world building obviously interacting with them would be better but Jilbert is passive. Um, technically, but they'll actually fight you, so I don't want to say they're passive either. I was thinking more along the lines of things that just wouldn't actually fight you. Not that they would even run away. Well, yeah, that they would run away. Like, the Jilbert will fight you. I think. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Maybe he is passive. Yeah, you might be right, because I don't think Jillbirds do fight you. Pearlbirds and the Cutthroat do, but the Jillbird doesn't. He just runs away. Huh. I always had it in my head that they were passive. Interesting. Which skill tree is better for dagger build? What's up, Yash? Warrior Monk or Speedster? Warrior Monk. Speedster is not needed for daggers. In any way. It can work with it, but it's not needed whatsoever. Uh... Warrior Monk, on the other hand, is extremely good because he's going to inflict pain and confusion. Warrior Monk works with every single build ever. But yeah, the Speedster, I don't I don't like Speedster with daggers. Some people do. I, I don't think it works as well. You play with your viewers sometimes? I, I haven't really. I mean, I played with a few people in the past. Uh, mostly members of the channel, but... Most of the time, I'm just kind of talking playing in co-op also hinders the stream a bit because i noticed it's, it's not a bad thing and it's not like i'm against it or anything it's just it hinders it a bit because i can't like focus on chat as much and i can't focus on my own gameplay as much so i've liked playing it solo better but i, I have done a few co-op in the past i played with liger skuma and six for a bit those are all three uh, people that have oh look a mantis shrimp play with want to be a member too I mean, you can be. I, I don't. I don't ask for members, but I do appreciate it. Yes, he died. That's so cool. All right, let's find these notes. I'm gonna show you guys where these are at because these are really cool. Jilberts have this vibe of Diablo loot goblins. Great loot of them if you're able to catch them. Oh, I loved those goblins, Whitey. That was really cool that you brought that up. Backstab, backstab, backstab doesn't sound bad. No, like I said, it, some people like it. I don't think it's needed whatsoever, though. I think daggers are strong enough without the, the infinite cooldown. Speedster with dagger goes really well when playing co-op because you get many chances to sweep, kick, and backstab. Been doing it with the mage. Yeah, I, again, it's one of those things. I think it's... If you go into that kind of build, it's pretty fun. But for me, personally, I don't... I don't know. But to, you know... That's another thing. I don't really use Speedster all that much. So, you gotta take that into consideration as well. I think Warrior Monk complements it better, but you definitely have an option with Speedster. Holy cow, is that good loot or what? Now, I don't think this is where the note is. I think it's over here, actually. Yeah, it's in this building back here. Yeah, okay, now I'm remembering. Yeah, it's a playstyle thing, Absolutely. Absolutely. My first playthrough, I thought that you could make friends with the bandits if you dropped them stuff. Oh, that'd be kind of fun. Yeah, it definitely doesn't work. <laughs> they just straight up try to kill you instead. That'd be a neat idea, though. Aha! The first bit of lore. Are you guys ready? These are very cool. Also, these look like lexicon books, almost. 
It'd be pretty funny with Liger and co-op when he shoots and runs behind the mobs and backstabs them to the end of Earth. Yeah, that would be funny. All right. It's 12th midwinter. The legend is a sham. While everyone rations the last few rotten bread loaves and salted meat or chokes on poisonous scourge flesh in desperation, I am full and strong, feeding just on the fallen alone. In fact, I've never felt stronger, never more keen and alert. Even if Timothy suspects me, what can anyone do? They're frail, starved, weak. I am strong. I am predator. They are... It cuts off. So, to give more context to what's going on here, essentially, this is during the Scourge War, whenever the Har members of Armatan and Levant were creating golems to fight off the Scourge. Well, it got so bad back then that um, people were starving. I mean, they couldn't get food to the warriors or to the, the fighters because there was no food because all the farmers were dying, right? Um, every It was a horrible time. I mean, there was no... It was just rough. So it was basically kind of like a famine because the Scourge were destroying everything. And so this guy essentially turned to cannibalism to stay alive. And so we're kind of reading his story of how he became a cannibal. I think the last note's over here. Ah, yes. Third late autumn. The Scourge are beaten down the flimsy... Beating down. Okay. The Scourge are beating down the flimsy barricades. The golems are barely able to hold them off. There is little food and no rescue in sight, though Upper Harmattan is just a few strides away. I know the legend that to partake of human flesh will bring down the wrath of life, but my choices are to starve or take my chances that the legend is just that, a legend. The choice is obvious. So, what's interesting here is that he, this is the first letter. I, I read it out of order. This is the first one. So the legend is that you turn into a Wendigo if you eat human flesh. Now, likely, this is because of the first Wendigo. Because we know that the first Wendigo is the first Wendigo. It's literally his name, right? <laughs> it makes sense. Um, but it's likely that he's just a legend. Not very many people knew of him. Those who knew of him were barely escaped. And so the legend kind of survived. And that's how people knew about being Wendigos. Now, what's interesting as well is that most Wendigos are actually in, likely in regions such as Cherisonese and the Antique Plateau, the more grassy regions that get cold because the desert has no Wendigos. Caldera has no Wendigos. Monsoon only has one Wendigo or the, the swamp, which that one's kind of like completely odd. Feels weird. The first Wendigo was the cousin of the uncle of the grandma of the original. <laughs> yeah, you're close, right? You're close. You're getting there. What's the lore of the first Wendigo? Um, not much is known about him. I, I assume that he was a Cryptea warrior who, while they were guarding the idol from the Red Lich's statue, he starved. They couldn't get food down to him, and then they he starved, and so he tried to eat his friends and became a Wendigo. But we don't really know for sure. That's kind of my theory behind it, though. Imagine playing as a Wendigo. That'd be so cool. All right, 18th midwinter. The beast is coming. I can hear it coming for me. It's clawing through the walls. It's screaming for my blood. It will devour me. I cannot get out. I cannot get away. I cannot stop it. Kill it, kill it, kill it. So this, from what I know, is actually the person who is becoming the Wendigo. He's losing his mind slowly. I originally thought that it was someone who was running from a Wendigo, but I think now it's the, the person himself before he became a Wendigo. Seems to make a little bit more sense than uh, the alternative. A cannibalism skill tree? Ooh, that'd be crazy. What would you even have in terms of abilities? And then this would be him. Oh, don't make it easy on me. Stand still. Wow, he died fast. And 
fire damage destroys. So here's the Wendigo. Again, very cool design of an enemy. Terrifying. Like, completely terrifying. If you saw this thing up close, I mean, that's horrifying. A lot of dead bodies lying around, right? A lot of dead bodies lying around. For Native American, you become a Wendigo if you eat human food. It's linked to cold in winter because that's when famine happens. Yeah, so pretty accurate to the... To the actual... Real life, what do you call it? Myth mythology, I guess? Very interesting. Also, the only place in the game where you can get cold stones while mining a mana stone. Very interesting. Um, so then we go in here, and there should be one last note. Maybe two? No, one last note. 20th Midwinter. There are six deep gouges on the page, almost like tally marks. So, yeah, essentially he became a Wendigo, and you get to kind of see how he documented the process. It's it's terrifying thought, honestly. It is horrifying, if you really think about it. Imagine becoming a monster. It's kind of like a... Oh, there's, there's something you can compare it to, but I don't know what it is. I think I can get this, actually. Skeleton lies here. It almost looks like something shed it like a coat. Emerged from it. A sense of hunger lingers around it. A hunger for raw meat. I don't have raw meat, unfortunately, but... It's a very terrifying thought to become something you don't want to become just because of hunger, right? What's up, fat guy? <laughs> Love that name, by the way. What's going on, man? Very fun. I always forget to read that stuff, but it's such a cool little mini quest type of thing. A lot of cold stones. I'm going to take all those. When to go burst out of the human, shedding it like a cocoon? Yeah. Kind of metal, it's something for sure. When to go is folklore in folklore is a lot worse. I can imagine. Aren't they completely They're more like Monsters of the Night in folklore, uh, folklore aren't they? This cave's pretty good for my trapper. Cave's a pretty fun little cave as well. I think it's a really good design. You can kind of see that the Wendigo has the same build up like a human. Yeah. Thought a Wendigo was like a giant demon dragon, not a cursed deer. Well, there's a Wendigo in Elden Ring, too. There's two of them. You get to fight them in the. I thought that was interesting as well. The reindeer looking thing is blue. Technically, that's kind of a Wendigo ish. No, not nearly. I always thought it was. I guess it's not. It's just a deer, isn't it? Huh. For some reason, I had it in my head that that was kind of a Wendigo. It's not really. I have nothing for stamina right now. I'd like to think it is, but it's it's probably not. It's more of just a deer. What do you know about the giant crystal tower? The giant crystal tower is interesting. So we know that the vigil pylons were to stop the Scourge. That's how they trapped him. Essentially, the big ones. Because there are these big Scourge that are kind of way stronger. Probably like the Devourer. And that seemed to be the only way to defeat him. I mean, because that's way bigger than a Shell Horror. Clearly, that is massive. And so they trapped him to essentially stop them because it's the only way they could defeat him. And then... What's interesting about this one, though, is that they usually defend against them. So he lat put them in there so that the Scourge would not go near them. But that specific dungeon there has a giant who turned into a Scourge. And he actually invaded in that area. It's like, why would you invade there under the pylon? It's kind of interesting. Yeah, this is essentially a gigantic hell, uh, shell horror is what I like to think of it. I think they all look like shell horrors. Wendigo is a guilt thing. Hmm. Interesting. Shane, can you give it raw meat? Yeah, if you get raw meat, you just get the chill hex. Actually, it's not a bad idea. Do I have raw meat? Did I get it from the Wendigo? Or not the Wendigo, the... The Boozu. If I can get it, I get the chill hex, actually. Let me go see if I can do that. 
<laughs> too late, no meat, yeah. The Vibers drop meat. I think Boozu do too, right? Madeira reminds me of a Wendigo. Gale, his, like, half chest body. Interesting. Interesting. I didn't think about that. Try thinking of how Trog came to exist. Like, you sleep in a wrong position for so long, you become. You become hump and slowly turn into a trog. That's great. Ah, oh, that's funny. Trogs are very... Like... They're straight from D&D, &D, right? I mean, that's pretty clear. They're straight ripped from D&D. &D. But trogs are an interesting design as well. Because they're just essentially mushroom monsters. They're very dumb. They're very one-track minded. And they follow a leader, kind of like a... What, are, what would you call... What is with the grass, by the way? It's kind of weird in this location. They have follow, basically, a queen. They're not a hive mind, but they... They act like one, sort of, because they obey everything the, the queen says. You know what I mean? Yeah, like an ant. Like ants. Like an ant colony. That's right. That'd be a be way better way to describe it. Um, Yeah, like an ant colony. Like internet people. <laughs> Matriarchal. There you go. Want a giant storyline? Alex, that would be awesome. I mean, we have a little bit. If you take Blue Chamber, you get to know a little bit about giants, but it's not enough, right? Wait a second. Check this out, guys. The door closed. I didn't close this, did I? It's weird. All right. Oh, you actually need raw meat? That sucks, dude. That sucks. Buzu meat doesn't count? How's Buzu meat not raw? I guess you actually need the specific raw meat. Huh. I even I'm learning something new today, I guess. I thought Buzu might work. We'll go kill a Weber. How about that? You gonna leave in nine minutes? Okay, sounds good, Don Weaver. We'll be excited to have you back. What about the merchant? Uh, merchant might have it as well. On the gain of nine dots, brand yeah, a uh, brand itself had trogs, manticores. The game brand had, I think, bees though, like flying bees. It would have been interesting to fight those. Although, let me tell you, I'm not a big fan of flying enemies. They usually suck, especially after playing. I feel Elden Ring. You just hate flying enemies like so much. Hey, thanks for the sub. Welcome to the channel. What's your favorite weapon? Mine is the Scepter of the Cruel Priest because of the story of it. It has a very cool story. My personal favorite weapon in the game. Uh, the most powerful in the game is by far Brand, I think. But the my personal favorite is Dreamer Halberd for two reasons. Number one, is it's the second most powerful weapon in the game, I think. And number two, it is given to you... ...by the Friendly Immaculate. And essentially... It is... These Immaculates have these hearts, right? They have a heart. They have multiple hearts, actually. They have a gem that will grow inside their heart. We see this from the Butcher Cleaver. If you kill the Butcher of Men, you get the Butcher Cleaver gem that you can turn into that weapon. And so what I like to think is that the Friendly Immaculate literally took the gem from his heart and gives it to us. Like, that's how much he cares about us. That's how much he enjoys our company, the fact that we would talk to him four different times and tell him to keep his own help for himself because we really do care about him. Like, we truly become the friendly Immaculate's friend. Like, we actually become his friend throughout the story if you talk to him enough. That he gives you a ridiculously strong weapon that he created from his own heart gem. That just is so cool. Have you played Brand? No, I don't know how to play it. I've looked at it. I don't even know if it's... able to be bought anymore. I can't find it anywhere. Am I your friend, Sheen? Yeah, Don Weaver. We could be friends. <laughs> Maculate to Chad? Absolutely, he is. He's, he's super cool. And then, not only that, but then you get to the end game where you're fighting bosses, and you get to fight either him as something or you get to fight what he became after he died it's very confusing but you see the friendly immaculate in that dungeon where you fight the what is it the dreamer immaculate i believe oh, he's he's just absolutely awesome he's by far the best npc in the game and his weapon is just crazy cool 
Uh, Stefan, what countries did you get to visit and what did you think of them? Like, in IRL countries? None. <laughs> I have not visited any countries. I almost went to Spain once, but I never ended up going there. Unfortunately, I would have loved to. Gene, does your milkshake bring all the trogs to the cave entrance? Yeah, 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 Jeremiah, you know me, you know me. <laughs> you know me. Yeah, I'd like to play Brand, I just never found a way to do it. Alright, offer a piece of raw meat to the skeleton. We learn the chill hex. As you place the offering in the ribcage, a line of painful frost shoots up your arm and towards your heart, filling you with a dreadful chill. You feel like the world itself has warned you, go no further or face the consequences. And now we have the chill hex, which I'm already inflicting with my chakra, but still cool. U.S. is kind of like multiple countries. It's so big and diverse. Yeah, well, I feel like, at least for me living in the U.S., if I was going to travel, I'd travel to different states in the U.S., you know? Going outside the country takes a lot more effort when I can just kind of travel across, I don't know, like a couple miles and go somewhere that feels very different from where I live already. So while it may be different for other people, I feel like for me, myself, it's a bit harder. I don't even know if I'll ever travel outside the country because there's already so many places to travel within. I feel like it'd be kind of like if you lived in England, maybe, or, or Europe. Lived in Europe. There's so many countries in Europe that you just kind of be like, well, I'm just going to. Obviously, these are all different countries, so it feels a bit different, but. I don't know. It's a very scary lore. Even the world tells you this is not something natural. Don't do this. Yeah, it's very... It's supposed to be very dark. It's probably the more dark of the quest lines, to be honest. Go to Spain without the S. Pain? <laughs> Go to pain. Okay. My first playthrough, I thought that a simple mace is the strongest weapon in Outward. Maces are pretty strong. I mean, it's a one-handed weapon that has the most damage of the one-handed weapons. I personally love the sword. And the reason I like a halberd so much is because it feels like a longer sword. Which is weird, because you'd think it'd feel like a spear, but it's more like a spear mixed with a sword. It's very cool. I like that weapon. Try to order a custom body pillow with a friendly immaculate on it, Sheen? Oh, boy. <laughs> I don't know if we'll be doing that, but... Yeah, Friendly Immaculate's a, a legend, for sure. He's a beast. Excellent. Excellent. You love when a plan comes to fruition perfectly. Well, we did the two most fun quests over here. We did the whole Wendigo thing and that. And actually, if you talk to the guards over in the Antique Plateau, they'll warn you about that Wendigo. They'll tell you they haven't had time to go kill it. So be careful. It's been a long time since I read that. See you later, Don Weaver. Take my Ascendant power with you. All right, sounds good, man. What's my favorite skill? Easily Brace. Brace is the best skill in the game. Zero. Zero challenge on that. It's easily the best. Just delaying Caldera? Yeah, at this point. You're number one. Thanks, Don Weaver. <laughs> yeah, honestly, at this point. It does feel like I am, did We shall go there soon enough, and we shall feel the pain and misery of the grind. It may be pretty hard. I don't have a lot of defense. The last couple times I went to Caldera, I had a lot of defense. I suck at this game, but I love the atmosphere of the world. Welcome to the stream, my friend. Don't worry, you're not the only one. When I was first starting out, even midway, I sucked at the game as well. Actually, when I first started this channel, I sucked. I only really got a lot better when I started streaming the game. You need to play a lot more, and it helps a lot. Using good weapons helps, too. That's for sure. Zen, what's going on, my man? How's it going? Hopefully you're doing all right. I think they did blood sacrifices right. Not eating the bodies so they aren't cannibals. Yeah, blood sacrifices are more... They're killing a person and siphoning the blood from them. They're not necessarily consuming the bodies or anything like that. My experience with Caldera is that it's the area where my builds go to die. <laughs> Excellent. You need the pirate build to be goaded? Yeah, Zen. Zen's a big fan of the pirate build. 
Hey, that was a fun build. Let's... Should I sell some stuff? Let's see if I can sell anything. Honestly, I might try Sky Crown for a bit. I feel like that'd be pretty fun. I don't know, though. Mm, did I have any Horror Chitin I was going to save up? I don't think I picked up any. What the heck? All right, we've got a Cult Remains, Mana Stones. What's the last thing I need? I need Gabbery Wine. Do I have any Gabbery Wine? I have very little, but I have some. Ah, I have 11 in my inventory. Okay. Also, how is this Marshmallow and Jelly still alive? That makes zero sense to me. All right, Mana Stones. How many do we need? Last thing I need. Where was it at? Tripping myself up right now. There's a material that I need. Mana Stone. Gabri Wine. Oh, a coat remains. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here you are. There we go. Or no, it's Ghost Eyes. It's not Cold Remains, it's Ghost Eyes. What am I doing? What's up, Corvo? Welcome back. Happy Valentine's Day, Sheen and everyone. Yeah, happy Valentine's Day, everyone. What's up, Adam? King, what's going on, man? Alright, let's see if I remember. It's Gabri One, Mana Stone, Ghost Eye. Gotcha. You want an easy way to beat the game? do this. Farm a crap ton of spirit varnishes and then just use them every three seconds. Everything dies. It's so funny. I did also a outward build. My mission was to play only with the fidget spinner. Oh, from debug mode? Yeah, it's pretty hilarious. Good test for a build would be to see if you can fight enemies with only basic buffs, water, and stamina recovery too. Be fine in Caldera. How can I help that you? is true. All right, we've got plenty of ghost eyes. What I was missing was the... I think I can make decay varnish. But the cult remains. All right, we need to figure out what exactly I want to buy when I go over there. Now we'll just sell some stuff. Douglas got a uh, goatee. Welcome to the Fearless Companion. You became a member, my friend. Awesome. Thank you very much. Welcome to the Sheen Shots channel as an official S tier member of society see how i did that you are now the top echelon of human beings welcome <laughs> this chakra build yes yep i've not enchanted all my stuff either usually i like to do that once i get to halfway through caldera we'll see how it goes though although technically i could do it right now it's pretty easy to do in caldera though because the Cave with the Ancient Dwellers have a whole bunch of Dreamers root. The cultured folks? Yeah, yeah. Gotta go by. Hey, catch you later, Jane. Let's go check the other merchant here. Ideally, I just want to make sure I have the correct potions for this. Honestly, decay varnishes wouldn't be bad. Is that my mature is weak to decay. Oh my word, we're buying that. No way are we passing on that many. Uh, Gabriel Wines. Such an illustrious resource. Mm hmm. All right. And we're good. Will hot weather be a problem? I doubt it. 34 with water? Yeah, it's gonna be fine. It's not Valentine's Day in Brazil just yet. Ah. Not quite for you, my friend. Anybody got fun Valentine's Day plans? I know this is my fun Valentine's Day plan, so, like... Yeah! Way better than doing anything else, playing Outward. It's June 12th. Oh, interesting. How can I, help you? I didn't even think about that. Alright, we're good. I should probably have crafted more health potions, but I didn't. It's whatever. We'll craft a whole bunch later on when I need them. We are your Valentines? That's what I'm saying, Benji. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Why are you calling this build the Wolf Warrior? You can use Wolf Armor. The idea was to use the Hound Mask. So I was going to be look like a Wolf Mercenary. But I ended up not doing it. So I'm going to have to change the name of the build when I 
if I ever make the build video. 98. We need to figure out... Oh, wait, I need that, actually. But yeah, mostly just because I... I didn't have a good name for it. I Like, that was what the idea was, and then I kind of switched it. Alright. I feel pretty good about this. What do you guys think? I think Caldera is going to be fine. No, it's going to be easy. Everybody calm down. It's going to be okay. Get the heck out of here. We should probably... If we end up in Monsoon, we can buy Marshmallow Tartines. That'd be so convenient. Bird, something about a bird. It's a bird thing. I guess since I have the Pearl Bird Basket, I can friend? do that. Yes! Yes, baby! Let's freaking go. That was perfect. Marshmallow Tartines. Go straight to Enmerker. Go straight to Caldera. Like, life sometimes can't get any better than this. Pair of gear before going into Caldera. Good idea. That's a really good idea. Dimension! What's so good about Marshmallow Tartines? I can show you right now. Marshmallow Tartines offer the highest stamina buff in the game. Stamina Recovery 5. They are the only Tartine that offers Stamina Recovery 5, and they offer the highest amount. Extremely useful. Do I want... I actually do... No. I don't think I want to cook them yet. I think I want to wait until I travel to Berg. Yeah? Yeah, I think that's the play. Now, did I buy the bread? I did. Where is it at? Can you not sell bread back? That's interesting. Six bread, six marshmallows. All right. We're going to take... No, we're not going to sleep at all, because if I sleep, I'm going to waste that tartine. So we'll wait till we get over there. We'll take some tea. Where is my tea that helps with burnt stamina? Here we go. But yeah, marshmallow tartines offer stamina recovery five, which... Is so, Bullion de Predator, which is one of the better stamina things. Bullion de Predator is really good. Offers attack up. That only gives you stamina recovery 4. So, it's really good because of the extra weapon damage. But, the Marshmallow Tartines give you 5. Stamina recovery 5. So, it's even better. Definitely something you want to be trying to get constantly. For sure. Ambrain and Begatelli also have level 5 stamina. Yeah, Ambrain especially is pretty good because you can get it really easily in Caldera. Although it does have drawbacks eventually. Don't get hooked. You might end up like Sheen. Yeah, yeah. It's also really light. That's a good point too. Tartines are very light, making it easy to carry a whole bunch of them around. And if you do it like I do, you have like 18 of them at a time. Bread's too cheap to be resold, I guess. Makes sense. Ah, here we go. So, marshmallow tartines do the same as marshmallows. So, I could show you if I eat this marshmallow. I didn't do anything. Okay, maybe they don't. No, they should. Maybe you have to refine them into the bread first. I'm not sure. But I know the tartine has the five. Said I wanted to leave, but the stream is too good. <laughs> Thanks, CS. Appreciate it, man. It's a pretty good day, not gonna lie. Pretty good day. Can't complain. Just found 20 loaves of bread inside an ancient dungeon. Care buying a couple, mate? <laughs> Would you like these 20 loaves of bread? There's four bandits right next to each other. Guys, we're not doing this today. Watch this, watch this. Jukes. Jukes. Absolutely just juked out of his mind. Had no idea what he was doing. Ooh, this is a fun fight. We may fight this. I like fighting the giant. He's gonna wallop this dinosaur real quick. Oh, decay? Doesn't even matter to him. He's basically immune. Oof. The big impact. Oh, bandit's coming in for some help here. Is he gonna help the giant or is he gonna help the dinosaur? He's gonna help the giant. Nope, the dinosaur. Excellent decision by him. Ooh, more bandits? This is gonna be the most legendary battle I've ever seen. The giant slowly hitting all the bandits, but the bandits coming in with these epic axe swings. Giant just has too much impact. They're not really getting much done. Also, mainly shielding rather than attacking. 
Ooh, but they are putting in work. They're, they're trying their best. This is a uh, group co-op mod we're doing right now. And uh, they're, they're just getting destroyed, honestly. That's what's happening. Instantly wrecked. We've got a solo guy left. Can he do it? Can he just win it for his buddies? Already going to be a no as he dies to decay in about three seconds. So what a failure. You it. You fool. I'm no bandit. Who do you think you are? Yes, I'm above the bandits. I'm much more. I have the power of a lich. And you dare take me on. I shall defeat you. Battle of Winterfell has nothing on this. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, uh, welcome to the stream, by the way, ES Mage. I didn't see your comment, but welcome. Gotta go now. Have a good day, everyone. Hey, catch you later, CS. Ooh, a bandito. Oh, failed. My buddy. You made me miss. What are you doing? Watch this. Yoink. I yoinked his life away from him. Don't forget the poking stick for Brand. Ah, shoot. You're right, I forgot it. Don't want to grab it. Should I grab it or should I come back? It feels like one of those moments where I'm going to go get Brand later. You know what I mean? No, we got to go grab it now. I can't forget Brand. Brand is going to be so good. Good point. I'll go grab it. Valsheim's day is a guy who was simply happy to be alive until he was killed. Now we celebrate him. It's a weird holiday, isn't it? Yeah, oh, someone asked me what my favorite skill was earlier. Oh, uh, that was a while ago, though. Anyway, Bray's my favorite. I think I already talked about why, but it's just so good. There's more bandits. Because I use Bray's constantly, especially with the chakra build. Oh, it's so nice. Weapons are greater than skills, greater than armor, greater than stats. Health, stamina, mana. Picking the wrong skills aren't that big of a deal. Just be sure to have a nice weapon. Right, weapon is... Which is funny, that's how it is in a lot of games. If you think about different Souls games as well. I mean, your weapon is arguably the most important. I mean, you could beat a game level one with a good weapon. It's it's kind of like a video game thing. My bad, Broad missed it. Oh, I got you, man. No worries. Do I have a question in Demon Souls? Are you going to be doing a build playthrough, or are you going to be watching videos to help you out? It'll be a blind playthrough. Oh, blind. It'll be a blind playthrough. I've never seen anything on Demon Souls, so it'll be completely blind. I need the poking stick. Is there something you need? Yes, I need the poking stick. That is a very expensive poking stick. Wow. Little did I know, it is the most legendary poking stick of all time cost your soul to, to buy it, but hey, whatever. Is there a chance to receive back breakthrough points? I went into Rune Sage and my damage is poor. Uh, unfortunately, no. That's one of the main mechanics of the game is that once you take your breakthrough, you're stuck with that. So in, this is what increases the replayability is it forces you to make a new build. So if you ended up, which honestly, you're probably fine. Rune Sage is really good. Um, I would recommend using Tenebris Armor with it. Or switching into using it as backup instead of as your main. Um, but if you did want to do something else, you would have to create a new build. Which is definitely frustrating first time playing, but it's a good mechanic. It'll it'll get you so a lot more replayability. Not going to use the Radiant Wolf Sword? No. Um, for the wolf build, the idea was to use... I don't even... Like, the wolf mercenary was mainly due to the hound mask. I was going to look similar to the wolf mercenaries over in in the Antique Plateau. The idea was never even to use Radiant Wolf Sword. That would have been a fun idea, though. I'm definitely going to have to change the name. I think wolf mercenary doesn't really fit anymore. Uh, Sheen 
He asked how, I repeat the question a lot, but I really need the answer. So which is better for Rainbow Hex Mage? Antique plate set with economy or rusted lich? Antique plate set. Technically, technically rusted is better because you get really high damage in all of the elements. But if you look at the rust plate armor, or rust lich armor versus antique plate, what is the main difference? Stamina. As a hex user, as a hex user, it is very important that you be able to run around because the main issue with hexes is that getting close to the enemy means you die or you take damage. So for me, I feel like antique plate is better because you get really high negative mana cost, really high negative stamina cost, while also still getting really good fire and ethereal damage. And you don't need to buff your other hexes for them to be strong. You're just getting a lot more from fire and ethereal. So in my opinion, antique plate's better because it is more usable. It makes it easier to use hexes, easier to play with them. But if you went for highest damage, obviously Rustlich would be better. Planning a build for Cruel Priest. Step to the Cruel Priest. Uh, that would be my corruption build, I think, if I do a corruption build. Because the thing about a corruption build is you're already weak to lightning. You might as well play into that, I think. Antique Plate has more drip, though. Antique Plate looks fantastic. You look very... I don't even know what you look like, but you look pretty sick. Notice that I played this like four hours last night, died every 10 seconds, become slave, new dude, died again. <laughs> yeah, it's rough, man, it's rough. Game's definitely funny after first four hours, it gets hard. Or it's hard to get into, but I think it's a gym. Yes, yes. That's the biggest thing about it. It is definitely hard to get into, but... Well... It's, a, it's one of these games where dying is not necessarily a bad... Like, dying is clearly a bad thing in Outward. They make it so. Your stats get worse. You lose items sometimes, depending on how it works. You know, it's clearly not a good idea to die. You don't want to die. But they would not have included so many death scenarios if they didn't know you were going to die, you know? It's part of the experience, for sure. Should try out different weapons with the Corruption build. Figure out which one you feel most comfortable with. I think I'll probably try Shriek, Horror Weapon, Scepter. Uh, is there another Decay Weapon? I won't try World, Ag World Edge because World Edge is terrible with low stamina cost builds. Likely it'll be a... Uh, will it be a higher? I don't know. We'll see how it, how it goes. But I'll probably take Holy Mission because... You get extra 20 decay resist. That with a tumor armor or silver armor, you get up to like 80 decay resist with nothing else. So I think holy mission probably be most beneficial for that. I haven't progressed the main story past leaving Sierzo, and I got the game four days after it came out. Oh really, Zion? Dang. That's crazy. You got lots to do then, Zion. That's exciting, man. That's there's a lot to do then. Surprised with how many death scenarios I haven't seen yet. Oh, there's a ton. There's one where if you die near the Trog Cave, near the Manticore, they sacrifice you. The Trogs will actually sacrifice you to their queen. There's one where if you die in the Hive in Enmerker Forest, they you'll wake up and there will be the Hive bugs eating you alive. There's a lot of different bandit ones they added. One of the coolest ones you can get is dying to an Ancient Dweller in the Ancient Dweller Cave or Vault of Stone, and it's a very interesting... You, like, wake up with this dream you had, sort of. It's very cool. I got that one on one of my streams, I think. Uh, the Cabal Wind Tower, or Wind Temple, is a really cool one now, because you can get saved by a ghost. I mean, that's fun. Just can't stop restarting and making new builds. I That's the biggest problem, is there's so much to make, you know? There's so many builds to make. I agree with you. I agree with you. Top five favorite weapons in the game. Not the best, but just your favorite. Uh, Brand. And Dreamer. Even though they are the best, uh, they still are my favorite. I think after that, I would go Horror Weapons. Uh, usability. They're fun. They're just you, fantastic. Wait a moment. Number four would be any Chakram, really. I love Chakrams. They're just fun to use. Other than the beginning one, which sucks. It's bad. And then... 
Manticore? No. I'd have to put Gep's Blade on that list, probably. I'll put Gep's Blade instead of Brand, just because it's more fun. And then... It was one of my mind that I had that I'm blanking on now. I'm gonna buy... Should I buy a Luxury Tent? Hmm. I don't have the money for that. How can I help you? Okay, I need to buy the pot now. Uh, Mant uh, Manticore Great Mace is another one of my favorites. Manticore Great Mace is hilariously good and fun to use. Hilariously good. It's like, they're not necessarily... I know you didn't want the best. Sometimes the best weapons are the most fun, too. Sunfall Axe. Sunfall Axe is really fun, too. Yeah. Sunfall Axe is hilariously good. Very good impact. Sunfall Axe has insane impact. Sheen Zar set. Heavy armor set can be made from Tokuga and Levant for a total price of 11 Zar stones and 1800. But is it worth it? No. No, it is not. The Zar set is not worth it for the most part because its negative stats are too bad. And there are other armor sets in the game that give you almost the same stuff. So what I would do... Do I need occult remains? I do, actually. Hmm. We're going to go do the horror farm real quick and come back because I don't actually have enough money to do... I think I'm gonna sleep though, to get anywhere. And I might as well do it anyway. Okay, what was I gonna do? Oh, tent. Here we go. Zarset costs too much stamina. Zarset costs too much stamina. Zarset costs too much speed. It really slows down your gameplay. And Zarset also only makes you good against fire enemies and physical attacks. It is still very weak to any other element. Doesn't break, which is nice. Doesn't break, which is nice. Mist Boon, Matthew, thank you. Thank you. Trying to become a member, low key. It's down below. I don't know if you're like trying or trying. Don't know how, but it should be down below. Outward fashion, people? Yeah, fashion's important. I think Zar set is just in one of those weird places, man. It's the boots are S tier because the boots can be crafted in one single playthrough. They're very good, they complement a lot of builds. The chest plate is absolutely horrendous. It just costs too much to use the chest plate. The helmet looks amazing, but again, if you're using mana, you can't use the helmet, so it's not even a point in even talking about that. What can I do for you? I would say Zar armor is definitely one of the weirdest sets in the game. It's supposed to be the OP option. It's supposed to be the thing that you spend a lot of time getting through legacy chests. But at the same time, you can go and get Chalced uh, Chalcedony armor, which does the exact same for protection. It's so weird. Love the new rain sound they added. It's fantastic. The rain is great. I love it. Nice touch. Zarset kind of look like a bug or a beetle. I like beetle. I think it looks very beetle-like. Kind of like a battle beetle. Ooh, battle beetle. That's kind of got a nice ring to it, I guess. Interesting. I like that. It's the Battle Beetle build. Ooh, that's sick. What armor set do you think is the most underappreciated? Dancer set. Nobody uses a dancer set, and it is arguably the best for stamina. Uh, it gives you infinite stamina. You can even get rid of all of your stamina, put it into mana, and still have good stamina with that armor set. It's crazy. Battle Beetle build I'm coming. That's what I'm saying, Kyle. Maybe we'll get one soon. That sounds kind of good. Not gonna lie. I was about to say Copal is pretty underappreciated. Well, I would say that, but after doing my Ghost of Endmerker, I think people understand its power a bit more now. Uh... The Copal Chestplate is arguably one of the best armor pieces in the game. Because Ethereal is so strong. So if you want to buff Ethereal, you get you just use that and you're absolutely destroying. Plus really high lightning resistance, which makes it easy to kill. Things like the Light Mender or uh, Elite Mantis Shrimp, stuff like that. Excuse me? 
But yeah, Copal's really good. Copal's really good. I think people just don't... Especially, like, if you were a new player and you saw Dancer Armor, and you'd be like, wow, this has no stats. This is terrible. But in reality, it's meant to be that way. You're supposed to be a glass cannon. You have so much stamina. I, honestly, it's really good for running around, too. Get you later, fat guy. Horror Helm plus Rustlich Chest, Outward Fashion. Really? You like that? I thought that looked kind of goofy. Maybe I need to look at it again. Oh, Corvo. Are you on phone, Corvo? Sometimes it doesn't pop up for phone. There should also be a link in the description as well. I apologize. But yeah, Green Copal is absolutely fantastic. Good fashion, too. Looks great. I'd use Zarset if I could stack Flux three times. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Increase your speed. I, that is the biggest thing. That and Kitsunugi armor. Kitsunugi armor is a really cool idea, and I need to remake my top five armor sets video because I included Kitsunugi, and I don't think that's correct. I, I think that was a mistake. The armor set, stat-wise, looks amazing. I mean, it is very resistant to physical damage. It has very high impact resist, but if you look at the negative stats, it's brutal. It makes you so slow. So slow, and you're completely just very weak to any sort of elemental damage, which is unfortunate. What's the top five enemies in Caldera? Top five enemies in Caldera. Let's go difficulty, because that's the best way to do it. I would say Scarlet Emissary is most difficult, number one. Number two would be Gargoyle, second most difficult, simply because they are tricky depending on your build. The third most difficult would definitely be a Ancient Dweller. Again, that's build dependent as well. Some builds deal with Ancient Dwellers very easily. Some don't deal with them hardly at all. I know that without a Lightning Weapon, they're pretty challenging to deal with. And without Impact, they're pretty hard. Um, so those are the first three. Four, I would probably put Gastrocene simply because they're annoying. Gastrocenes aren't really that difficult once you get them down but it's so easy to mess up and they have such control over the battle that they're freaking annoying to fight um and number five either my mature or tour crap i think probably a my mature is more challenging oh no, no 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 number five would be the giant the giant that's over there really that was like the best backstep i've ever seen the giant that's over in Caldera is an absolute menace. I mean, he is extremely difficult to deal with. Well, that didn't work at all, did it? This is going very poorly. He has high protection, maybe? Yeah. Got that confusion on him. Yeah, sit down, bud. That health regen got me almost back up to full. That was nice. Why did I drop my backpack? I don't know. Ancient Dweller can't take physical damage. Most of Caldera is that way. If you don't stack physical damage extremely high, they might as well be immune to it. Same as Gargoyles. Um, a raw damage is what you want over there. Raw damage destroys stuff. But yeah, number five, I would definitely say the giant over there because he has basically a tracking bolt. If you don't dodge, it almost always hits you. And he's very tough. He does a lot of damage quickly. What would you think about the mana wall set with Holy Mission? Primal Ritualist and Rune Sage to get your protection to 18 and you're buried to 20 before completing Caldera. Uh, with Primal Ritualist, you're almost invincible. There is very little that can kill you. The one of the few things is a Scarlet Emissary and a Manticore. For whatever reason, Manticores deal such high damage that even with that setup, they still destroy you. And Scarlet Emissaries have raw damage, which cuts through all defenses. Other than that, there isn't much that can really deal a lot of damage to you. The barrier is really nice, and that much protection is just insane. Oh, 
Oh, I guess I could have killed him the other way. What am I doing? I'm doing it the goofy way. What's wrong with me? Top five regions for Outward. Most fun, challenging. Uh, number one, Antique Plateau. Clearly. Easily Antique Plateau. Number two would actually be Enmerker Forest. I love Enmerker Forest. There's a lot to do here. Three would probably be Caldera. There's very challenging enemies, very fun enemies. Very unique caves. After that, I would probably choose Hall of Marsh because Hall of Marsh is a very mysterious region. There's a lot of hidden stuff. The liches are really cool. Um, and then Cheris and Knees. My... The problem is, I think the desert is my least favorite region, even though I love it. You know what I mean? Like, I love all of them to death. They're all amazing. But I think the desert is my least favorite, even though I still like it. It's just more empty than the other regions. Even though it technically has my favorite cave, the Electric Lab. Uh, Garrett, what's going on? I noticed you use chakrams a lot. They seem pretty cool, and I wanted to make a build with them. What other breakthrough um, and skills to use? Okay, so you want to know what other breakthroughs to use. Hey, Corvo, you became a member. Awesome, my dude. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate that. That's pretty sick. You found it? <laughs> uh, bought the Frozen Chakra and was wondering what other breakthroughs to use. So, Philosopher, you clearly want to use that. I like Warrior Monk, actually. For extra stamina. I would usually choose Warrior Monk over Rogue Engineer. Oh, actually, I actually take this back. There is something I noticed. I'm usually running a lot with this, so what I would do is Mercenary, Philosopher, and Speedster, actually. You could get really high cooldown on your Chakra. You'd have really good stamina from the Mercenary skill tree. And you'd have really good power from... The chakrams. I honestly should have taken mercenary on this build instead of rogue engineer, but I do like having the backpack, and it's what I wanted to go for. So, but mercenary is very good with it. Yeah, Corvo, hey, good to have you, man. That's awesome. Yeah, speedster is not recommended for new players. So if you don't want to go speedster, I would definitely choose warrior monk instead. Warrior monk is a lot easier to use. Uh, but Speedster is probably one of the better ways to go with Chakram. I just unfortunately used Kazite Spellblade instead. I like having the ability to infuse my weapon whenever I want to. And it just feels really good to me. That I can decraft. That is good to know. But yeah, Warrior Muck will be a little bit better for the Speedster for you. Navigating Rudic Train Dungeon is the bane of me. Ah, it could be a nightmare. It could be a nightmare. If you don't know what you're doing, it is very challenging. I'll agree 100%. I'll agree 100% on that. I don't even think I need to be over here. Like, for me, it's a piece of cake, because I've done it so many times, I have it memorized. But if you have no idea which locations are what, it is just brutal. That was probably the quickest kill of all time. I went in there, I comboed, attacked, and just got out. It's like, ugh, dead. Ooh, that bouillon. Left me a tasty snack, and I do appreciate it. I love that combo. I'm going to start using that more. Problem is, unless you can stagger the enemy, it is a bit harder to combo attack. You carry multiple chakrams for different enemies? That too. That's very helpful. Going to end up learning that train dungeon by heart? Yeah. <laughs> I pretty much know it by heart, to be honest. I know which location is which and all that jazz. It's pretty crazy. Ooh, even better combo. Should be one last shell horror I have to deal with. Yep. 
Yeah, that's what I thought. Check this out. I wonder if I can get him stuck. He'll sometimes get stuck. Yeah. And what's really cool is if I do this. If he stays stuck, I can just beat him while he sits there. Nah. Look at this. What a dummy. Problem is, if he gets unstuck and I don't see it, then we're in trouble. Nah, we're good. Ooh, that was close. That was a little too close. This is hilarious. He just sat there. What's he gonna do? He can't do nothing. Boom! Uh, what are you farming money for? I was just gonna do this one time um, before I went to Caldera. We're gonna sell some more weapons. It's a really good idea to do just to have enough money for the town. I figured one last time I'll come down here and do it. Why not, you know? Why not? We're here. I do need to go back to... Um, I need to go to the the hive. I, I could probably kill the hive lord, actually. I don't think I've done that yet. Sheen, have you done the concealed knight then? I have not, actually. Dang it, that'd be so much fun to do. Um, Especially since I need to get my hound mask from Caldera anyway. Or from Sierzo. Dang it. But I would probably delete my tartines much faster if I did that. I might just go to Caldera quickly instead, and I'll come back for that when I want to goof off a bit more. That's what I'll probably do. It's awesome that there are so many different builds for this game that makes it unique every time. You just keep making new characters, try out other skills. Yeah, that's the big thing is even if, especially when you first start out, you don't even know what all the skill trees do. So you can make really cool combinations and just mess with stuff. Why did he... That's weird. He, like, preemptively... Stopped me. Yeah, you want some of this? Get it, bud. Dang it. They're, like, syncing up with each other. Yeah, how's this feel? Dummy. Get out of my face. That did so much corruption. How much corruption did that do? I took my potion. Like 6% with one hit? Wow. That's gotta be, because I think I was 0%. When you first start out, you don't know what a breakthrough is. That they're limited. You always want to make another character and try those other skills. Right, yeah. <laughs> What's up, Dom Weaver? Welcome back. What is the Concealed Knight? Oh, good point. No, I didn't do it on his character. Uh, Concealed Knight is an enemy. I'll. You really not know what it is? I'll go do it if you don't know what it is. Okay, I'll go do it. I don't want people not knowing stuff. The Concealed Knight is a enemy that can only be found after you beat your faction quest. Yeah, I think I'll go do it. Was asking if you have killed the Concealed Knight before. Oh, yeah, I've killed him before. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've killed him before, I just haven't killed him on this character. Like, he's a pretty good money farm, too, honestly. He's got... A minimum of five gold bars, if I remember correctly. By the Blacksmith Hammer, I need to do that, too. Dragon Communion build in ER? That's a fun one. I've played with the dragon stuff. It's a blast. Played lots of Outward, and I end up starting a new character before I do any of the secret bosses. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, usually how it goes. Um, this one is hes kind of like a mini-boss, almost. He's not even really that difficult. But we'll check him out. Did 
Did I use the wrong chakram? Dang it. That was going to one-shot him if I used this one. Oh, shoot. The bugs. The bugs. The bugs. I forgot about them. If you can still hear them, sometimes they go underground and they'll chase you underground. It's really weird. I just use brace on accident. Dang it. It's built as mage. Yeah, pretty much exclusively. Still so much I haven't learned about this game. Well, there's a ton to do in it. That's the thing. I think I've done almost everything. Although, weirdly enough, I'm still missing two Steam achievements. This makes no sense. It probably has to do with cooking something. I think we discussed that last time. It has to be to do cooking something. Hey, thanks for the sub. Welcome to the channel. Appreciate that. Need more regions in this game? Dude, we need Tremontaine. I've been... I've been hounding for Tremontaine since day one. The icy region. You know what? You know what? This has me wanting to play? Valheim. Because Valheim has one of the best icy mountain regions... I have ever seen in a game. It is one of the most well done. It is just fantastic. And I feel like if Trey Montaigne had the same sort of feel, oh, it'd be perfect. Need to cook Vagabond Gelatin? Yeah, I do. Caldera, come to me, Sheen. I am your Valentine's date. You must spend your day grinding samples. <laughs> Newell, you want me to uh, be in pain, don't you? Dagger of Tramontan can be a key to a dungeon. Yes! That would be perfect. That would be beautiful. Because it's so mysterious already. Oh, I messed that up. I don't even know what I was doing. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'm goofing. I'm goofing. Now you're goofing. Sit down, son. Get out of my face. You mess with me, you mess with my weapons. And my weapons kill you instantly. What's this guy want? This guy want some? This guy want some of this, huh? You want some of this, buddy? Sit down. <laughs> Shut up. Hey, thanks for the sub. That's awesome. Vagabond gelatin for the achievement. Oh, you're saying that's probably what it is. Maybe it is, actually. Okay. Um, is that the one with all the colors? That might be. Gates of Catharsis, gang. I want to see more. Ooh, Gates of Catharsis would be really cool. Because that's already extremely mysterious. What the? Okay, guys. Dude, Gates of Catharsis would be awesome. Not gonna lie. I die to a bandit, I'll be sorely displeased. Dealing loads of damage to me. I forgot to heal up. It's one of those circumstances, you know. Alright, we're back, guys. I buffered for a bit. Sheen smurfing on those bandits? Yeah. <laughs> Is it worth making the end game boss items? I looked at some of them and they just don't seem as good as stuff you can get earlier on. You want my honest opinion? No. My honest opinion, the end game items are not good enough. There are a few that are very good, such as Maelstrom. Um, the cage armor is pretty good. What's another one that's really good? Uh, the spear. The spear you can craft is really good. The main issue, though, is that with how much work you need to put in to get those items, there is stuff in the base game that can match or do better. It's like something um, like pain in the axe, right? Pain in the axe is a terrible weapon. It's a terrible weapon. Because for the amount of effort you need to put in to get it, all you get is an axe that inflicts pain, which the skill already inflicts pain. High impact, high damage. Just use, I don't know, any other axe. It's just, like, they needed to have extra abilities or something, I feel. Marsh Jam, Gabbray Jam, Golden Jam, and Cool Rainbow Jam. Oh, that's why. I don't think I've ever made that. Or no? Yeah, I don't think I've crafted it, because I always buy it. 
All right, got blacksmith, vintage hammer. I can grab the sword when I go to see our chairs and as well. Spear and hammer. I don't know if I have enough money to do this. Oh, we have plenty. I just need to sell the right stuff. Look at all this. Perfect inventory management right here. Okay, near perfect. How about that? Not even close? <laughs> something, something like that? 106? Okay, we're close. We're getting there. Can we make it? Oh, we made it. All right, now we craft the horror weapons. And that makes up for all the money that we just lost. I'm just gonna sell it here for now. Boom, piece of cake. She likes to cook you too. Yeah, I'm telling you, I never, I never cook. Well, they named Pain in the Axe. I guess maybe that's why, yeah. The Jam Lords. This worries me. Yeah, I definitely have not crafted that. That's really funny. We're gonna buy a few more rations. I don't actually know if I need that many, but it's whatever. We'll probably sell... I might be able to get more occult remains from a Wendigo, so we won't sell those yet. All right, we're going to go to Sierra Zoe because I know somebody wanted... I think Jeremiah was saying the Concealed Knight. So we'll go do that for the Concealed Knight. Um, and show off him to those of you who haven't seen it. And we'll grab the Rusted Blade as well. Blacksmith Hammer. Yes, I got Blacksmith Hammer. Yes, I end up grabbing it. Okay. So yeah, well now we got Blacksmith Hammer, Mage Poking Stick. We have the Mist Boon too. I think everything in Berg is done other than starting the quest. Which I'm actually going to start. Should I start the quest? Let's start the quest now so we don't have to do it when we come back. We can just go to... That's a good point. So we'll start the quest and then go straight over to Caldera when we go to Sierra. Which we'll have to come back through, but it's whatever. He said yes, please, and thank you. <laughs> There we go. It's always this part of the game where you're just trying to figure out what to do when. Like, you know what you need to do, but you don't know when you want to do it. Greetings, curious. All right, so we got letters telling us to go to New Sirocco. Can you lend curious? This worries me. And it's basically, I don't know, it's not really worth reading unless you're playing it. I've read it a hundred times. Not that many. But plenty. Eight times, maybe? I really haven't done Caldera more than eight times, I don't think. It's been like five that I've maxed the town. Try to buy the Adventure Chest Armor, too. Good idea. Uh, Sora Boring Caravaner. Should have it. He usually does. Concealed Knight is so easy to kill. He's only tough against physical and fire. Yeah, so you just use elemental vulnerability and then set him in fire. <laughs> Still takes damage. Uh, Decay's really good against him. Decay's actually broken against him. But yeah, he doesn't take very much physical. If you fight him physical v physical, he basically just takes no damage. It's hilarious. Caravaner, but just a chance to have it. All right. We'll check. I'm interested in grabbing that for sure. Yeah, I don't think so, bub. I really don't like that. Whenever the enemy has free impact bars, I think I think it's a ripoff. Really? We're going to do this again? Yeah, punk. Making me look like a fool over here. I did get alpha meat, though. That is very nice. Marshmallow and tartines are lasting quite a while. We should be okay on that. This has been the luck part if you... It'd be pretty funny if he has it. Yeah. I've had really good luck with this run. It would be kind of funny. Love that there's so much to do in Outward that I'm still finding out new things every time I play or watch videos on it. Absolutely. 
Yeah, absolutely. That's one of the biggest advantages of the game is there is so much to do. A bomb thrower class? Ooh, that's a good one. Technically, we have grenades now, but it's just like, why use them? Do we have any big grenade fans in the chat? I doubt it. I really doubt it. Wish you could ride animals in the game. That'd be pretty fun, too. Riding a coral horn would be awesome. I'm guessing nobody likes grenades. I only know of like three people in total that have ever commented on my videos and been like, grenades are cool if you use them in this way. Oof, nades, yeah. Trogs can throw bombs. Trogs have the best bomb, that's for sure. Dragos, hello, love your videos. Keep up the good work. Thanks, man. Welcome to the stream and thanks for saying that. That's awesome. Grenade class, basic, passive. Grenades explode on contact. Yes, that would be perfect. The Trog, we can use all sorts of bombs. Yeah, the Trog bomb throw was literally perfection. I think that was as, as pure as you could get it. It inf uh, impacts immediately, inflicts poison. It's perfect. And then they decided to go with regular bombs and just completely screw with them. It's like, why? I guess technically if you went for stealth, they could be okay. I mean, they deal a lot of damage, but it's... I don't know. When something like that is not optimal, you know, and there's so many more optimal ways to play, it's like, why play it? It already takes so much work to get the bombs. Dang it. Oh, I'm using my Pearlbird mask. No wonder I don't have good mana cost. See, this is why I don't switch masks. Because I don't pay attention and I'm wearing... The wrong thing. Oh, this is negative five stamina cost as well. Interesting. I forgot about that. It's more helpful than I thought. What if I just throw a varnish? See, that's why elemental discharge. Ah. Although that would be cool if you could just take the bottle of the varnish and just chuck it. That'd be really neat. It makes sense. I mean, in most magic like movies or things like that, you would make a potion. If you throw it at someone, it affects them, right? You just make the varnish deal high damage if it explodes. Grenades are only good as a surprise opening attack, in my opinion. Right, which means you basically have to play stealth because it's pretty hard to get a surprise otherwise. Maybe extra pouch space as a passive would be cool. I wouldn't be against it. Extra pouch space has always been a pretty interesting thing. Uh, you get it from the Soroborians faction quest, and it's actually pretty helpful. You throw a varnish, you buff your enemy, yeah? Take this! Buffs his weapon with ice. Imagine a shell whore, but he's got two arms or claws that have ice on him. Dude, that's sick, actually. That's actually kind of sick. Think about it. Like, imagine you're fighting a Wendigo, but all of his claws are buffed with fire. Ooh, can we get a mod for this, please? Can we get a mod for this? That's kind of a good idea. That's kind of a good idea. I like that. I need to repair. I was supposed to repair in Bla uh, Berg, and I never did. I hate how I end up with an almost full backpack and always seems everything inside is necessary. I think the big thing is that it's food and potions. If you are constantly making or crafting food and potions, you always end up with a ton of stuff that you feel like you need and can't get rid of, you know? I agree with you on that. Wouldn't the varnish damage you if the enemy gets a hit? Um, I don't think so if it exploded. Obviously, if you buffed their actual weapon, it would, but I don't think so if it's actually exploded. Sounds horrible? I think it sounds cool. It sounds horribly cool. That's what we'll say. Very deadly. Just think about it, though. You fight a Wendigo, and he's got firearms. Or you fight an Ancient Dweller. But he's got lightning arms or something crazy. That's nuts. Zenith Backpack solves that problem. Oh, yeah, I played with Zenith Backpack. Zenith Backpack. It's awesome. It's very cool. Just having more unique items is always cool. I like that. Give them shield imbue if they block it with a shield. Yeah. <laughs> What a horrible idea. What's up, Wendigo? 
I don't know why he's always turned around. Look at this guy. What, did you think that was going to work? I fight too many Wendigos to not know how to deal with you. Boot. Boot. Uppercut. Oh my word, that destroyed him. Came here for the occult remains. And we'll grab the bandit key as well. We'll see what's in here. Imagine throwing a varnish to deal damage and also buff your enemy. Yeah, that'd be so cool. You're like, ha! It blows you up and then it... Or blows them up and then it also gives them more power. It's like, uh-oh, I made a mistake. Whoops. Garrett, your videos and streams are the best. Helped me and my bro when we started back up with DE. Wish I had it on PC instead of PS5, though. Awesome, man. Thanks for saying that. Yeah, I'm glad you're enjoying it. DE definitely made the game a lot better, I think. DE definitely made the game a lot better. I'm glad you'd be able to get some help from the guides, for sure. I'm gonna try and restrict the things I carry with my... to your pouch. When I had to go to the Forge Stone, I was able to make it work. Then I could try running with other backpacks. The Forge Stone, yeah, it does make you think about it. My issue right now is I have a pickaxe in my pouch, and it's kind of like a terrible idea, so I don't recommend carrying your pickaxe in your pouch. Certain runs end up a certain way, and I think I just kind of put it there for this run. And so it stayed there, but it really should not be in my pouch. It really shouldn't be. It's only hurting me. I mean, there's no benefit to it. Risley made a punch build based on Star Platinum. Has negative 85% stamina cost. Wow. First off. High speed punching causing confusion. It's kind of fun. Be funnier if it was good at combat. <laughs> right? The confusion definitely helps a lot with that type of thing. For sure. The faster you punch, the faster you knock them down. I think the Savage Knuckles are... Is it Savage, maybe? Savage Knuckles are really good. For a build like that. I think they deal... With, they either deal ethereal damage or you can enchant them with it. I can't remember. Sounds cool. Can you tell me the set passives on the punch build? Yeah, yeah. That'd be awesome to know the passives. Less buffing your enemies somehow made it harder for them to move. Like, lightning varnish makes it harder for them to walk. Because lightning shoots out of every limb when they move. That's a cool idea. Ice varnish makes huge clump of ice to form in their clothes. Hmm. A lot of interesting ideas based on this whole varnish throw thing we got going on here. Oh, I need to go up to Conflux. We'll do that when we come back. I'll go up and I'll go back down. It probably would have been faster to go up first and then go to Sierzo, but that's fine. Squire set, Zorn, backpack, and the good tent seem like it. Squire set does have insane stamina cost reduction. Luxury tent is S tier. Probably best tent in the game, I would say. A little bit low durability. You get additional attack speed and ethereal damage. Okay, so it does have ethereal damage. I feel like all the Savage stuff does have a bit low durability. Bimvus! What's going on, man? Good to see you back in the chat, man. What is up? I was gonna hope to see the second Wendigo. I don't think we are, because he does have another Occult Remains. But... Sometimes he's all the way over by all of Marsh. There's just no way I'm going that way. Heck yeah, we're live. You know it, dude. You know it. I think I can be better. I think I should have taken Speedster. Speedster can hurt you sometimes. Speedster is a very niche skill tree. It's extremely powerful, but it can kill your build too. It's one of the few skill trees that does that. Like, if I think of skill trees that you could take no matter what, first off would be Warrior Monk. It is always helpful, regardless of everything. Cabal Hermit, arguably the best skill tree in the game. Um... Rogue Engineer. There's no downsides to taking a Rogue Engineer. Primal Ritualist. No downsides whatsoever. The only few that have downsides would be Hex Mage. Because the passive does hurt you when you're slow. So, 
or when you're tired. So technically, that could be a downside, depending on your build. Hunter doesn't hurt you, so I guess that's a good one, too. Philosopher can hurt you, actually. Because if it's... Breakthrough is only mana regen, so if you don't necessarily need that much mana regen, it can hurt your build. Ah, uh, because Ice Spellblade can hurt you as well, because it can be weak depending if you don't use it correctly. But Speedster is definitely the like the most difficult to get your hands on, for sure. And kind of use it properly. Most of the skill trees are pretty, friend. you know, you can do what you want, really. Even the ones I mentioned, like most of them are still, you're okay, I think. I need an iron weapon, don't I? Funny because you once took x for one of your melee builds. It is. I, as long as you don't stay tired, it doesn't hurt you what that way. I do for you? Oh, it actually my. helps because of the bloodlust. I usually took it for bloodlust. That bloodlust perk is so nice for melee builds. The only way it really hurts you is if you happen to, you know, what could I? not right. pay attention to your tire. I think most players aren't tired anyway when they play. All right, let's go do this concealed night. Should I sleep first? Let's sleep first, because I don't like it being dark out when I do this. Hexmage's quality of life. Hexmage is perfect for quality of life, yeah. My problem with Speedster is how much effort it takes to probe. Yeah, probe is very difficult to get sometimes and also weakens you. So it's kind of... Yeah, I, I feel the same way. I'm actually going to repair as well. I'll probably pay to repair, actually. Yeah, we'll just pay to repair. Whenever you're using an offhand weapon, it's generally better to just pay to repair. Because if you're switching offhand weapons, I mean. Time spent probing could be used to deal damage. Yeah. Yeah. Change community comes together with nine dots and makes the best game known to man. Still played 5k years from now. We're still witnessing history. Yeah. Dude, I can't wait for the next game. I hope they... I hope that they do something crazy. Like, either make it a very good combat system like they did here, or, I don't know, a really good story game. I'm pumped for it, but we'll see what we get. You never know. I feel like most skill trees function when only using tier 1 skills, but Speedster is kind of garbage. You don't get a feel for how it plays unless you invest fully. See, the main issue with Speedster is that I agree with you. It, it All of the tier 1 skills in the game are very usable. Probe is the only one what can I do for you? that hinders you. And I say that because, all right. think about it. If you inflict all an right. enemy with Probe, you do it four times, you have the max stacks of Probe, right? You can no longer inflict an enemy with pain and confusion. So if you go into another fight and you have not taken damage, you can no longer get pain and confusion on them, which is the the best part of that. With Speedster, you can use your skills to get rid of the alertness levels and get that back. But without the Speedster skills, it does become a little bit more difficult. So for those of you who didn't know, the Concealed Knight, after you beat your faction quest, you can come back to this dock in Sierzo. And there will be a little tiny rowboat that shows up. And you can go back to the very first area in the game. Oh, whoops, hit my mic. I have a huge problem with Outward Community. When I said the speedster isn't strong, people thought a lot of hate on me on the official Discord. Oh, you gotta be careful, Benvis. There are a few select people who feel very strongly one way or another towards their builds. I You just kind of gotta move move past that unfortunately that's just those people there are a lot of people that think uh pure damage is the only way to play it as well like if you make a tank build for example i posted my monster hunter build on reddit and there was a few people that were like this is doing terrible damage what are you talking about well yeah it's not a damage build it's a tank build so it some people just don't like certain builds it's all there is to it Kind of end game because he uses the Squire set, Zorn backpack plus house buff, and holy mission quest line. Negative 85% stamina cost. Yeah, that's crazy. So then you show up in the very beginning area, and the concealed knight shall be walking around. I think it's supposed to be a hint to the 
Ebony Warrior in Skyrim, and also a hint that you can get the full set of Zar armor. What's up, Lanto? Welcome to another stream. Beaster is good with alert potions. My problem with this tree is more towards probing. Yeah, it's just more of a niche skill tree. But that's okay because it's still really good. If you think about it, you get 40% cooldown. That's a lot of cooldown. I think it should definitely have some negatives considering how good it is. If it wasn't as hard to use as it is, it would be broken, I think. Tank builds are probably the most fun I've had in this game. I think so, too. I mean, you can't go tank build in every game. So it feels very fun. All right, that was my fire. We're going to weaken him 50% to fire, and then we're going to burn him. How much impact resist does he have? He has a lot, I think. It is really slow attacks, which means I have the advantage. Alright, now we burn him. Nope, that wasn't burning. Oof. Alright, now he takes fire damage. This guy's definitely tricky. The shield is throwing me. If I could get confusion on him, that'd be great. There we go. Now we're in business. He can't do nothing. He hit me again? What? Watch this. Yoink. Ooh, the damage he's taking is insane. Yeah, stacking elemental stuff is nuts. And that's what he drops. Woo. Wrote an essay on how Czar... Uh, because of the penalty. People hated my opinion, too. Oh, you're talking about the Czar armor? I agree with you. I think the, the Czar armor is not quite as good. We actually talked about that earlier. Because of its penalties, it's not really that good. There we go. I mean, four gold lich mechanisms, some gems, a lot of palladium. Nine palladium. Wow. I wonder if the hyena... I think we discussed last time that the hyenas don't respawn. The machete does, though. So you can get a nice machete, you know? In case you were really worried about your ability to get a machete after beating the faction quest. I know a lot of people are worried about this. If you really are that concerned about getting a machete, you do have this option. You can come beat the Concealed Knight, and he does guard one machete. So there you go. <laughs> of course, I get the passive to be able to roll freely with a backpack. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. When Knuckle builds, that's very essential. Gold machete exists. That too. That too. You can always buff it even better. Gold weapons are kind of goofy. They can be made to be decent, but they don't really feel extremely good in any way most of the time. I tried using the gold bow with twang enchant. Yeah, it was kind of... Yeah. Bandits also drop machetes, so if you're really trying to get this OP weapon... Yeah, new weapon guide. Today on uh, Sheen Shots, we're going to check out how to get the most OP machete you can get. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to kill a bandit. Now, this is a very fearsome foe, right? Probably one of the most challenging enemies in the game. Simply because they kill you. And that is it. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to get 10 traps. You're going to hope he walks through those 10 traps. Hopefully, it, it shouldn't take more than 3. But just in case, we're going to use 10 traps. Because we're absolutely insane. Right? No? Okay. Nobody cared about the machete? It gets like two views. I don't understand why people don't care about my machete build. Well, because your machete build is crap. <laughs> Get it together, Sheen. Perfect April Fool's video? Yeah, <laughs> something like that. But they're blocking, they may as well be. They do block a lot. I'm not gonna lie. That's That's true. Imagine if a gold pickaxe improved your mind drops. That'd be neat. Yeah, I mean, the gold pickaxe is nice because it has more durability, but it's so much heavier. I think two pounds. So uh, it's like, what's the trade off here? It's not really better. I think improving the loots, that would be a cool idea. Ditch the extra pickaxe. Oh, Halfren, you're right. What's up, Halfren? 
Good point. No! Stupid freaking... Should I do this? Do you guys know about this? What? This worries me. That little saboteur smashed out the purifier's power coils. Those were some fancy schmancy magic parts right there. I won't be able to get my hands on those. Can you lend me a hand? I need two power coils. And then I go to my fancy chest back here because I have power coils. Because no noob, I'd be carrying stuff around. And uh, yeah, help him out. I'll do it. I'll do it for the sake of being nice to this guy. Gee, have you tried Poltergeist build? Anyone chat had? I haven't tried a pure Poltergeist build, um, but Poltergeist is extremely useful. I used it on my Endmerker build with the Dreamer Halberd, and it cuts through enemy defenses so well that it's just nuts. Czar Pickaxe was a bit of a running gag at some point. Oh, that'd be a cool idea. How heavy would that be? Like 10 pounds? Wow. Go pickaxe has the same uses as normal pickaxe, right? Ta da! We have the power coils. Let's go fix our water purifier. Sierra's so engineer has a strong Scottish vibe. You know what's interesting is I don't think you see him ever until this. So, what is his deal? Where does he live? Does he live out of town? That's a good question. Shane, you have to be careful using plates and traps on some enemies. I've had them glitch right into the ground or go flying into the air and then no loot. Oh, really? I've had them go flying into the air. Usually they have loot, though. I've never had them just be in the ground. Wait a minute. Is this another gym? No, it's not a gym. Got a different face. I like his outfit, though. He's got a cool outfit. What? Hold it right there, Cutter. Some dirty rat is done sabotaged our water purifier. If you little nippers want to get some drinks, boil that stinking water first. Okay. This me. I don't think I got his accent right, but I think it's funnier. That little saboteur smashed it. Yeah, I already read that part. Can you lend me a hand? <laughs> Thanks a bunch. You done us good, nipper. Takes me a second to get old Bessie running, and I'll tinker you a reward with the old coils from the machine. I feel like that's pretty accurate. And he gave me the coil lantern. Now I have two of them. It's kind of a fun accent to use. Just a roaming engineer that works for the Blue Chamber Collective. Yeah, I guess he is, isn't he? She shots, yeah, boy. What's up, Potter? Her poltergeist is never good because imbues better. But are they? Wind infused poltergeist shouldn't be any bad. Um, poltergeist is good. The issue is that imbues technically are better because you can stack them higher. It depends on the build, though. So uh, technically, if you use Zar weapons, you can get a lot more poltergeist or a lot more raw damage from the poltergeist enchantment. I think. So it depends on what weapon you use. For example, if you use poltergeist on an iron weapon, you might as well not even do it because it's only 10% of, I think, 20 damage or something like that. 26 so you get like three damage it's pointless but czar weapons have like sometimes 76 damage so if you enchant that with raw damage then you're getting seven eight nine you know you're getting a lot more raw i think dreamer halberd ended up with seven raw damage and it still felt like it was really slapping sheen your midwest accent sounds really southern <laughs> slaps my knee <laughs> i do my best don't worry Pretty sure this is the guy who owns the shop in Levant. There's a sign that says Etios. Adios. Oh, really? That's interesting to think about. Sheen armor should have a mana and stamina cost reduction, obviously. Oh, Sheen armor? Yeah, 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 yeah. My armor set? Yeah, if I was to have armor set, it would clearly be the antique plate armor. It would have 30 negative stamina and mana for each piece, right? Which means negative 90 stamina and mana. It's the ultimate armor. 14 protection, 14 barrier, right? 10% damage bonus to every element. It's the perfect adventurer armor, the perfect armor for anyone going absolute just beast mode. That's what it is. Are you kidding me right now? Did you just... How dare you? 
think I messed that up. But definitely has to have negative 30 stamina and mana on each piece of armor. I think that perfectly embodies the way I play outward. Poltergeist is 30% of the weapon damage as raw. So 76 would get like 22.8. Right. Dreamer has 22 physical, so you get 7. So yeah, you'd want to use a Czar armor. That's a good point. Um, you'd want to use Czar weapons because you get a lot more raw out of it. Is it really 22.8? That's actually a lot. That's actually a lot. And then you could buff it with Heroic Kingdom for 15% extra damage. Because it's the only thing in the game, plus Exalted, that actually increases your damage. So you'd want that. I didn't know it was 30%. I, I was thinking 10% for some reason. Yeah, zero, zero durability too? Yeah, zero durability. The perfect set. What even buffs raw? So nothing buffs raw except for percentage damages. Anything that is across the board. If it buffs everything, it buffs raw. If it doesn't buff everything, it doesn't buff raw. So you want Heroic Kingdom Passive, which is Alchemical Experiment. That buffs raw damage. The Kirouax Breakthrough Passive buffs raw damage. It's the one from New Sirocco if you take Heroic Kingdom. And then Exalted buffs it as well, like I said. And I think that's it. Most things don't, to be honest. If it buffs physical damage, like alchemical experiments, just like an outlier, it buffs everything across the board. You just get a 15% buff to every damage type, which is, I think, why a lot of people like it. Sheen armor, jeans, and a t shirt with Sheen Shots logo on the back. 100% did not just hit me on the front. <laughs> I can't believe that became my thing. I said that so much. Hey, that would be perfect, though. I like the jeans. I like the jeans and a t-shirt. There you go. Somebody get on this and make me it for my, my new armor set. <laughs> not Kirowax, it's only physical. Oh, Kirowax is only physical? Okay, then not Kirowax. So there's only two then, right? Kill streak does by 25%. Does the one from the two-handed mace buff it? The two-handed mace one might buff it from Caldera. I don't know what that one's called either. I think kill streak is the one-handed axe skill from Caldera. So there's like three or four, maybe. Perfect armor for me must have at least 30% movement speed. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. We can add that as well. 10% to each piece. Find it funny. The Risa is like, I have no family and want to adopt you. Hello, I just saved your cousin from this tribal favor like 20 minutes ago. Yeah. It's like, your family is not all that strong, is it? One-handed axe, yeah? Okay, yeah. That's actually a pretty good buff if you use it properly. It's a bit trickier to use, I think. But that's a pretty good buff. Makes axes a lot stronger. Scalp collector, yeah. That's what it's called. One of the heroic kingdom passes does buff. Either the Caldera one or normal story. It's the normal one. That would be the alchemical experiment that I have currently. Although I don't have raw damage. I wonder if I could... No, I don't enchant it. I can enchant Sky Crown with Poltergeist. That might not be a bad idea. Grimtick. Any good tips for a new player in Outward? Absolutely, my friend. I always have water buff on. Always have stamina buff on. Check out my backpack. Marshmallow Tartines are the best thing for stamina in the game. Uh, you want to make jerky. Two salt, two raw meat. Very easy to do. Very easy to do. Keep your healing up all the time. Keep your stamina up all the time. Um, learn to craft potions. Very useful. And go for a horror weapon. Very easy to get. Will make a lot of the game much easier. Also use skills. Learn how to use your skills better. Learn what skill does what and how you can get them to be used in interesting combinations. It'll completely change the game. Oh my word, he died? Oh, he's weak to cold. Now, the only one I don't have is Levant, which is sad because I came from Levant. I should have it, but I didn't buy it. Weapon skills are good for new players. Yeah, all weapon skills are extremely good. They 
focusing on them is really a good way to do it. A lot of people just try and attack, melee attack, regular. The skills usually either offer a really good opener or a really good finisher in battle. And they do more impact usually as well. Prefer Bread of the Wild for HP? Bread of the Wild is extremely good for HP, yes. Uh, jerky's like one of those things that you can always have almost. So I usually say just have a little bit of jerky. But Bread of the Wild, if you can make it, excellent. Excellent idea. Sheen, this is your mother. Could you please pick up some Gabbray jelly and mar marsh jelly on your way down to Caldera? Okay. Uh, I can stop at Berg, yeah. I don't know if I have... I don't know if I have a way to get marsh jelly, though. I'd have to go all the way back to Monsoon. He said this is your mother. I could definitely grab Gabri, though. Actually, you know what? There's a Sorobor building you can buy unless you go to any region. I think I may get that so I can travel to Levant and hold Marshall I need to. Thought you had the flask in your bag, Shane? Um, do I? No, I think I didn't end up buying it because I completely forgot. Like an absolute doofus. I don't know what I was thinking of. What's up, CS? Welcome back. Well, we didn't do much. We killed the Concealed Knight and got ready for Caldera. That's about it. Poltergeist for me is for Zar and Masterpiece. Wind and Beauty increased impact and stun lock. I think it is definitely for Zar. I think it was made for it so that you can get through enemy resistances a little bit better. Still have high physical damage. The legendary Machete Bandit. Yep, that's him. Run! He's the champion. I'm not worthy to speak in front of such, such a being of power. The Mia Bandit. It's taken lifetimes for me to defeat him. Eventually, I shall become the Bandit Beater. That does not sound right. The Bandit Beater? That could be another build name. That's more like a negative one, though. They call him the Bandit Beater. I don't know. It doesn't have a nice tone to it. I feel like Beater, like Beat, doesn't really fit well in a name. Unless you're talking negative connotations. Shin got bitten by the mod bug. Can't stop thinking of adding mods to his vanilla playthroughs. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. I think you could do a playthrough with nothing, only your fist. The problem with doing that is every fight would take 10 minutes. Literally, every single fight. To beat a mere bandit with just your fist takes forever. It's ridiculous. The bandit slayer. That's much better than the bandit beater. I don't know why, but Bandit Beater sounds very bad. Bandit Slayer sounds pretty good. Bandit Slayer sounds actually kind of epic. You're the Bandit Slayer. What would you use, though? What is the best way you would use? Obviously something that does decay damage, because they're weak to that. Or maybe you just use traps, and you just kind of ensnare them into your little mind games. That's another way you go about it. PS4 is turned off now. <laughs> mod. <laughs> Go away. Wants me to mod you. Bandit beater is too close to wife beater. Yeah, it's too close. It just, it just already has that negative, like, idea in your mind, I think. Fist works well against the bandit defender. Maybe we would go fists. That kind of fits with the... Yeah... You'd use Sweep Kick for the opener, clearly. Should I do... I'm going to do this cave to see if I get an elemental particle. Fists are fun. Oh, they're absolutely fun. They're probably the most fun weapon type in the game. I wouldn't say the best, but they are the most fun. They're just extremely... How fast they work and what they do it just feels really good. Bandit Beater sounds dirty. It does, it does. What's the hardest enemy, you think? Scarlet Emissaries are easily the hardest enemy. They are harder than some bosses in the game. They are actually... Let me think. See, most bosses... How bosses work in this game... Is most bosses are made stronger by giving them an element. If you become immune to that element... And very high physical resistance... They actually can't deal that much damage to you. 
Outward is actually a pretty good game for tanks because you can become immune to most damage that an enemy does. It's more of a tank build than anything, a tank game than anything else, or a stats game. So when you're going up against bosses, you can literally just go, okay, well, this enemy does fire damage. If I become immune to fire damage, well, you can't hurt me. Scarlet Emissaries, on the other hand, they go, oh, wait, uh, we have raw damage, which is unblockable. So Scarlet Emissaries are scary because they just have one attack that can insta-kill you, essentially. Depending on your build, it can one-hit you. And Master Trader Armor, with no major defense stats, you can be one-hit by Scarlet Emissary. It's crazy. It's happened to me multiple times while goofing off early game in Caldera. Just for video stuff. It's goofy. Spreadsheet to beat them all. Exactly, yeah. It's, a, it's very much a stats game. The Bandit Abuser. I like that one, the Bandit Abuser. You got the one who hunts the criminals, bandit beater. Prepare for the one who hunts animals, the meat beater. <laughs> That's so horrible. I love it. Hmm. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to be... I'm going to think tactfully about my next plan. And just slowly chuck ice at this guy. Did he just hit me? That's... Shameful upon his people. Watch this. Yoink. I'm out of here. I'm going to kill this guy. Boom. Dang it. He dropped nothing. That's crazy. Usually they drop at least one thing. Really? That was the perfect hit. Look how fast that follow-up attack is. It's absolutely just ridiculous how fast you can re-attack. Iron Knuckles. What was a ghost doing with Iron Knuckles? Makes you wonder. Makes you think. Blue Sand Armor is a good tank armor, especially if you have Lantern of Souls and Element of Resistance, along with certain passives. Oh, absolutely. You could become 100% resistant to every element with Blue Sand. I proved that not too long ago, actually. Still, if you're immune to fire and have high resistance, they still don't do scary amounts of damage, even with their raw damage. Um, immune to fire and have high resistance, they still don't do scary amounts of damage. No, their their raw damage is crazy. I think they do forty raw damage. They have a lot of raw damage. Most of their attacks don't do raw damage though. So if you have good resistance, you are still okay against a Scarlet Emissary, especially melee attacks. They only have one raw attack, I believe. It's the one where they do the... It's the Fire Blast? No, it's not the Fire Blast. It's the Suck Up attack. It, like, sucks you up and inflicts you with an ailment. I believe that's the raw attack. It's hard to say. I usually stay away from Scarlet Emissaries because, well, it's so easy to die to them. They're also very aggressive, too. Koji Beef, what's going on, man? It's about to throw them undead hands. Yeah. <laughs> That would be so cool to see a ghost using Knuckles. That'd be epic. That would be really cool. Good and bad for tanks. The problem is how it hurts the travel time. Therefore, quality of life. Right. Right. But, I mean, if you wanted to, you could really go full tank the whole time. That's the... I think that's the best thing is the options. There are a lot of options. If you want to face tank damage, you can face tank damage. If you want to run away from every enemy in the game, you can very easily do that. A lot of options. Nice to have them, for sure. Weirdly enough, I kind of miss having sweep kick, but this has worked pretty well. Having two chakrams on my hotbar. Connected mace, strong attack is nice. Yeah, the hard thing is actually hitting stuff with it, but once you do, fantastic. I'm still not sure what I want to do with this. Do I want to use this mace, or do I want to use the sky crown? Sky crown would be really good, but it is shorter. Confusion is pretty useful, especially in Caldera. 
And with my low stamina. Eh. Code Sonic mod's good for travel. Well, actually, Code Sonic's not even a mod. But feature? Yeah, it's very good. Especially if you have a tank build. That's a good point. I should do a run with the Sonic... Code Sonic sometime. That'd be awesome. Marble Mace is better. Probably. The confusion is just really nice. Yeah, frost damage. It has a lot of frost damage, too. Infused stamina. <laughs> what would that even do? Alright, I need to buy an enchanting table. And I think someone said... I think Matthew was saying I need to get the jam. Brutal club, Sheen. Brutal club. How can I help you? Fair point. All right. Enchanting table. We need the four pillars, so I can enchant when I get over there. There was one other thing I wanted to buy, guys. What was it? Pyrite hammer. Hammer deals confusion in one hit. I know pyrite's really weird. The problem with pyrite is it doesn't burn, but the confusion in one hit is nuts. Oh, the Gabri one, yeah. Yeah, Pyrite's actually crazy. I think I need an alchemy kit as well. How can I help you? I don't remember if I have one in my chest or not. I don't think I did. Want to buy something? Want to buy something? Mm-hmm. And I need more jerky what i wonder here's what i need oh wrong dude i'm hoping i have a cold stone if i don't eh, whatever how can i pay attention pay attention dang it i don't can also do confusion one hit with juggernaut which is also why pyrite feels so how odd can I help you? is that not weird to anyone else pyrite instantly inflicts confusion but it's a great mace and Juggernaut instantly inflicts confusion. Such a weird... Very useful, very cool, but so weird. Four rations. Travel to Enmerker. Or Calder. Alright, we're good to go. Let me... Uh, yeah. Late traps for that confusion? Oh, absolutely. Similar categories, painting the axe? Right. Cool, but redundant. Yeah, Zorn's also does have preservation. I think it was, what, 25%? Uh, I do have Alchemist Backpack, Matthew. I bought that at the very beginning of this run. I saved it in my chest, so we do have Alchemist. I will actually make use of that this time. I have not yet made use of the Alchemist Backpack. Well, did I use preservation? No, I didn't use preservation either. Gotta get going now, guys. Uh, gotta get going now, guys. Have a nice day and great stream. Hey, catch you later, Douglas. I'll catch you. Catch you next time. Hopefully Thursday. You can stop by. We will probably be playing more Caldera. I don't see how we would beat Caldera today. There's no chance. Zorn has 50%. Oh. Interesting. Yeah, Zorn is actually a very, very good backpack. That 50%. Wow, that's crazy. That's why my marshmallow tartines were lasting so long earlier. Because I had on Zorns. That makes a lot more sense. They lasted all of Enmer, or, uh, Antique Plateau. There's also a one-handed sword that inflicts confusion, but it needs world boss materials. Maelstrom, which is why Maelstrom is insanely strong. Because confusion is much harder to get, but very good. Whereas pain is extremely easy to get on an enemy. From various skills. Because of the one-handed sword skill. Because... And I think... Doesn't... The axe skill do it too? There's just various ways to get pain on an enemy. What's up, random guy? How do you counter the Levant Desert? I believe you're talking about the heat. So, if you're talking about the enemies, cold damage. Everything over there is weak to cold damage. Essentially. Except for robots who are weak to ethereal. So, Ethereal Varnish, Cold Varnish. If you're trying to counter the heat, there are a few things you can do. You can buy the Entomer set. 
Tumor set has very high hot weather defense. You can craft potions like uh, weather defense, which grants you 20 resistance to the weather. Very, very good. Lots of water. So you're going to be taking water, hot weather defense potions. Cactus. You can turn the cactus over there into fruit pies. I think it's called actually cactus pie. Um, but really, as long as you check the merchants, anything that helps with hot weather is really good. There are a few teas as well, though they're harder to get. They are... Uh, the needle tea. You need cactus to make them, though. So there are a few different consumables that'll be very useful for dealing with heat. Axial causes cripple and pain. Yeah, Axial is very good. Cripple and pain is a nice, a very nice combination. I think it's a little bit harder to use that skill compared to Puncture, which thrusts forward, whereas the Axe skill backs up, um, but still very useful. Don't forget the Cool Boon. You can buy it in Conflux Path. Yes, Cool Boon as well. Extremely useful. If you have mana, the Cool Boon is nuts. I think it is extra 10. So I have 8. Activate Cool Boon. It, er, yeah, for Hot Weather. I checked the wrong number. But see, now it's all the way up at 42. I was looking at the cold stat, not the hot weather. But yeah, Cool Boon's very nice for it as well. Axe skill hitbox is really weird. That's what I'm talking about, Fultano. I think it's very good, but because of the way it backstep, the hitbox is very odd. So usually how I like to look at it is impact the enemy first, then use the skill. Because if you use the skill while they're laying down, it won't if you happen to miss it won't kill you whereas if you miss during combat it they could just punch you in the face <laughs> we made a gun build at all not really um one that i made a build video on definitely not the problem with the gun build that i ran into is when i did it i was just using master trader armor and guns like there was no specific build that i needed it was just i was using a whole bunch of guns I'll definitely make a gun build sometime soon. I was looking into it not a while back, but I I never ended up doing it. Oh, wait. I kind of had a gun build. Technically, my ice build I made is a gun build. It uses the cannon pistol, but it's not quite exactly meant to be a gun build. It's more like a mace using gun as extra. Gun build, seven guns in the skill bar, and then shoot skill. Right, yeah. That's basically what a gun build is. Cool boon is plus eight hot weather defense. Okay, plus eight. Best outward town is easily... Harmattan. I love Harmattan. Has the most merchants, has the coolest looking town, has the best... Not the best music. Best atmosphere. All right, we are at Caldera now, guys, but I have to use a quish, quick restroom break. Um, so give me a second, and I'll be right back. I gotta use the restroom real quick.
All right, I'm back. What did I miss? All right. Whew. Been using Merc, Hex, and Hermit build. Chimera, Cannon, Cage Pistol with Jinx and Rupture. Finishing off with Strong Axe Attack. I think Axes actually pair pretty well with guns, funnily enough. I was just thinking the same thing. When I make my gun build, I may just use an Axe. I don't know what Axe I'd go for, though. I don't want to use Sunfall again. I always use Sunfall. Hmm. I don't know. It'll depend. We'll see what happens. That angel food kick is crazy. Stamina, discipline, boon. Wow. And hot weather. Wasn't even a break. Do you mean a bottle near the table? My bathroom's right next to my room. <laughs> Someone asked me that earlier. My bathroom's right next to my room, so. Bro's streaming from his bathroom. Yeah, I'm, I'm in my bathroom. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, guys. It's normal. <laughs> Hmm, that's funny. Merc is compulsory in every build I play. Spent most of the game traveling and in low screens. Combat is the least I do. Well, yeah, it does have the best for traveling for sure. Easily. That speed buff, what is it? Negative 40% stamina cost while running or something like that? Plus 10% speed? Wow. Absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. I think I'm going to drink needle tea here. There we go. How do you find Caldera's aesthetics? Uh, Well, the reach is dead. I mean, I talked about this earlier. The reach is basically dead. It looks very dead. I like certain things about it and don't like other things about it. I like the Sulfuric Caverns area. Well, I could actually check the map, actually. The top left area looks very good because there are various out or, or rock outcroppings and things like buildings that make it look very interesting. Down here is very interesting as well. You have the various buildings that are just kind of empty, abandoned. I love this top right area with the hexastones and very cool cut rocks. This area right here, however, this middle is just kind of meh. It's mostly just rock. It's not bad, it's just very... There's not much there. Do I need to go this way? I think I need to go this way. No, I'm I'm going crazy. But yeah, that middle area, there's like the... What is it? The Grotto of Chalcedony? And that's basically it. There, ain't, there isn't much there. Half of Caldera is barren. Yeah, Rodolfo, it's, it's mostly just barren. I mean, there are a few locations that are kind of interesting. But yeah, it's... Pretty empty. I think the top right's definitely the coolest. It's got the hexagon stones. It looks very interesting. Bloodlust makes things way less annoying. 100% agree. 100%. X-Mage is my breakthrough till... I'll get it on almost all my bills just for the Bloodlust breakthrough. Right. That's how I am with Warrior Monk. I just... I prioritize stamina so high. It's even with this build. If you look at what I was originally going for... It's in the description of this video, actually. I was originally going for the Hound Mask, Pearl Scent Mare Mail, or Zagus Armor. What are the two? And the Golich Boots. The problem with doing that is not only would I have bad stamina, I'd have bad mana. Having both of those bad just didn't feel, never feels right to me. I always want really good of both. I can deal with low damage all day. I care very little for damage. All I need is to be able to be in a fight for an extended period of time. Because nothing usually dies instantly anyway, unless you really go max. So I like to have that good, just balanced stats. This one or Rage? Uh, you, well, you want both. And Rage is better because Impact. I think Impact's better, but Discipline is more damage, so you can't complain about that. Remember your Bloody Vampire build? I gotta try it. Yeah, if you use Brand with the Bloody Vampire, that would be a crazy build. Its weapon is the only weak part. 
Only time I find stuff dying really fast when you play a Moment of Truth is our Claymore build. Yeah, because Moment of Truth is stupid. <laughs> I don't know what they were on when they made that skill. It literally insta-kills just so much stuff. See ya. Stand down, Evangeline. This one's clearly not one of the nobles. Ah. Is that all he says? Okay. That's right. We. I would not. This. Honestly, this was a long negotiation. Wagon. Hmm. Scared. Besides, this is with that prom. Huh. I can. Here's what you need to do. I like how there's really not much dialogue our character participates in. He basically comes here, says, "I'm supposed to negotiate with you," and then they tell him. They basically tell us we're going to the stone quarry, and then that's all of it. <laughs> that's all that really happens. How about discipline, attack up, rage, and impact up? There you go, right there, AO2. Now you're thinking. <laughs> Use both. Ah. Use both. I, uh, I value impact more, is the only reason I would say enrage, but obviously you want to do both at the same time. It's usually. I found this interesting. So I have recorded a lot of gameplay in Caldera because I did all those weapon guides for Caldera weapons, which, if you can imagine, it does take quite a bit in Caldera to record those. What's interesting is that a lot of the time, the first time you enter Caldera, there's almost no enemies. Yeah, I don't think so, bud. I'll outrun that all day. Oh, I didn't know if I would. It was scary. Want some of this? Bring it on. That's what I thought. I think I missed 90% of that. Uh oh. Do it again, do it again. Really? You gotta come in like that? Just be a punk? Let's get some. Yeah, you're weak. See, that happened again. What's going on with that? Okay, there's something I've noticed recently. This has happened to me four total times. Like, literally only four times. If you get too close to an enemy, when they are knocked down, sometimes you'll get hit by an attack that they are not doing. Is that weird? I just got the pie right. Let's go. Okay, but it really is happening. So sometimes if an, I knock an enemy down, they're on the ground. They're slowly getting back up. They do not have an attack as they get back up. I walk too close to them. I get hit by nothing, but I take damage. I wonder what that is. I don't think ghosts have an attack as they get back up. Cringe Obsidian Elemental flashback. Oh, I know. Obsidian Elementals just terrify me. I don't have any stamina water, do I? Hmm. A very odd thing that's happening. We're skipping all enemies for the moment. We need to just get to town. We don't fight in Caldera at nighttime. Just don't do it. Bad idea. Must be a bug. Don't seem to have that happen to me. It doesn't happen very often. It's like the third time it's done it. Or maybe the third or fourth. Max. But it's very weird when it does. It happened to a ghost? A... I can't remember what the other enemy that happened to. It might have been a ghost the last time it did it. And then I got it to a Wendigo, actually. Huh. That's probably a bug. Oh, well. Use both the kick skills to stunlock the Butcher. Oh, nice. Slip kick and push kick. Absolutely fantastic. Doesn't need the buffs. Honestly, I only use all the buffs for the arena bosses. Most of the time, yeah, that's when you really fully buff is for those. Just because so much stuff can drop you so quickly. In those boss fights. This character here is going to be addicted to Ambrane again? Probably, yeah. As soon as I run out of... Actually, I think I already did, didn't I? Yeah, I'll probably use Ambrain. It has the best stamina. It is generally... Is it generally going to be better? I think so. If I got the other gelatins, maybe. Yeah, we'll probably end up doing that, though. I've not gotten a single sample, so this could be interesting. Mm-hmm. 
All right, our stash. Beautiful stash. I missed you. I did end up having an alchemy kit. But this is really cool. I got the pyrite. All right, pickaxe. Fishing harpoon. Um, cooking pot is in here. Yes, yes. Okay, let's make ourselves our little camp that we need to set up. Okay. A little bit of campfire. Any drugs in the game that gives buffs and negative stats? Yeah. I mean, technically, you have two drugs. You have Ambrane, right? And technically, Crystal Powder. Crystal Powder is not really a drug per se in the game, but it does restore your mana, so. It's interesting, at least. Technically, you're taking a drug. How else are you getting mana back without, I don't know, mana regen? It's gotta be a drug. Hey, Shane, do you know where the Dead Roots Key is? I've been looking for the past hour, I just can't find it. Dead Roots Key. That should be the one that is... Uh, part of the purifier quest. You have to do the purifier quest. And you have to get all five of the notes. I think there's five notes. Correct me if I'm wrong about that. But I, I believe that's the one where you have to get all of the... The notes during the purifier quest. It sounds correct in my head. All right, next up, do all the prep. I could get rid of the enchanting in my inventory. You have guaranteed drops for elemental particles as long as you do it in that quest. Yes, the clock tower puzzle. Actually, I actually have quite a bit I can throw in here. That's good. That'll save me a lot of room. We need as much as we can get for the samples. Plus, I have the stupid, uh... Water I haven't even filled up yet. Yeah, no problem, Kessex. The elements will roam around sometimes. It's a pain to find them. Right. I know you go down the stairs from the upper entrance and then the arena with the corruption. There's a hidden passage with one immaculate. Yes, there's a note there for sure. Two of the notes are hidden. Maybe only one. Alright, we got enough water. We'll sleep in a second. Let's talk to these guys first, get the town building huh. at least started. I am I've got experience. Good. Come see me as soon as you can. We've got building plans. You'll want to hear this. To get construction. Also, here's the plan. This. So, what are we working on today? Alright, we're gonna build. How did I do this last time? I think I built three houses. Then I built the food Funds storage. Of course. How can I help you? That was like hardly anything. Okay. <laughs> Is indeed technically a drug, crystal powder. Initially it was in description that it gave its property while inhaling from the nose, but that part was removed since it's too obvious. Ah yeah. Right. Yeah, I didn't know that that was in there. Interesting. Gabriel wine lowers your impact resist. Makes you wobbly on your feet. Yes. Good for mana cost, though. I think it's negative 15 extra mana cost. Negative mana cost. Always end up ingesting polluted water from there by accident a couple of times with every character. <laughs> I've done it before, too. You're not the only one. Don't feel alone in that. Alright, what do we do here? Need to line these up correctly. Now, I usually build three houses because it prevents me from needing to build a house later. Although, technically, you only need to build one right now. And how you build it does not matter in any way. I think I need to build 
I may be able to start all five of them. I'm not sure. Yeah, looks like we can. Good deal. All right, all five are started. So now we have five days to do whatever we want. What are we thinking? Um. Well, we've got to kind of get into it. So probably old Sirocco is probably the best farming route to start with. I don't know if I should specific. I'll just probably have to check every cave with the way it's going with the samples. All right. Let's do this. Sheen engineering skills hurt me. Yeah. <laughs> You don't like those uh, building placements, my friend? Go to the cave dwellers? It's not a bad idea either. What's up, Jan? The samples? Absolutely. Engineer Sheen does engineering and outward? Yeah, absolutely. I, I know what I'm doing. Trust me. I'll build these buildings perfectly. Should I bring the tent? That's my question. Because how much is it weigh? What I may do is see if I have a plant tent, and I'll take that instead. I believe I do, because that's really light. Although it hurts me in terms of my mana cost. We'll take one plant tent. Oh, what the heck? Game froze. <laughs> Dungeon time? Absolutely. Let's do it. I might build the water purifier again simply to get better stamina. Oh, I do have some marshmallow tartines. All right. You can wait on the ember in then. One of my characters is currently working on building up new Sirocco. What's the building limit for the different types of structures you can do? You can do... I think you're unlimited in terms of houses. But you want to build five houses max. Unless you're forced to build another one for something. I don't think you need to. But it depends on the building requirements. I usually build about five houses. Um, the food storage only. Do not build the workshop or the stone cutter shop. It is pointless. We tested it last time. It is not helpful in any way. It actually hurts you. Um, so you want to build the food shop, then you want to build the... What is it called? I guess it's the food workshop, and then you want to build the food store. So food's the most important first off. Once you have food store, you're free to build whatever you want. I usually build town hall next. And then after that, it's money. You can have five... You can have five total specialized buildings, because the town hall counts as one. So, technically, you can have six, but the town hall counts as one. Which means, usually, the food store, blacksmith, water purifier, enchanting guild, and... What's the last one I need to get? The arena. The arena. Usually, I don't go for general store. And there's one more. The alchemy. I usually don't go alchemy. We're going to have to for this character, though. Yeah, some buildings do count as houses, so it's going to depend. You want to build three no matter what, because from then on, depending on what you build, you could get different houses. I think the last run I did, I had to get five. But this run, I may not need to do that. We'll see. Town Hall, Smith and Food are pretty good for the first three. Right. Yeah. Blacksmith's never bad because you get to repair. Although sometimes it's good to skip it because it provides nothing other than repairing. All the weapons and armor are pretty bad. Unless you specifically wanted to test some of those weapons, which maybe we could do that this time. I don't really know. They're not good. They would pair pretty well with this chakram, though. Oh, you got the cave to my right, too. That's always a really good cave to do to get potions early on. We'll just go straight to what my plan was, though. I have plenty of varnishes. We should be okay for taking stuff on. I have a decent amount of healing as well. Caldera yeah, theme, best theme of the game? Oh, it's fantastic. It is the most exciting. I think Hall of Marsh is better when I'm trying to chill. But Caldera's got the most excitement, for sure. All three soundtracks. The one for the last dungeon and the... Nice find. The new Sirocco and Caldera. All three are really good. Smith is good for selling Caldera weapons too. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. That's a good point. He's got a lot of money, I think. Kind of crazy that the three brothers released back in 2020. It is crazy. 
three years later. Wow. Did it really? Huh. That's nuts. I guess it's almost been a full year since Definitive Edition came out. That's crazy to think about. That's crazy. Take a shot for every sample? Yeah. Hey, you might not have to take very many, because it's hard to find them. <laughs> what are you doing? What a weirdo. Oh, I need to get my Blade Dancer out, don't I? Ooh, let's do Golden Watcher. This guy's cool. Whee! Alright, now that we had some fun, let's get to work. I'm not a big fan of where they are laying right now. I kind of want to move around them. There we go. Gummy Gun, what's going on? Welcome to the stream, man. Found Eldering Boing? Really? Uh, it's... Some people do. It, it, a lot of Souls veterans found it boring just because of the open world. I loved it. I think it's very fun. Alright. What do we have to fight first? I think it's just ghosts. I should probably save up varnishes. I'm not going to use ethereal varnishes against anything but Scarlet Emissaries, probably. Uh, gargoyles, definitely. Just got back from a workout. How's the build after 30 minutes? Uh, build's going pretty good. We're headed into the hardest part of the game, so... Let's find out for sure. That's buff. I think we use ice. Just to be safe. We'll actually pop both boons because... Eh, why not? Do I need anything else? Stamina is good. Water will be good after I take this. We have a bit of mana regen we could get. Let's do that. I'm like extremely buffing. I don't necessarily need to be right now. But... Come on, buddy. Yeah, there we go. As long as I have this varnish on, we should absolutely destroy because of the faction we took. Should store the bird mask. You've never used it once. Well, I used it a bit ago when I was running, but it's a good point. I'm not using it in regular travel. Yeah, that extra 15% damage. Slapping. I'd say three hour, not 30 minutes. Oh, no, you're good, dude. I got you what you were saying. Now, we've got to be very careful when looking for samples here because they show up in some weird spots. Oh, my word. Get wrecked. I think my backpack space was pretty good. Ooh, Panacea. That's a really good find right off the bat. That is so good. Especially considering what we're about to come up against. Love this area. Fantastic. Cold damage? Pretty weak here. Not gonna lie. Don't know why I didn't think of that. That's not good. You guys have a lot of area of effect. And control. When we set him on fire, we should be good, though. It's just so hard to hit one without the other attacking. There we go. And this should kill him. Yes. That did not feel too great. Okay at best. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Yeah, happy Valentine's Day. You use bird mask 24-7? Yeah, I just never switch off to it, you know? I don't know why I don't. I just don't do it. I, think I need these for something. I can't ever remember. We can get the Damascene Spear. A very nice drop from that fine gentleman. She makes their attacks 25% uh, weaker. That's good, at least. Probably would have died without that. 
See how much damage they already did to me. Oh, I can't get up here. Okay, some pretty mediocre loot from this specific junk pile. But you can't win them all. Really? It's that cold in here? Oh, I forgot. I have low cold resist. I cannot believe I just caught a cold, though. That was instant. Anybody hate that? That's one of my biggest complaints. Is how As soon as you get cold, you can get the cold. It makes no sense. That is one, literally one of my biggest complaints. Can't bother with lower movement speed. Prefer moving fast and surviving hits. Fair enough. What I have built is hunting lodge, lumber yard, stone cutter. Should have two more specialty buildings I can build. Uh, lumber yard doesn't count as a specialty building. So I th think you might have one more than that, maybe? What's the play here? Can he fireball me? Yeah. Okay, he moves into the attack, which is good. See what I mean? I knew Caldera was going to suck. These enemies over here are extremely aggressive. Actually, you know what it is? It's the mid-range. Any enemy that has mid-range is rough for Chakrams. Because I have mid-range myself. So I got to try and balance that out. Alright, let's be way more careful than I was. That was all goofed. Actually, Tor Crabs are kind of like... Dude, this is getting ridiculous. Why is he doing the fire attack two feet from my face? That's goofing me up, that's for sure. He's supposed to fire attack when you're further away. He's doing it when I'm right next to him. Do it, I dare you. Yeah, sit down. All right, now we're doing good damage. Okay, Tor Crabs, take note. Uh, not good for this build. Tor Crabs are kind of our nemesis right now because they suck. That I was not expecting. That I was not expecting. <laughs> Especially crabs and gastrocenes and stuff with lots of stability. What's up, Rusi? Yeah, that's going to be interesting to mess with. Definitely more of a challenge than I originally thought. Sit down. Sit down, son. You ain't got nothing. Good stuff. Nothing to complain about. Not grabbing Militia Axe. It's not worth it. Gonna start an ER mod. The name of this boss will be Smoldering Wendigo Dragon. Oh, that is a cool... That's a cool name. Knock it on. Core crab species had an alpha. That was it. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> I dropped two pearl bear masks in the same playthrough. It was the first for me. Crazy and I'm in Sierra's day two of my playthrough. Six hour playtime, less than ten birds killed. That's nuts. Honestly, congrats. Okay. Let's think about this logically. Clearly, we want to use ethereal damage. We have our discipline. We need probably this. Just for a little bit, actually. I am healing pretty quickly. I'll say that, at least. Pretty sure this guy one hits me, though. It's really hard to tell sometimes. I think he does, though. Alright, we gotta attack up. This is literally just a mini boss, is what it is. It's crazy. Okay. I'm going to take a Discipline Potion if I have it. Do I have it? Yep. Don't want to run out of Discipline against this guy. But we do have another option, which is... Perfection. Oh, come on. Okay. Doing that good old smack damage. Uh-oh. So, Chakram's a bit slow. Gotta worry about that. Overall, Elemental Discharge, S tier in this fight. Oh, 
Okay. Elemental Discharge is king for Scarlet Emissaries. Literally king. It is insanely useful. How mad does this make some of you guys that I just got a digested mana stone? How mad does this make some of you guys? Dino and Conflux gets you? Oh, he gets me all the time. He's rough. He's rough. What the frick is going on with my lid? Tried to drink it up a lid that was closed. It's like 20% health. Yeah, it messes with you. He's probably the hardest enemy in that region other than the Matriarch. Get you later, Rodolfo. Yeah, the RNG in this run is crazy. Getting digested mana stone is so low chance. I think it's what? Is it under five? It's got to be under five. <laughs> it really is the luckiest run, yeah. <laughs> I know people that'll comment on my videos that are like, I can't get this. I just got it from a Scarlet Emissary. That's nuts. Did you pay the RNG, Jesus? <laughs> You'll never know. Fight went really good. Yeah, it did, Stefan. I think what it is, is I'm telling you, Elemental Discharge, it is extremely powerful for Scarlet Emissaries. I used the exact same thing when I did my Ghost of Endmerker build, and that's how I beat Scarlet Emissaries in like four hits, was I would use Elemental Discharge because it deals impact as well. I just then run up and beat them to death. They can't do anything. Did I not get a single sample? What's going on with that? Oh, anyway. Yeah, I'm a bit surprised by how good that was. That was cool. Digested Mana Stones on my first playthrough. Caldera got like 7 to 8. Could not get Petrified Organs for the life of me. You traded it on Discord? No way. That's pretty bad then. Sometimes you get them, sometimes you don't. It's really weird. Can't find a Digested Mana Stone? Simply farm Scarlet Emissaries. Yeah, the most fun farm of all time. I'm a Souls veteran. I found Sekiro. If you like Sister F over and over again, Elden Ring would be much better if it did not have an open world like Classic Souls would. A lot of people feel that way. A lot of people feel that way. If you're a true Souls veteran, I feel like you're more inclined to feel that way. If you're more of an open world fan, you would feel more like, kind of like I do. You just enjoy it. I get you, though. That was almost a mistake. I kind of about whiffed that. What is this? How did you just do that? I'm not even mad. I'm just confused. All right, we're going to do something crazy. Which is drop... Probably the plant samples, yeah. Before we go in here, because otherwise we're too heavy. This is a dangerous area, too. Like open world better? Yeah, it's all, you know... It's whatever your opinion is, really. I like the open world because I think it lets you do more. But other people don't like it. What's up, Dan? Finally caught a live stream. What's up, my man? Only used it with a fire staff. This thing was constantly broken, but it didn't matter. Yeah. That's funny. Alright, we got two gargoyles to deal with. Ideally... We would use ethereal, but I want to test something. I want to test my capabilities without the ethereal damage. Now, this is actually a stupid idea. I would never recommend this. But sometimes the stupid idea is the more fun idea. Grant barrier it does grant barrier. And status resist, which could come in handy here. We're not going to use brace, because we need brace for the gargoyle. It's essential that we have brace for the gargoyle. Gene should do a members-only live stream of the rest of Harry Potter. I'd love to see it. Uh, I'm, I definitely want to do a members-only sometime. We'll see about that, but uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with Harry Potter yet. Definitely gonna play the rest of it, but I'll I'll take that into consideration for sure. Is he not gonna attack? Nah, he's being a little punk. 
That missed completely. Okay, so damage is actually really good. No! Why did that not stagger? Come on. He backed up. See, he's doing it every time. Dang it. This is what I hate about gargoyles. When they attack, they back up. Darn, man. I really hate that. They'll back up, and it prevents you from knocking them, dude. It sucks. Benvis! Welcome to Furious Companion. Thanks for becoming a member, man. That is awesome. Okay, he's just gonna heal. Really, that's what we're doing. What the heck was that? I may actually use this chakra. There we go. Now I figured it out. Ah! Okay, so fire, usually not a good idea against this guy, because he can take it off of himself. Okay. That did not go how I wanted it to. Apparently, the issue is the mace, because they back up. That's interesting. Yeah, that's awesome, Benvis. Thank you, man. I was complaining about the price of membership before actually checking it. Ah. <laughs> yeah, the first tier is pretty low. Yeah. The third tier is much higher. <laughs> you please play Demon Souls tomorrow so you can get closer to Bloodborne? <laughs> Not quite yet. I gotta beat this one first. Uh, but I'll definitely... Honestly, I don't know if Demon Souls will take us more than two streams. I heard it was pretty short. Although, I don't know. You know. When you don't know how to play the game. That definitely makes it take longer. Uh, Death Angel, what's going on? Greetings, mind if I ask you something? Caldera being a volcanic region, would you recommend the infused frost from Spellbait Skill Tree? Considering I am currently using it, I would 100% recommend it. I do not recommend the fire. Fire is very fun and very good up until Caldera. And then it doesn't quite feel the same. It's still good. But ice is definitely... A lot better over here. Ice also is a pretty nice buff with this hat, which I'm finding. Um, honestly, though, decay damage and lightning damage are what you want. Decay, lightning, and ethereal. Ice and fire really don't do much over here, other than ice is just generally always good, other than the Wendigos. So you're okay. But lightning, decay, and ethereal are really what just absolutely destroy this region. Should I kind of... Can I do this? How do I get up this hill? What the heck? What is happening? How do you even get up this hill? What is going on right now? That was the weirdest interaction I have ever seen. I think there's like a stopping point where it just doesn't... I don't know, that was weird. Spellblade Skill Tree feels mediocre compared to the other ones? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's merely for convenience. Like, if you really want to have that boon all the time, or the buff, that's why you take this. Get wrecked. Get out of here. That is such a good combination for elementals. It absolutely feels perfect. We're focused on the main objectives. Demon Souls is 23 and a half hours in length. If you strive to see all aspects of the game, you'll likely spend around 59 hours to obtain 100%. Okay, so like three streams-ish. Probably. Maybe, no, it might take two weeks. We'll see. It might take two weeks. I'm an open world fan, but don't like... Think it fits the souls. Kind of feel. I feel that. Yeah. Again, it's like, I don't really care if you don't like it or not. It's it's up to you, so... I feel that answer, though. Hmm. It really is up to you in the end. Do I have two stamina buffs? But yeah, that's fair. Have you tried Hogwarts Legacy yet? Absolutely. I tried streaming it... Well, I did stream it Friday of last week. Unfortunately, like... It, my stream crashed because the game was not 
working properly. I didn't have the settings correct yet. And so my face cam's all jacked up and everything. Um, but it was fun. It was, it was very fun. I favorite thing about it is the combat. I think the combat is very well done. Is he not confused after two hits? That's crazy. Seems a little odd, doesn't it? Yeah, it was a rough streaming day, but it was a lot of fun. The game's great. Really? Ah, I hate gargoyles so much. Being a pain in the butt. Yeah, die to that, you punk. So, I would say, without a theory of varnish, don't fight the gargoyle. <laughs> I think we're gonna have to pass on them unless I use a theory of varnish. He is destroying me. Alright, I need to heal up here. Where's my meat? There it is. The Caldera time already? Yeah, dusty Caldera time. Yeah. He dropped one thing? Are you kidding me? How just disrespectful is that? That is very disrespectful. I'll answer my own question. Jay, I gotta leave in 10 minutes. You can tell I'm a very productive day. Yeah, you got a lot going on today. I don't know what this thing is, by the way. It looks kind of cool, though. They eat the meat? What's up, Frogner? I'm gonna take on... I wanna do something interesting. Because the Torque Crab sucked. So let's do something fun. We're going to take the Rock Mantis. Apparently, a Torque Crab hates him. We're going to help the Rock Mantis. All right, he's on me. There we go. Nice. We're using our tools efficiently right now. All right, now he's got... Oh, come on! Ugh. Taking way too much damage in Caldera. Get out of my face. I may need more health potions. I was worried about this. And I think I was right to worry about it. Because I am kind of getting my butt handed to me. I may need more bandages as well. Does so Hogwarts Legacy actually have decent combat? It looked a bit button mashy to me. But doesn't look... Uh... But didn't look much over the weekend. So, I have seen this complaint. Well, not a complaint. I've seen this criticism a few times. There are several people who don't like the combat, but they haven't played it. And I was one of those people. I didn't think the combat looked any good. After playing it, it is very fun. It is button combinations. You want to combine the buttons in the right combinations to do the cool stuff. Um, but it's more patterns than button mashing, really. And the really fun thing about it is you can customize it in extremely fun ways because the different spells react differently. So you can use, like, uh, you can pull someone towards you, then use the fire spell, or you could get rid of someone's wand and then use the uh, Levioso spell or something. It's just all kinds of cool stuff you can do with it. It feels very creative. And I don't even have that many spells right now. Oh my word, he died. But I like the combat so far. Fast traveling man, horse riding. Demon Souls rather than Dark Souls. I already played Dark Souls once, so we are going to Demon Souls next. How does this do? Eh, it's okay. Is he going to do it again? Apparently not. And now he's dead because... Oh, crap. That's what you don't want. That is what you don't want. And this is why you put water skin in your pocket. That is the number one reason why. We need to start playing much better than I am. 
And I think that's because up until this point, we've had no issue. We're running into issues. So let's do this. We'll do impact as well. Just because I feel like if I can impact the gastro scene, it'll be a lot better. Okay, let's switch. Does he have elemental vulnerability on him yet? Yeah, shut up. Now you're a joke. Oh, maybe not. I think that does something. Why is that not impacting? It's dodging to the left. Usually I dodge out of that pretty well, but I think I'm... Oh, it feels a little off today. That's fine. GB, your videos help me a lot, bro. Oh my, I to hit my mic again. Sorry, guys. GB, your videos help me a lot, bro. Oh, thanks, man. Welcome to the stream. Appreciate you saying that. Holy cow. Got a plant sample. Let's go! I got all kinds of stuff from that. Like I used the Leviosa spell to pick up that backpack. Yeah. <laughs> you like that in fodder? Yeah, it's pretty good. Yoink. Oh, yeah, beautiful. And you did. Look at how he flew backwards. It's hilarious. I think I only got one sample from in here. You're usually you're supposed to get two. Feel that in Harry Potter? Once you learn to juggle the enemy, it'll be easy as seen playing RNGesus to win outward. <laughs> For sure, dude. This has been the craziest run. I, I've gotten everything. If I get the alchemy, the lightweight alchemy pot or lightweight cooking pot, this will be the most broken run of all time. It, it will be. That's the honest truth. I have had so much good luck. So much good luck. It's been crazy. It has been crazy. Been awesome. Hmm... Now is the fun part. I either die or I win triumphantly. You know what I mean? You're a video idea in there somewhere, Sheen? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ooh, maybe. Um, what do I want here? I honestly should probably put the other water skin in my pocket. Maybe these? Um, let's see. Uh, bird mask wouldn't be a bad idea. I don't know. Found outward fun more than Eldering. Played it once with someone since I did not have the game. Try it with a friend. Oh, really? You tried it out? Did you like it? That's cool. Yeah, that's really cool. Here we go. Make the snail fight the elementals? Hey, it's exactly what I was going to do. But it can be hard to do sometimes. <laughs> We're switching backpacks for the... Maybe. Alright, now is where we have to deal with the fireballs. It gets a little spammy. Trying to dodge some stuff here. Alright. Now we should hopefully be good if they got on him. We don't want them to kill him. That's the thing. We want him to kill them, which it looks like he's doing. They're getting wrecked. As long as he doesn't get impacted. Oh, he's dead, for sure. Are you freaking kidding me? This has got to be a joke right now. I hate obsidian elementals more than anything in the game. These guys suck. I literally hate him so much. Auto tracking. Ridiculous. Oh, wait. One of them died. That's good. Hopefully, the ghost dies next. Ghost is almost dead. Did he kill the other one, too? Don't forget to check the Immaculate's Cave for samples. Good point. Good point. Although it never works out for me, I will do it. Wait a minute. Ah, he's got the hex on him. I don't have brace. Watch this. I'm going to do a crazy move. I'm going to do a crazy move. Alright, you do whatever you want to do, buddy. You do whatever you're doing to do. Just screw me. How about that?
You need to make more discipline potions, too. He just straight up said, forget you. I'm doing my own thing. Why is he doing this so much? It's not fun. Yeah, how's it feel now? A little spammy guy. Huh? Get a little spammy with me. I'll destroy your face. How about that? It's the kind way of saying it. Make me the same loot? That's weird. I think that was all those. Actually, you don't even need to go down there. I don't know why I always kill them. Need the passive skill from the drum skill tree? Ooh, for status resist? Good point. That is a good point. Yes! We got a glass weapon. Okay, this is what we were looking for. That was the ideal thing we were going to get. Unfortunately, we didn't get, like, crazy amount of samples, but, yeah, it's whatever. I found out we're pretty awesome. Fun, it was a good try. Yeah, it's a fun game. I'm glad you liked it. I personally love it. Okay, so we killed that unique enemy. We're just good to straight up leave, then. Marathon potion for quick travel. Yeah, those are the green beetles, right? You can make those. Drop the backpack. Weight affects stamina consumption. Good point. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay, so when I get back to town, I need to, I need to get rid of a lot of things. All right. I was worried about coming here. I knew I would be overweight because it's basically two dungeons in one. Be honest, the first play through of Outward is the worst one. Yeah, it's the hardest for sure. You miss the most stuff. You die the most. Uh, use all the wrong skills, usually. But for some reason, we always come back and want to play more of it. I don't know why. I'm going to turn first. I still love Ice Infuse. I mean... You don't, like, eat through your supply of potions as fast. <coughs> or frog. <coughs> Water damn wrong. <coughs> Water went down the wrong tube. Whew, we're looking for the lightweight alchemy set. Not glass weapons. Stay focused. All right. All right. Well, after I die real quick. Then we can do that, okay? How many hollow trunks are there? I need to check every single location. That's what I need to do. Good thing I had someone to guide me. I had so much fun. Nice. Yeah, if you have someone who knows kind of what they're doing, it's pretty it's pretty good. Crack me up, Sheen. <laughs> You're welcome. Shoot! I did miss my stuff. You guys are right. What am I doing? I'm a, I'm a stupid little boy. Stupid little boy. Yeah, that was a mistake for sure. Good catch, Frog Nerd. And Yo too. Every six weight increases sprinting and dodging stamina consumption by 1% and lowers stamina regen by 1%. Yeah, so essentially if I have on um my backpack when it's overweight, I need to just drop it, right? Now, I don't necessarily want to grab everything. I am going to come back through here to get through the next exit as well. What I'll probably do is grab the samples. Although, I guess I have to grab all of it to grab that. Okay. 50? What the heck? Okay. That's not good. That is, in fact, very bad. Oh, we did get four samples, though. I'll drop all these. These are actually really heavy. 130. We're not looking particularly good, but we're not looking particularly bad. And that is what is important. There's a decent middle ground we find ourselves in. Every six weight, even under the weight limit. Gotcha. Uh, I think I checked the ornate chest. I'm going to do it again, though. I may not have. Actually, now that I think of it, I don't think I did. What in the world is going on with the stairs here? We'll see what's in here. Oh, no, I didn't check it. Yeah, it's pretty good stuff. 
I'll come back to the rest of it when I go to get my... Again, we gotta come through here to get through the back anyway, so... Ugh, it's all good. What games do you have in your list to play? Oh, all kinds of stuff. All kinds of stuff. Demon Souls and Bloodborne next. I'm currently playing through a uh, Hogwarts Legacy on my own time, probably. At least for this playthrough. Or parts of this playthrough. I may stream it again for viewers or something. We'll see. I need to at least beat this outward run before I decide anything else. Alright, we're gonna use... I think Buzu... We could definitely use Brace. The Gastrocene, I couldn't use Brace. He goofed me. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Do it. Do it! Hit me! Hit me, you son of a gun! Don't make me do it. What's he trying to do here? What are you doing? As soon as I attack, he's gonna hit me. That's the thing. That's why I'm not attacking. Oh. Now we got the fight music? Okay. Oh, the punk. Yeah, get this. Some of this. That's what you get, son. Oh, they have a lot of impact resist. That is something I did not know. Oof. We are very overweight. Get out of here. You're not even on my level. You're not even on my level. You don't even deserve to fight me. Don't even deserve it. The glory of fighting me should be something exemplary. Someone with loads of power. You, my friend, don't have it. Basically, being above the weight limit is terrible, sure. But carrying a lot of stuff also offers debuffs. So I'm even unlisted in character stats. Really? Huh. You're gonna play Fallout? Play Fallout 3 first. You have a great time. Yeah, if I ever do, I definitely will. We'll see what happens. I love this walking speed. It's fantastic. This is actually my run, by the way, guys. I just want that to be known right now. This is currently my run. Does it look like I'm running? No. And you know what? I think this is another big diss in Caldera. It's just the samples weigh too much. I don't know why they made them weigh so much. Just make them weigh three pounds. You could carry double the samples. It seems a little ridiculous. I always use the biggest backpack with the most capacity and still end up overweight because of these stupid samples. Hated Fallout. Really wanted to like, but failed miserably. Which is not my game. Ah, it's just how it is for some people, you know? Just how it is. I don't think my brother's played it either. I know I haven't. Um, we could actually go to Sinai. He's closer, maybe. Yeah, but we have samples we need to turn in. It's not even about the... the weight. You can give a backpack and a champ. No, you can't enchant backpacks. Unfortunately. Does it say you can? Yeah, you're not... You shouldn't be able to. Here's an example. Get under your bag limit and check your movement speed. Drop your bag and check again. The listed stat change. Stamina regen isn't listed, but also exists. Okay. You're saying right here. Yeah, I'm negative 47%. At least movement speed, yeah. There is the next mod that... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think that would have been a cool idea to get some enchantments for backpacks. I think it would have looked... It would have made for some interesting uh, gameplay for sure. Marble backpack with a wait list. There you go. A lighter backpack. Nice. That's a cool idea. <laughs> I already got this one. I'm trying to think of what sample rotation this is. I may need to go to the Friendly Immaculates next, because I think this might be the rotation where it's his cave. Because usually, if you see a sample anywhere near New Sirocco, it means good things. That's what I like to think. Now, what usually ends up happening is I'm wrong about that, but... It's good to pretend, right? It's good to have hope and, 
enjoy things. This way is six. Oh, this was a great axe. I what I really wanted was a dagger. Great axe was probably the worst option. It's the heaviest, I believe. Sheen immediately enchanting backpack with economy. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, you know me, you know me. Yeah, I would do that. When is Nine Dots gonna make Outward 2 on Unreal 5? That would be awesome. That would be awesome. I am hoping we get one soon. I mean, think about it. What would you, like... Honestly, I don't know if I'd want a direct sequel. Obviously, I do. But I don't at the same time, you know? So, I would like the same style of game, but with a completely different story. I think that would be cool. Or even, like, a precursor to our Like, something... Just... We don't know anything about the story. It's way before. Maybe that would be cool, too. Left the town with about 87 weight. No wonder you're overweight. Did I really? Well, I had to be prepared, didn't I? Had to be prepared. Still sandboxy with new zones and expanded zones. Yeah, yeah, keep the same premise. Yeah. Outward prequel would be amazing. It would. It'd be so much cool to... Well, a lot of times, uh, what's cool about a prequel is they'll tie in stuff that happens in the future, which is the same with a sequel, but I I've always find it more interesting when they do it with a prequel. Outward 2 plays Elat. That would be cool. Get to find out what kind of wizard he truly was. Hmm. That is a great idea. Alright, four samples. I believe we had two mole pigs as well, which last time I had very few of. Yeah, that's a pretty good run right there. Now, to be fair, I brought a lot of other junk along after that. That's why I'm really out of way. I mean, two gargoyle urn shards. But you have to grab at least some, because you never know if you need them for the town building. Alright, I need to figure out if I can craft anything, too. Barrier status. We're going to keep the marathons. I think those are a good idea to get around. And what's our weight now? 65. Not bad. Take a rest, repair some stuff. Probably repair the chakram, frozen chakram, I think. There we go. Not using marathon for travel. I'm going to use it when I'm not overweight. It doesn't really help you when you're really overweight. I mean, it would, but you know what I mean. Definitely need eight panacea. <laughs> This the, did I really have eight panacea in there? No way, no way I don't. How do you even get eight panacea? That's crazy. That's crazy. You know what we don't need though? Purity potions, because you can't get corrupted over here that I know of. Where am I? Oh yeah, my other water skins are in my inventory or my pocket. Oh, let's see. You gotta cook those. Where are we at here? Now. We really need some recipes for over here, but I don't know them yet. Probably just end up making some jerky. Oddly enough, we need more salt. Didn't see that coming. Amy's last words can't be corrupted here. Proceeds to run into one of the potential enemies to corrupt him. Probably. Shane, do you know this thing called Discord? It's really cool. People could talk. <laughs> I know. I, I haven't been on it lately. I've been uh, working on my Hogwarts Legacy stuff. I will try. I will do my best to look at it tonight. I know I told you that last time. I will do my best to look at it tonight. That is on me. A couple of enemies weak to fire that are resistant to ice is main damage. Um, Grotov Chalcedny. 
is a good location for something that you're talking about. I think most of the enemies there are actually really resistant to cold damage. I still have that stupid cold. It's cool. I love that I can always bug you about it. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's on me. I just haven't checked it, man. I'll do my best to check it tonight. Yeah, I think Fallout 3 would be a good start for me. That's all. Fair enough. I heard New Vegas was pretty good, too. Who's asking about bingo card chat? I don't know about that one. We're definitely doing the cave to my right. I may attempt... I may attempt to do... the Aether Bomb weapon quest. We'll see. We'll see what happens. It's a fun weapon. Maybe, maybe not. You never know. I just bang in this music, man. It's so good. Love Caldera music. I was the one that talked about last stream. Yeah, I remember. Oh, yeah. Lazy mentioned it last stream. Now, there are Medes, which is what I was hoping would not be here. Mm, it's a pretty good farm for Ambrain. Which, luckily, I have not needed yet. Let's see if there's anything over here. Okay, we have one? Nope, three Medes. Dang it. I really don't want to fight Medes. It's going to be an uphill battle. At least not these ones. These ones don't... They don't benefit me in any way. Might be able to grab this. You get a lot of bugs with this. Holy cow. I'm watching them. What a weird enemy design. That is one of the things I'll always compliment Outward for is the enemy variety is... It's... It, crazy is what it is. It's absolutely insane. It is absolutely insane. Want to see you do the oil refinery because I can't find the keys for the door? You want me to do it now? I can go do it now. Okay. You talked me into it. I know it was really hard to do. I put up a lot of effort. You know, I really fought back. Right? But, uh, sure, we'll do it. You really pulled my leg on that one. Oil refinery is always a blast. <laughs> Oil refinery sucks. It's like one of the harder caves in this region. <laughs> Do it for the memes, Sheen? Yeah, no problem. Where am I at right now? Always getting around this rocky region is... Like, the only region in this area that is extremely frustrating to climb across. Let's see. Okay, we need to go to the top left. So you're looking for the keys. There are two keys, from what I know. No, you're looking for levers, actually. Persuasion, roll, nat 20. Yeah, you just roll that straight 20. It's like, all right. Not even going to argue. Going to go along with it. Why not? Thank goodness I chose a tumor chest for this. There's no way I'd have enough stamina if I had chosen the pearl scent like I was originally going to. There's absolutely no way. Maybe for a boss fight I could like manage it, but still. It's not really ideal. I think I can go around this way and get there faster. <laughs> I rolls a die. Nice, Jeremiah. When I tried the lever, it didn't do anything? Okay. I could show you... I've done this a hundred times, so I know exactly what we're doing. Well, I will figure it out once I get in there. I usually forget. I believe it's the lever to the left. Yes, it is. Okay. Which one are you trying to do? Are you trying to do the lower or the top? You have to do top first. Sheen, if you did all side quests plus faction and Caldera, how long would it take? Um, quite a while. If you did every possible thing you can do in the game, which I would consider each cave part of the side quest. A little bit longer than how I usually do my, my builds, because I usually don't do everything. I have on, I think, one build, but not all of them. 
I really hate Caligrays. This is gonna suck. Caligrays are another enemy that love to play mid range. Absolutely love. Should hit his buddy. And mid range is the opposite of what I want to play. Or mid range is what I want to play. So it kills me when they do. Although that didn't go too bad. The confusion in there, we're pretty good, I think. Alright, Cali Gray. There's that. I'm actually going to do the right side first, or left side first. Uh, love Skyrim, then? You'll love Fallout? Yeah, I mean, they're very similar in terms of uh, design, I have been told. Bait jump and regular attack. Punish them after they do their regular melee. Yeah. Remember the fall of the pipes. Right. Which way do I want to do? Do I want to do yellow or blue? Let's do yellow. What's up? Yeah, that's a lot of impact. You already know. Okay, Mendes, not as much of an issue as I thought. I forget the confusion breaks Mendes easily. Okay, I don't know why I was scared. Apparently, it's really good for that. Oh, you know what it is? You probably pulled the wrong lever. You have to pull them in a particular order, now that I'm thinking about it. Do you enchant your mace? Because it looks kind of slow. Yes, the mace is enchanted with weightless. It's a 1.1. Maces are just more slow than most weapons. But it's pretty fast for this mace. It's a lot slower if you don't enchant it. Starfield should be somewhere to fall out in space. Yeah, not coming out. They don't have a release date for that yet, do they? This feels very fluid gameplay, you know? Oh, that's not what you want. I don't even know how he did that. Honestly, the blue ones can be more annoying than the yellow ones sometimes. They seem to take less physical damage as well. That was odd. I, usually that attack doesn't bother me too much, but it can inflict you with something, and it's very bad. I believe it's breathless, which makes you negative 100 stamina cost or stamina consumption. Essentially, you... Don't regen your stamina is what I'm trying to say. Blue ones have 75 resistant to physical damage. Yellow has 25. Really? Why is it that way? The blue ones are like the babies. Hmm. Starfield could be launching in June 29 is the latest leaked rumor. Really? I didn't know that. That would be kind of awesome. A lot of pretty decent games coming out this year. Okay, now we get the fun one, which is the Elder Caligre. These guys can really be a pain in your butt. But luckily, I can impact them instantly, it looks like. Now... That is what we wanted. Okay, one down. What just happened on my side? I know I said... It said something, I don't know what it said. Ooh, that was very, very nice. That worked out way better than I thought it was going to. And we got a lightning varnish, which is great for the Medes. That's a good find. Very good find. Got up on one of the gaming sites like GOG on accident, and then they took it down. Interesting. Hmm. Makes you think. All right, we're gonna go with elemental vulnerability for this one. 
don't know what I'm going to use here. This guy sucks too. Honestly, I may just go ethereal. Don't have brace, which is usually what I like to have for this fight. Although brace didn't really help me last time. So. I find that I have a lot of food this time. I usually come to Caldera with almost nothing, and I did a pretty good job of not doing that. I think it was by accident. I don't think this was on purpose, but... Alright, that did nothing. Hence why the ethereal varnish is so important here. It's literally ten times easier to kill and gargoyle with it. Okay, just not gonna work. That's fantastic. Mace proving to be very quick at taking them out. Alright, so here's the first lever. Check the uh, oil level. Does nothing. Okay. Nothing. It's not supposed to. It lowers the oil in a different cave. It lowers the oil in a different cave. Now, there's also a chest here, which I may show you. You cannot get this chest until you go to the other cave and grab a key. Jacoby, what's up, man? Welcome to the stream. Yeah, okay, so what you want to do, Mystic, is you want to go in there, pull that lever. It's actually all you have to do. You don't have to kill anything in there. Then you're going to come back out here. And you go to the lower refinery. Larva egg rotted, that was all. Okay, thanks, Matthew. Uh, sometimes it'll be something really just not important, and other times it'll be important, so I never know. I didn't pay attention to it enough that time. So then, what it basically what it does is it allows you to pull the other levers in this area. Which, by the way, I don't know what they did, but for some reason they decided that Caldera was the area for oil, and you can just get approximately like 50 oil in a run from this place. It's insane. Like, that's nuts considering all the things you need oil for. If you were doing a heavy oil run, like bullets or... Do you need bullets for oil? I think you do. Or lanterns or something, you would really be just stocking up here. Worst DR boss? Well, I don't know. I wasn't a big fan of Horalu. Mostly because he just basically spammed uh, delayed attacks. It was kind of eh. Technically same cave, just two spots. Yeah, yeah. Because the other area that cave leads here. You just can't get here through that cave until you go through this way. Fallout, not for everyone, like Eldering. Right. I mean, no games for everybody. For sure. Best place to trog run, then? Troggy like oil? Yes, this would be a very good place for trogs, except for they so easy to die. You'd have to get around that, and then you'd be golden. Oh, what? It ran out the last second. That's lame. I don't know what those guys' deal is, but they refuse to do anything for... the first few seconds of our battle. Don't approve. I felt very easy. Almost a little too easy. Couldn't figure out how to get to this cave. Thought I had to do something about that bridge. Yeah, you gotta go around. I, I understand your confusion. Yeah. You just go around that rock cropping there. And I can show you how to do it once you're in here too. Because it's not too hard once you're in here as long as you look around, but they don't really show you explicitly. So, what we wanted to do is go there, but we can't, because obviously it's filled with lava. Or oil, not lava. <laughs> See, that's interesting. I can actually impact them when they're on the ground. But earlier, there were enemies I couldn't do that to. Uh, specifically, gargoyles. Gargoyles have, like, 
impact resist frames whenever they're on the ground. Some enemies do, some enemies don't. These combos are normally 10 hits. I have the stamina of a mountaineer's child. Yeah, it just seems a little ridiculous. So watch that oil over there. Ready? Lowers it. All right, we're going to do this game, huh? Two of you? Sit down. Sit down again. Oh, yeah? Want to play games like that? Smack in the face. Sit down. Elements of vulnerability completely changes the game. Because any enemy that you would normally have an issue with... So, for example, Caligrays are not particularly immune... Or uh, are not particularly weak to cold damage. So if I was to fight them with cold regularly, it'd be like, eh, okay, whatever. Like, you're doing damage, but it's not optimal. If you inflict them with elemental vulnerability, you immediately are like, oh, okay, you are doing good damage. It's really weird. Um, that's not the next lever. The next lever is down here. Looks like a bug. Don't think that should happen. Yeah, maybe not. I, I don't know. I doubt it was supposed to be that easy to do. Ooh, wait a sec. Hello, mole pig. I'm getting a lot of mole pigs. That is not like any other run I've ever had. I don't particularly want mole pigs. I want the rocks, but I'll take them. Get you later, frog nerd. I'm gonna go play with fists. Nice. All right, so here's the second le uh, lever. This one opens up two locations. No, I think it only opens one. Yes, this should still be locked, which it is, but it opens up the entrance where I came from, which I need to find another gargoyle. Should I use ethereal or should I just go straight for the cold damage? I'll probably go cold damage. That's why elemental damage is so strong compared to physical. You can technically get negative 50% resistance on elemental stats as compared to negative 25 with physical. Right. Yeah. And they're already usually stronger, because you can already find an element where someone's weak to. Like, if I fight this gargoyle with Ethereal, weaken him to both Ethereal and Elemental Vulnerability, that's just going to destroy him. 100% agree. Let's go with... Uh, discipline. Got the Water buff. Need the Stamina buff, just in case. I am going to use Cold... It's probably a mistake, but I'd like to save my varnishes for Scarlet Emissaries instead. How are we doing on damage there? It's okay. Not bad. We're going to drop backpack because I feel a little bit... It gets in my way sometimes. That was a nice start. Like a really nice start. Alright, we can lock on now. Too early. I hate when I do that. I see it coming and I go, eh, I'm just going to draw. Okay, he's going to do that. Sometimes a gargoyle will be really stupid with how they hit their mace attack. Usually it's when I attack. I've gotten hit, I think, three times today because of that, though. I wonder why. Alright, brace me. You idiot. I freaking hate that attack. It's so dumb. They literally back up. Ugh. It's giving me so much trouble with the chakram too. And then they'll get into a groove where they spam it. That was... That was... Every gargoyle fight I haven't used a Spirit Varnish has been horrible. <laughs> I think it's supposed to be that way, but it is not fun. Alright, there's the other lever. I already have all those. Green beetles and water make the marathon potions, by the way. Okay, I thought it was green beetles. I couldn't remember, though. Really a game out there to compare to Outward with? Gothic? I've heard Gothic compared to it a few times. I don't really know enough about Gothic, though. Probably compare Outward with Elden Ring. 
In a way, yeah. AoE of that attack is huge. Oh, it's massive. And I think it's actually further than the visual is. Okay, so yeah, if you go through the other entrance now, you'd be able to jump from there to here. Obviously, I don't need to do that because we already opened up the exit, but... I'm just showing you what's up. Okay. Yeah, he's just gonna fire attack. I really despise Tor Crabs with this build. Although, the ice damage I'm putting out is freaking great. That was weird. Anybody else see that? I thought I hit him, and I guess I just completely missed or something. All right, and then you can go over here and get... Dude, this right here is where you want to get your thick oil. I mean, this is absolutely insane. Look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six things of thick oil, which could give you up to three each. It's absolutely nuts. They did a really good job with making Caldera extremely profitable, considering how much more challenging it is. We're going to leave it there because... I don't need it. And uh, it weighs eight pounds. Green beetle and water and cooking pot makes the tea to cure and brain withdrawal. Oh, that's actually good to know, too. I tend to get and brain withdrawal and I never cure it because I don't know how. Don't trust new games anymore. I'm always critical until I've played it. Maybe I'm getting old or games are super weird and monetized nowadays. I, it's just a different, you know, different time of gaming, I think. Yeah, that's a wide range for sure. This lowers the oil in here, which I like that the oil actually shows lowering. And in each location, there is a vent where the oil has gone. It's a very well-designed dungeon. Visually speaking. Gargoyle always immediately goes for them, and I don't know why. All right, I gave him a little bit of assistance. Usually the gargoyle loses. We're having a 2v2 right now, and I appreciate it. Yeah, he just gets destroyed. I mean, the decay beam that the Medes do is too strong. And they have a lot of impact with that ability too. Will he lose though? Some interesting things going on right about now. The Medes might lose by himself. Oh, instantly won. That was so crazy. He gets him down almost all the way and then just goes, No. No. Not today. Dude, woke up, chose violence. Waning tentacle. Good drop to get. That was hilarious. Wish money had more uses in this game. Yeah, I guess you can't really do much with it. I think that was why they made New Sirocco so grindy, but... And now you get this key. If you grab this key specifically, you can go back up to the upper refinery, and there's an ornate chest you can open up. I usually don't do it. I may do it this time, though. Because I'm kind of in the mindset of looting some stuff, so... Can't hurt, right? But yeah, these are the little vents where the oil goes. It's just a really well-designed cave. I love it. Um. Yeah, there we go. Gargoyle got death stared. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> that, that beam is insane. It just does so much. Open that up so we don't need to later. That mechanic for my mods is if enemy has 60 or more resistance to non-physical damage, it takes 10% more damage to that hit with non-physical damage. Okay, interesting. I wish there was a way to get up there from here, though. Dungeons and Caldera's S tier. And yeah, this is the best part about Caldera is the dungeons. They designed them extremely well. 
which is clearly where the majority of the time went on the developing because the region itself is very barren, but the dungeons are glorious. Same with the Antique Plateau, though. I mean, the dungeons are really good over there. And the Antique Plateau, the difference is the... The outside region is also equally as well done. Like, there's just so much there. I think part of what makes the Antique Plateau so good, though, is that they have a lot of water splitting everything off. You know what I mean? There's... This is it one river? I think it's like one river that just kind of goes and splits everything into different sections of the map. And it makes everything seem a lot, I don't know, more busy. I'm going to go check Friendly Immaculates probably. Antique Bateau is great, but a bit repetitive. I could see that. I could see you thinking that. To be fair, all the dungeons are good. Each one was specially crafted. Nothing seems like it was put there as filler. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I mean, think about the base game. You have Cabal Wind Temple, which is an extremely unique cave where you don't even have to fight anything if you don't want to. You've got uh, the Face of the Ancients, which is arguably the best cave in the game. I mean, aesthetically, it's glorious. The arc is very well designed, even though everybody was mad we couldn't drive it. <laughs> I always thought that was funny. Or get it as your home or something. There are a lot of very good dungeons for sure. Face of the... Not face of the dungeons. Uh, Vault of Stone. How about the Vault of Stone? Yeah, it must have been a bug earlier that I got with that boozu. Chakram's insane. I could probably do it with a bit less negative mana cost, so I may stop using the mana tent and go into luxury. It might be better at this point. Electric Lab is cool as well. Electric Lab is probably my favorite dungeon in the desert. Absolutely. Electric Lab has a lot of cool designs and has a very cool feel to it, especially since you're, you're kind of matching up the lore of the Antique Plateau with the lore of the desert and getting where the golems came from. And you've got the secret Czar Stone, which is hidden there for whatever reason. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like the stone vault the most. A yeah, vault of stone is so cool. Very creepy place. Yes, a mope. Guys, you saw it here on the Sheen Shots channel. It is possible to get samples from the Friendly Immaculate's Cave. I know we have almost proved this inaccurate many times before, but guess what? It is possible. And I'm only getting mole pigs. I don't know what is going on, but I am going to take it. Okay, it's not in there, though. Wow. So here's how entrances to the mana pool are all pretty well designed and so different. I think that is a pretty good thing as well. Um, whenever you're creating a dungeon where it has multiple entrances, in order to make each distinctly different and unique, that's pretty hard to do. And they did a good job with it. They did a pretty good job with it. First time ever, Sheen? I know, it really is. <laughs> of course, you can forget the cave's river end. Oh, I know, yeah, river's end. It's it's an excellent cave. <laughs> Matthew, were you there the other day when I was complaining about it? <laughs> yeah, river's end. Oh, what a glorious cave. River's end feels a lot like... the cave here that has just one immac or, uh, Scarlet Emissary in it. It feels very similar. There's nothing there, really, but one enemy. At least this one's difficult. Hey, thanks for the sub. Appreciate that. Do I want to check over here? I probably want to check over here. Thought we were lying about the samples. Yeah, honestly. 
Honestly, I, at some point, you have to think to yourself, am I being lied to? What are you doing up here? Can I float, by the way? I'm pretty sure I'm floating there a minute ago. Oh, I'm floating! Well, this is interesting. Apparently, you can float right here. I don't think the ground was modeled correctly in that location. That's hilarious. Love it. You have to admit it's unique. River's End is unique. I will give it that. I'll give it that. It is uniquely bad, but it is unique, and that is what matters. That is what matters. <laughs> mm. There are a few locations in the game that have weird stuff like that. I think for a while in the slide, if you walk down the stairs, it sounded like you were walking through water, even though there was no water there. Funny little things. Auto running is one of the best features in Outward. I think auto running should become a mechanic in every single RPG, honestly. Any open world, especially. Auto walking is extremely useful. Very, very cool. Very, very cool. There are certain games like dungeon crawlers and things where auto walking doesn't really make sense. Like, I would say every game, but in certain games, auto-walking just doesn't really fit. I think in RPGs, at least most open worlds, it would really help out a lot. It fits very, very well with that word, though. Very, very well. I have a lot of Ambrane at this point. I haven't used any yet, because I don't want my addiction to become too high. See you, Don Weaver. I was. It's a shame because it's actually a nice looking cave. It'd be a good tourist attraction in real life. It is a nice looking cave. It, I don't know. It's got the wooden bridge. It just kind of leads into the cave with the, uh, what is it? The amylite down at the bottom. Some water. Very neat. Just serves no purpose. <laughs> very odd. I don't know why. Very, very odd. Okay. We're overweight again. How much are we overweight by, though? Only 14? I was trying to see if I could switch anything to my pocket. I'll actually do health potions. That could help out a bit. Oh, because I have the water, it'll be... Yeah, I need to switch that back soon. Good amount of samples, though. I think we found two. That's all I can ask. If we find two per cave, I feel good about it. You know? Two per cave... We're going to be in pretty good shape when we get to the point when we need to turn them in. And I will say it is kind of fun to, you know, mess around, kill the stuff in each cave. Now, after the third time of doing it, I don't know if I'll feel the same way, but <laughs> you never know. You never know. Here we are back in New Sirocco. Glorious. Uh, the only thing, like, I really wouldn't do Caldera, at least the new, the buildings and stuff, but the Crimson Avatar is kind of the ultimate challenge. He is the most fun enemy to fight, I feel. After doing him a few times. So I always want to find him. Building aspect would be fine as long as you didn't need to farm samples. Yeah, absolutely. I think everybody can pretty much agree with that. All right, we're back. We're getting a few really good potions as well. I didn't use any of the marathon. I was going to do that. That's a mistake. Whoops. I don't really need to be grabbing gargoyle urn shards either anymore. Uh, we're gonna go Grotto next, since I have all the fire infuses. That'll be pretty good way to get rid of them. I have 19 spiritual varnishes. I didn't realize I made that many. Holy cow. Okay, well, apparently I came prepared, didn't I? Farmed it once, never again. Should just unlock all the buildings on your legacy characters once you complete it on your main. Yeah, it does feel very just absolutely brutal that way. 
I agree. Do I have blood mushrooms? Because I know... I don't remember where you get blood mushrooms in this area. So you mentioned not building the resource buildings. How does that work? So there is the... Three different resource buildings. There's the one for food, the one for stone, and the one for wood. Now, originally when I did the these streams and I would beat the game fully, I would upgrade all of them. I would build all of them. I would upgrade all of them. Well, it always took me a long time to do that. And it turns out that's because of building those extra workshops. So what you want to do is build the food storage. And that's it. Because... You don't actually get very much wood or stone from the workshops, and it doesn't really benefit you because of that. Now, it does do some, meaning if you make them, it's not worthless, but it is a massive waste of funds. Um, and because if you build, let's see, certain buildings that make you a lot of funds, you can just spend those funds on the materials instead. So it's more efficient to get buildings that make you money and then turn that money into materials rather than spending money to make materials and then not having any money. Because if you make those buildings, you have you run out of money immediately. Almost immediately. You just have none. What do you guys think is the most useless item in this game? For me, it's the stability potion, since mineral tea is both easier to produce and offers much more... Or more with the burn HP restoration. Most useless item in the game. I don't really know, to be honest. Hmm, that is an interesting thought. I'm not really a person that gets into the food enough to... I, I would imagine it would be a food of some sort that just kind of does the same thing as a potion or maybe. But I really don't make enough food. I mean, I think you can see that clearly. I run with meat for healing. I run with stuff for stamina. And that's about it. Until I get to Caldera and I can make the Vagabond. Or buy the Vagabond Jelly. And that's what I do. By food storage, do you mean the Hunting Lodge? Yes. So, the Hunting Lodge. Sorry, yeah. It's, I don't remember exactly what they're called. I think it's Hunting Lodge, Stone... Woodcutter Lodge, and then the Stone... Mason workshop, maybe? Uh, but yes, the the hunting lodge. The hunting lodge is the only one I make because food is most important. Food is the hardest to get, usually. For me, at least, anyways. Now, you have to build one of them. They force you to. If you don't build one, you can't move on. That's why I always choose food. Most useless thing is probably Risa. <laughs> I love it when we hate on Risa. It's just... Just makes me smile. Machete's the most useless. Barely useful to scrap. Machete's pretty bad. But to be fair, it was the weapon I used first. Is that a good thing? Probably not. But it's the truth. We are going to use... Fire should absolutely obliterate everything in this cave. Good. The trick is going to be surviving everything. I should probably start using that to run. Holy cow. It's doing the stuttering thing again. I wonder why it's doing that. That didn't help. Oh my word, he's got some range. That didn't help me at all, did it? That sets him on fire. We use this. Ooh, the damage is excellent. I don't think I can get in that, can I? Uh-oh. Dang it. He's in a weird spot where he's on the ledge of the, the wall. Okay, that damages you and slows you. For a long time, actually. What the heck? 83 seconds? What is it, a 90 second? 
I mean, it's negated by my buff, but... Race is fine, but the blue chamber itself is terrible. The idea behind it, yeah. If I was going to revolutionize my next run, I could show you. If I get to that point, I'll... I'll show, I should be able to get to that point today. I'll show you why exactly you don't do it. It'll help a lot for sure. And he dies the burning. Thought I saw a sample over here. Did I not? Dang it, it was a stupid rich iron vein. Most useless item, burrow tusk. Can't be used for anything at all except selling. Hmm. I actually didn't know that. Again, I'd, there's certain things I don't pay attention to. Like certain resources. If I already know how to make health potions and stuff, I just forget it. Don't even care. This is another really cool cave they made. Uh, what's your rank of all the Souls games? DLCs? I don't know. That's a hard one. I think clearly Dark Souls 3's was the hardest, right? Uh, Dark Souls 1 was probably the most fun. Dark Souls 2 were the most annoying, but they had pretty good bosses. More meat. Holy cow, I didn't know Beatles gave you this much meat. Hmm. Grab the tattered armor made for bandages as starting weapon. You know, that's a good point. I've actually been finding a lot of stuff that I should be scrapping for bandages. I don't know why I've been doing that. I'm going to go for elemental first, I think. As long as we get him burnt, we're good to go. And Okay, fine. I wasn't going to kill you like that, but you hit me in the face and I don't approve. Look how fluid this is, man. Just move in from the melee into the magic into the melee and back again. Alright, so now we need another fire varnish. Because this guy doesn't play around. Don't dislike the idea behind the blue chamber, but I hate the decision makers. Hey, how they waged war against Levant without good reasoning. Yeah, I, I get that. Their, their side of the story did seem a bit goofy with why they decided to do it. Oh, come on. Why does this keep happening? I keep running out of my buff right before a fight. I've never had that happen. I also, yeah, it's just uh, every enemy is missing... This is stupid, dude. I hate when this happens. You just get really unlucky in a fight, and nothing goes well. I needed Brace to work for my discipline. It didn't work. I'm not sure what happened, because he clearly hit me. Alright, Punk, let's freaking do this. Also, I didn't know he inflicted elemental vulnerability. That's interesting. Oh, yeah? Some of this, huh? That hits you twice, apparently. Yeah, he's just being dumb. This is why I don't like Obsidian Elementals. This is why, right here. Their AI's goofed big time. See what I mean? Also, the terrain is killing me right now. Like, what is this, even? Half of my attacks are going through his body. Alright, that was a terrible fight. I think I just got him in a weird spot. It just... It was one of those things, you know? Holy played through Caldera for the first time today. We'll never use heavy armor again. <laughs> What's up, Pixel Master? What, uh, what heavy armor did you set aside to go for? When you did it? I... Caldera will ruin heavy armor for you for sure. That is not an uncommon thing. The elementals have a spot in the front where they can't hit you. 
I didn't know that. Maybe I did, and I just haven't paid attention. Uh, she's just watching any anime lately? No, I haven't watched any lately. I have been busy all weekend. Okay. I'm trying to look for samples. I really don't see any. What's crazy to me is I'm having really good durability on this mace. I thought maybe it would run out by now, but no. Oh, what? That was goofy. You can't tell me that wasn't goofy. It didn't activate in the middle of animation. That was weird. Also noticed Torment's doing a lot more damage after I got that buff from Levant. Basically, I have infinite mana at this point, as long as I use it correctly. I mean, what is it? 50%? That's a lot of reduction. You have to get in their face to avoid the attacks? Okay. I got you. Oh, shoot. This is a bad idea. We're going lightning varnish all the way, baby. Oh, I need to save those for ancient dwellers, though. Bad idea. No, 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 no. They're weak to decay, not lightning. What am I doing? Really just, like, dumb moment for me. What is going on with the enemy? I'm telling you, terrain is your worst enemy in this game in Caldera. It is absolutely horrendous. I can't even fight him down there. They're just, they're horrible right now. I don't know why I chose lightning. I, I was literally thinking in my head, use lightning. They're weak to lightning. They're not. What are they doing? I don't know what's going on with me right now. I'm playing terribly. Whatever reason, these Caligrays, they caught me at the right moment. Yeah, sit down, punk. Alright, finally. What just happened? I feel like I lost my mind. Rocking the classic blue sand, although eventually I just kept the Master Trader on it all the time. Yeah, the running around thing gets exhausting. What's up, Douglas? Welcome back, man. Using candle plate, body, and boots with the Lightmender's helmet for my Caldera character. It's not so bad. The auto walk helps a lot, for sure. I, again, I don't use auto walk because I'm trying to get from place to place quickly. And that usually affects my builds as well. Um, but yeah, it makes it a lot easier. Alright, do something, do something. No! Ah, I almost had it. Dang it! I hate that about these enemies. Their stupid uh, attack will hit you even after you knock them down. I always forget about this. They didn't do it that time, though. I think I got hosed. I think that's what it was. I, I got hosed. Rodrigo! Welcome to Fearless Companion. Thanks for becoming a member, my man. That's awesome. Epic. Welcome to the channel as an official Chad. Absolute gamer. Think? Honestly, there's nothing in here. Yeah, this was a good venture. I'm, I'm glad I came in here and almost died to the Cali Graves. That was, that was really good. Great gameplay. Excellent gameplay. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you, no, you bet, man. <laughs> Good to have you. Aha! Linen cloth. We can scrap this. We need to not forget about that. It's one measly linen cloth, but it is something. Now I can get good? Yeah, there you go, Roger. You go. You're, you're a legend status, for sure. Alright. What am I about to fight? After the gargoyle. I really need to save those up. You know what? 
Let's go fire. Let's see how well this goes. It could... It could be okay. It could be bad. It's really up to whatever we do. I don't know. I don't know what's about to happen. If I fight like I did with the Caligrays, I'm going to die instantly. And that's the honest truth with you. I'm going to inflict this first. Of course. Why on earth would that knock him? Why would it do that? Because that would be convenient. I don't even know what to do right now. He's just... That doesn't even make any sense. I didn't even get touched by it. Why did it inflict to me? Did you see that? It didn't hurt me in any way, but it hit me with the, I don't know. What's I... Words. Outwards being very outward right now. And I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't approve. Oh, yeah? Sit there like a dummy? Get up! Fight me! Oh, you don't like it when I dodge, do you? Brace! Fuck it. Yeah, this is how this fight was supposed to go from the beginning. Get out of my face. Get out of my face, you nerd. Ridiculous. I ain't got time for these gargoyles. It's being bo- Oh, but I hit- He's had a sample behind him. Of course, that's why he was- That's why this whole cave was hard. He had a sample. Overconfidence is key? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> key to everything. I don't know what it is. I had a really rough time in this cave. I, I really did. I don't know what the deal was. I was getting picked off left and right. But we're going to go over here and we're going to smash some Cali Grays real quick. If I can get one on me? Nah. Ooh, these jukes though. Sit down. Dummy. Yeah. What do you want? You want some of this? Jukes. I hit him one time? Wow. See, this is what was supposed to happen earlier. I really have no idea. I think it was the terrain. I really do. I think I got screwed up by terrain. I really do. Okay. Is there a sample in here? Because that would be... Oh, yep, there is. Nope. That's uh, some star mushroom. All right. Way to get me excited for nothing. That thing dies and like... Actually, he's... Not taking a lot of damage. That's surprising. High impact, but not a lot of damage. Do they have resistance to decay? Hmm. Watch out for plague. That's what I'm thinking too. Because those orbs deal plague. He's got to have plague on him by now, right? How far is the radius? I don't really know, to be honest. Oh my word, you just got smacked in the face. Watch me go for the cool boon. This is going to be crazy. Never do this, but watch me do it anyway. We're going to... We're going to get in here and we're going to get dirty. Ooh. Okay, we've got elemental vulnerability. Switch chakrams. If I do this correctly, I should actually be able to kill him with cold damage, which is going to be hilarious. Alright. Yeah, oh, it's still white. No, I thought I had it. Oh, no, it's not. Okay. Come on. I don't think I need to explain why that was extremely stupid. Did anyone... Someone want to explain to me, because I know what happened. I got hit by every decay ball. Every single one.
That was, what, six decay balls in one hit? I have really good decay resist. It still one hit me. What the heck? I'm going back in there and killing that dude. Yeah, I got killed by Plague. But, that was ridiculous. Six decay balls right to the face at one time. This is why people hate gastro scenes. This is why people hate gastro scenes. Oh my word. I don't even know how that happened. I thought I had him. I outworded? Yep. Yep. Wow, another death. Alright. Caldera is proving to be much more difficult than I thought. When is it not, though? When is it not? I was very excited to kill him with cool, like, cold damage. That's... that's something. Blarg. <laughs> that was... I, I don't even have the words. It's just insane what just happened to me. Six decay balls right to the face at the same time. Same time. I actually didn't know that could happen. I thought they had to spread out. I thought they went through you or something. We learned something new today. It's not when you're at the... It's not when you're good at the game, yeah. I don't know what just happened. That was rough. It's rough. Look at him, he's still... Look, he's, got, he's confused. I confused him by dying, I guess. He's almost dead. This is a joke. Really? I hate when that happens. You get an enemy literally to death and then he kills you. That's... That's a sad moment. Sad moment on the stream. We can all cry about it, for sure. Now I don't have to feel quite as bad about earlier when I died to a uh, gravity. Because I died to, well, a literal enemy this time. I feel okay about that. Did not see a second sample in here, though. Mm, yeah, I don't think there is one. Oh, well. Well, let's move on to uh, anything else. Should I do another cave or... And you know what? I have an idea. We have one cave we can do that will not make us overweight. Happily, this isn't hardcore. Yeah, thank goodness. My game would 100% be over. 100%. You know how hardcore is. It's just one mess up and it goes, delete. 20% chance turns into 100 Guaranteed. I had the whole dungeon completed, too. The entire dungeon was done. I didn't need to fight that guy. That was literally for fun, and I died. Uh, of course. Of course that would happen to me. We've been humbled, though. That's important. We've been humbled. From now on, we will fight an ice gastro scene with fire and not ice. Uh, that was on me. Definitely saw that coming, but then didn't at the same time. Alright, let's see. Why am I still hot? I shouldn't be. 52. Yeah, it's a bug. Visual bug. Kind of dumb whenever that happens. Everyone makes mistakes once in a while, but making two consecutive mistakes is totally different. Right, yep. Yeah. Yeah, that one did not feel good for sure. It's all good, though. All good, though. Oh, you know what I was going to do? I was going to take my T's. Yeah. Stamina burn hasn't been a huge issue, but I've also been really lucky on just having T. Mm. The issue I'm going to have here is... Oh, yes! Let's go. I just got uh, the best jelly in the game. Well, my favorite jelly. Jelly. 
Should I take this guy on? I'm going to take him on with the Frozen, I believe. I should probably buff beforehand with Discipline. I... That's another thing that's killing me right now is I'm focusing on Brace too much. Yeah, it's just not working. It, these elementals are really stupid when it comes to Brace. Like, I'm really dumb. It just doesn't work. Their hitbox is so odd. Staying close, I don't think it hits me. You're right. All right, luckily enough, we have this weapon, which is really good. Ah, oh, come on, man. I hate El Obsidian Elementals. Their hitboxes are so bad. So bad. I'm not even like getting hit that much. It's just the fact that they're able to hit me at all. It just doesn't make any sense. Whenever I play like that. Brace is situational. Weird hitboxes and fast weapons are a bad idea. Oh my word. Are we joking right now? I'm not fighting him. Yeah, usually it's really good, but against an Obsidian Elemental, it's just not a good... That's not a good fit. I think those statues are of the Scarlet Lady. Which one? The one in... Uh, the one that's in Levant? Because I believe those are, actually. I'm going to fully buff. Absolutely buff to the max. Definitely using an ethereal varnish, by the way. We've got the gelatin, which I will eat. You probably save, but we're gonna eat it anyway. Um, what else do I have? That's about all I need. I think. Now for one of the most tricky caves in the game, due to area. With confusion, we should be a-okay. Alright, and then I'm just gonna miss. It's just like, one of the worst, you know... You have to fight a very difficult enemy in an area that is so terrible. Luckily, you can move around a bit. Okay, Confusion just being S tier right now. That was really cool. The elemental vulnerability plus Confusion combination with a... Uh, what is it? Uh, a Spirit Varnish is proving to just destroy these guys instantly. Instantly. Same statue as in the Levant as in the Scarlet Sanctuary. Yeah, yeah. Which is confusing. I don't understand why it's in Levant. It's very weird. I don't think we have an explanation for that at all. And it's very odd that that's there. It almost makes me think they worshipped the Red Lady at one point, but that lore-wise, it doesn't make any sense. Okay, we're going to hopefully run from these guys, but there wasn't a sample in there. I thought there might have been. Scarred Emissary went, went flying? Yeah. <laughs> that was a pretty clean fight, Matthew. I The Scarlet Emissary is proving much easier than the Gargoyles for this build. <laughs> uh, which is usually the complete opposite. Usually the Gargoyles are way easier than the Emissaries. For me, at least. Dang it, I can't outrun him. I can't outrun the fireballs, though. I should be able to. Red ghosts don't fight those guys, so that's a bad play. Oh, yeah, they're definitely chasing me the whole way. 
Who? Oh, I have to like, sneeze during this fight. It's terrible. Oh, that was close. It's getting really close every time. Watch this. Oof. Yeah. Come on! That makes no freaking sense! Ugh. I'm really getting screwed by Caldera right now. How did that go straight through the cliff? Get out of here, man. That literally went straight through the top of the cliff. Just goes, yeep. It was great. Hmm. Ornate Chakram is very interesting. I like the ability to use Torment when I want to. But I feel like without the Frozen Chakram, my damage would definitely be a lot lower. I've never switched chakrams back and forth. I like doing it. I just don't know how optimal it is. I mean, there's not really much else that I could replace with that skill slot that really helped me. I mean, sweep kick, obviously, but... I don't know. I've kind of liked it so far. I think we're just gonna go back and maybe the arc will stay where it is if it does i'll go do arc next if i have decay varnish that'd be really nice for that actually i should probably check my houses it might have been five days already is this back yeah it should have been five days i think should aim for an astral chakram do you like the Astro Chakra, Matthew? I don't like it. It has very low impact. You're saying for the hexes, I'm assuming. Maybe I should try it out. It's helpful to have a second Chakra just in case your main breaks. That's that's a good point. I think that's the same for a lot of offhands. They seem to have lower durability. Chakrams and guns especially. Guns break durability like it's candy. Uh, did you get the Zar Chakram? No, I didn't get the Zar Chakram because I didn't take Sorbor. I took Heroic instead. Zar is very, very good. Very good. In the top three Chakrams for sure. It inflicts Doomed and Cursed. It does Doomed, really? That's everything except for the Ethereal Hex. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool, actually. That'd be a lot of hexes. Hmm. Don't have durability problems with weapons, only with bird mask. Does have very low durability, especially when you're taking hits. Yeah, I mean, ideally, because of the speed, you don't want to be taking hits, but you're going to eventually. It does have very low durability. I think mine broke earlier, almost, and I took it off. I don't think I ever fixed it. It had pretty low durability. The Czar Bird Mask? There we go. Now, now we're talking about some good stuff. For sure. One sample is what we got from that. Not a good haul. Not a good haul at all. Ooh, I rhymed. Nice. Sixty-five weight. I still feel like that's a bit high. Mm. Wish I knew the recipes for the tor crab meat. The tor crab meat's really good. How about distorted experiment? Should be good with frozen chakram. That's actually a pretty good idea if I wanted to mess with that. That's a really good idea. Because then I would be doing so much elemental damage. Problem is, it's still pretty low. Like, 
It only does seven in each, I think. That's still a really good option. I like that idea, actually. I don't know when I'll get it, but I do think I'll... I'll try and grab it. What do you think of the old Legion Gladius with the enchant that gives fire damage, scorched, and Oh, very good. I love that sword. I love that sword without the enchant. It's very fast. Extremely fast, making it very good. There's a lot of really good one-handed swords. A lot. One-handed swords are probably... Has the... I don't know really if it does, but it probably has the best of its overall weapons. There are so many that are just good. So many. I actually need to drink water. Absolutely love one of his swords. I've never tried that sword specifically, but I, I've used well with that enchant. But I've used the sword and I love it. Confusion hex would be, uh, cool. Also game breaking. Maybe reward for a brutal side quest. You're saying like a touch hex? Yeah, yeah. It wouldn't even really be magic at that point, would it? Would you magic? No, it might still be magic. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool, though. What are you doing? I did not tell you to get in bed. Angel food cake. I think that's discipline, but we need the food anyway. Pork crab sandwich is two raw tor crab salt bread. The jerky is two raw tor crab meat and two salt. I'm actually out of salt, so I need to get a bunch more of that. Because that stuff is really good. I believe it gives protection? I don't know what all this is doing in here. I think it gives protection, though. That would be really good. Confusion of Pain Hex is called Probe. Yeah, <laughs> fair enough. We do have a Confusion Hex. It's called Cannon Pistol. That too, Cannon Pistol is insane. That's the other reason is like, Cannon Pistol is so easy to apply that. So easy. Imagine that a Confusion Hex would be called Bonk. What do you do? Like hit someone over the head with a hammer? It'd be really funny. It's like, uh, that's what they would do with the, the picture that they put on the skill. It'd just be a hammer. Like, literally just a regular hammer. Just be like, bonk. How much completed do you have, uh, the game in terms of achievements? Uh, everything except for two things. I'm missing two. One of them we believe is the jelly. I've never crafted the jelly that you need to combine all of them together. And we were talking about that a little bit ago. I think that's the one I'm missing for that. There's another one I'm missing too. It's weird because I've done the most secret quest in the entire game, which has to do with the Ancient Dwellers, but I haven't done all of the achievements. I don't know, it's weird. You guys tried the Great Hammer Weapon Master skill? Seems quite strong because one times impact damage with hammer is really huge. Yeah, I tried it with my Monster Hunter build I did. Uh, the main issue I ran into is I had too many skills, so I didn't find it beneficial. But the skill itself is really good. It's really good. It has very fast animation as well, which is nice. Especially for Great Hammer. Hey, catch you later, Benji. Thanks for sticking around, dude. It does have very short reach as well. That's, that's another thing that needs to be noted. Yeah, you can combine all the jellies. I don't know. I don't think it's all of them, actually. I think it's Gabberry, Marshmallow, and the Purple. Gabberry, Marshmallow, the Purple Vagabond, and the Yellow. Two of them are in Caldera. And you get a Rainbow Tartine. A Rainbow Jelly. I believe is the recipe. It does, like, a whole bunch of stuff. It gives you Barrier. Good for Stamina. It's got a variety of stats that it gives you.
Yeah, okay. Gabberry, Marsh, Golden, and Rainbow gives you the Vagabond. Okay, yeah. I had that backwards, but... Yeah, I definitely got that backwards. Believe giants are weak to cold damage. That was near perfection. Woo! Destroyed. Destroyed! Hopefully we don't have to fight two giants at the same time. I've accidentally done that before. Never a good idea. Ooh, I thought that was going to be close. It's proving to absolutely destroy giants. Oh, yes, I got the axe. Okay, that sells 300. I love fighting the monks, though. I think they're a bigger challenge. All right, I completely missed. Confusion plus a chakram is just too much. Nothing can really even stand up to it. Oh, I had my lantern off. No wonder I couldn't see anything. What's going on here? This cave's fun. This cave is very fun, and it has a lot of really good loot. I just got a glass sword. Nice. It's very fun because it's giants. I think giants are really fun to fight. Hmm. I think this is Steam Bath Tunnels, isn't it? I didn't check the name when I went in. Close my eyes for what I thought was 20 seconds. An hour later, here I am. Ah, I was wondering where you went, Jeremiah. Took a nap on us. Hey, that's all good, man. Champions take naps. Keep that. Remember that. Champions take naps because sleep is the most important thing. Confusion is so good. Which chakra applies it? Uh, neither of them actually. It's the the mace. So the marble morning star is a very unique mace because it applies confusion. It is one of the very few one-handed weapons that actually applies it. So get a couple hits in with this thing. And it's actually a pretty bad mace unless you enchant it with weightless, which makes it much faster. The speed really improves it a lot. So I'm just switching from melee to chakram and inflicting multiple different things. Ooh, that's pretty good too. Honestly, if you came to Caldera just to loot everything and leave, you would end... Like, you would leave the region with so much stuff, you'd be overpowered for the raid or anything else you'd come across. Really anything. Most satisfying thing is to kick a hyena. I actually 100% agree with you. It's kicking a hyena right in the face as it's about to attack you is fantastic. Such a great feeling. Oh, okay. I'm just gonna... Sometimes, you know when you just do a thing and you do it completely wrong? This is what I was talking about. These guys are tough. They're... Oh my word, I'm gonna die. That decay is doing so much damage. I think it does more damage than regular giants. Oh, it does, actually, because it inflicts plague eventually. I think. Or something. It inflicts something. I can't remember what. He's being really stupid right now. I mean, he's just spamming. I don't know. I... He's being really dumb right now. And honestly, that decay attack is a cheat because it hits you no matter what you do. Like, you can't get out of it. Uh, 
I mean, you could roll out, but it still hits you a little bit. That was extremely difficult. I thought Shockers would take this guy out really easily. I was sorely mistaken. Melee's my damage dealer, so sadly I don't go for Marble Mace. Yeah, fair enough. I think it still works pretty good for your damage, but... Not quite as good as other options. The main thing is the impact. I mean, that's literally what I use it for. I could obviously inflict confusion other ways if I really wanted to, but it's so easy to do it this way. It's unbelievably easy. Mm -hmm. Trying to find a sample. Trying very, very hard to find a sample. Like, we're out of luck. Gotta be deeper in the cave, then. Uh, what's up, Rainy Wood? To use the hand hex skills with that chakra would be good for the extra debuffs. No. Uh, I am actually not a big fan of the hand hex skills. Mainly because you have to put your weapon away to use them. And get really close to the enemy. If I ever try to actually hex enemies, typically I will go for Jinx and just randomly get at whatever hex I get. I do have the Ornate Chakram, which applies hexes. That's been pretty useful. But yeah, I've never used the hand skills much. I sh probably should because they are pretty good. They fit really well with certain builds. I just never have. Panic time weapons because you can stay at range and be less risky. Most universal weapons serve as impact damage and uh, serve as panic time weapons. Yeah, I get you. Okay. I really do think that their biggest advantage, though, is cooldown. And because I didn't go with Sorbor Academy, my timing is a little bit off because I'm used to 10% less cooldown. Typically, that's what I would do if I went Chakram. Actually, I'm going to buff Ice. Gotten into using them a lot. Yeah, I just, I think it's that. You got to get into using them. And I haven't ever. I mean, I've messed with them a bit, but not really. Tried to focus on them in a build or anything. It'd be hard to get off, but it helps my builds. Being able to focus on certain hexes helps instead of spamming Jinx. Yeah, definitely going to be better than Jinx. Jinx is very unreliable. Eats up a lot of your mana before it actually applies what you want it to. Maybe I'll try and implement them more. It's not super useful for this build because I'm already inflicting cool with this chakram, but... Something uh, we definitely could take note of for sure. Dude, I'm freaking so done right now with Brace. I'm so freaking done with it. I only have issue with it in Caldera. It's the only location. That's it. It's the only place I have issue with it. It just does not ever want to block an enemy attack. Or an enemy will just not hit me when they're supposed to. It's like, what are you doing? Yeah, see, there's the hexes. Let me get him to do a melee, probably. Or maybe ranged attack. Yeah, there we go. Elder Caligrays have proven to be an absolute pain in the butt. Okay, we're alive. We're all good. I use the Doom Hand Hex with my Holy Mission Knight. I use Radiant Wolf Sword, so that skill is always useful. I could see it being pretty powerful on a Lightning build, especially since you can already stack it really, really high. They're great with shields. Maybe I should try it with a shield build, then. Hmm. That's a good idea. All right, pull the lever. We go to kill two more Cali Grays. Mm, did my buff wear off? No, we're good. Sit down. 
Yeah, buddy. That's a really cool attack. It seems to do a lot of impact, especially after you inflict confusion. The combination's great. It's when I get into a battle where I can't instantly kill the enemy, it starts to slowly get a lot harder. I think that's a boozoo. Oh. I don't know if there's any samples in this room. I have two shield builds that utilize Hex Touch. One uses Astral, the other Elemental Vulnerability Shield. Yeah, the Elemental Vulnerability Shield is my favorite. By far. Easily. You can check the already chest, though. It might have something in there. Astral Shield Build doesn't even need a main uh, weapon. Playing an hardcore, just finish story using just Shield and Hex. Interesting. I hate that I just got that. I was trying to open the chest. I wasn't paying attention. The prize. Actually, you know what's crazy? Watch this. Panacea instantly cures it. Ha 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 ha. Panacea is amazing. Now, do you necessarily want to waste it on indigestion? No. But, whenever you have the opportunity to get rid of ingestion, you do it. That's what matters. There is not a single sample in this cave. I'm extremely peeved right now. Elemental Vulnerability Build is the best because it happens to be in the most uh, fabulous shield in the game. Yeah, literally. I think I did... Oh, that's a good point. The last build I did that wasn't modded was a... Gep's build. Um, and I used the Fabius Plating for Elemental Vulnerability. I honestly think it's just the best way to play the game. Optimally. After doing so many playthroughs. Sit down. Yeah. Take that. Dropping a lot of lightning rags. Not the biggest fan of what I just got there. So I'm going to get Mace of Seasons for Astral Build for next uh, the extra power. That's a great idea. Builds are based on fashion. Oh, clearly. I mean, that's the best way to go. Ooh. Am I going to get another? I really am getting a ton of these mole pigs. Caligrays are weak to decay. Do I have decay? I do. And we're done playing around in Caldera. We are going for max damage all the time. Let's do this. How many enemies we got? We got two. Both of them are buffed. I think I hit both of them. Yeah, this guy's definitely buffed. Would he just cure? He just cured his confusion. Or did I not confuse him yet? Something goofy just happened there. Why am I getting cold and all this stuff? I really went for the heat and the cold as much... Oh, wow. I forgot this guy has some serious impact. Fantastic. Get out of my face. Get out of my face. Yeah, I'm getting cold constantly. It's a bummer. I didn't know they dropped a cold remains, though. Fossilized Great Axe. And nothing. John Carlo, how many deaths do you have at this point? Two. Two total. I died to a gastrocene by getting literally hit in the head with every single orb of decay that you could possibly get hit with. It was the most insane thing I've ever seen. This is a problem. Um, and then I died to gravity on accident. Oh, there's a sample too. I hate when this happens. It's always at the end of the cave when you're full of stuff. You found all the good loot. 
Smoke hammer too. Oh my word, the panacea. Look at this. Look how slow I'm moving. Alright. Here's what we do. I have a plan. I have a plan. We're dropping the pickaxe because we have another one at home. Same with the fishing harpoon. This is a terrible idea, but we're doing it anyway. Okay? Now, we're going to empty both. No, we're going to empty two water skins. We're going to go grab this sample, see how much weight we have. It's going to be a lot because that's six extra weight. That brings me back up to what I just had. These things are so annoying. I agree, yeah. No, I need a mining pick for this. I'm a dummy. I just dropped my mining pick to grab... Is ever like, like, uh, think about what you say or think about what you do and you realize it's the dumbest thing you've ever seen. Just like the AOE does impact itself. Uh, so it looks low on the sword, but the double hit does double impact. Interesting. Always have that one to ten chance of just being impossible to kill, right? Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, no. All right, let's take this. Did that help? Of course not. What about... What about... Do, 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 do. I don't have it. I don't have it. I don't have it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Okay. Okay. This is bad. It's very, very bad. Um, Drop all of them. Drop that. Get the heck out of this cave. We're about to die to cold. That would not be the way to go. Sheen shot. That would not be the way to go. Very bad. Hey, thanks for the sub. Welcome to the channel. Oh, I'm literally dying to cold. This is this is great. Okay, we're, we're better. We're, we're okay at this point. We're not great, but we're okay. Fantastic. We're gonna we're gonna make it out of this cave eventually, someday, someday. Cool boon, warm boon. I had the warm boon on. I need to put it back on. There we go. And again, I somehow have the tea to cure the common cold. I don't know how this happened. But it's pretty great. Get me out of this room. Wow. Okay, so this was probably the most lucrative cave yet. We found two samples and loads of weapons. Usually, this is the most lucrative cave. But it still surprises you when it does that well. Yeah, Warm Boon. I think I forgot to put it on. Uh, Gips has decent impact. I don't know if it's amazing, but it's decent. Steam Bath Tunnels are a good cave. Yeah, it's probably the best cave in Caldera in terms of overall loot that you get. I mean, you get a lot of potions, gems, weapons, and samples at the same time. I mean, Old Sirocco is technically better in terms of everything, like the mass amount of stuff you get, but you don't get as valuable loot. Okay. Let's think about this rationally for a second. If I get attacked, I'm dead. That's the rational answer to this. I have a lot of stuff that I'd like to keep. That's the problem. That is the pro. I think we're just we're just gonna suck it up. We're just gonna we're just gonna chat for a bit. Sheen, did you see my thing? I don't think I did. I'm sorry. So the wiki doesn't list impact damage from Gep's attack, but the weapon has 1.2 speed and 25 impact. Yeah, so the reason it has good impact is because of the speed. It really feels like you get a lot more attacks in, and so you impact stuff much faster. Now, to be fair, when I played it, I played it with a shield, and shields have some of the best impact to pair with stuff like that, so... Oh yeah, Survivor Elixir. Good point. No, actually, we have Marathon Potions. Does that improve my speed? It does. Nice. A lot. Wow. I think it gives speed buff. Can't remember. I haven't played in a bit. Maybe it does. I have these other ones, though. Just, just for this reason. I just keep forgetting to use them. Actually gives you quite a bit of bonus. I uh, didn't bring bird mask. I ended up throwing it in the chest. So I didn't have to deal with weight. But again, it would be useful right about now.
It really would be useful right about now. Let's do Ancient Dwellers next. You guys want to do Ancient Dwellers? I love that cave. I feel like we should do Ancient Dwellers. Now, I have hope for that cave because Ancient Dwellers like to play a very mid-range game as well. But the difference between them is that they have a lot of times where they're easier to attack. So I think I may do better against them. The problem of Gep is that it doesn't have a good synergy with weapon skills. These don't take attack speed into consideration, just flat damage and impact. Not too much of a problem, really. It's an S-tier weapon for sure. I, it's really fun to use with the technique. Use it with the technique, it just goes... Just destroys everything. There's so many explosions. Looks very cool. Looks very cool. So, what's on the agenda? Wrong button. Can I help you? Okay. Glass sword, smoke weapon, giant weapon, another smoke, another glass. Very, very good loot there. So, what's on the agenda today? I actually don't think I want to put money into that yet, if I remember. Don't quite need that many panacea. Mm, I'm not using poison at all. Poison's not very good, to be honest, as a varnish. I like the decay better. Now what's our weight at? 69. It gets down... Like, it gets really low, and then it just skyrockets immediately. There's no really mid-level... Uh, hey Shane, it's more like a champion sleep for losers when you can use mana. You have to put that shirt on? Nice. Put the shirt on. Fair enough, Jeremiah. Fair enough. Guess why it does ethereal damage, so you can get a lot of ways to make people take more ethereal damage. Right. Spirit of Berg enchant. Um, I think we'll do Ancient Dwellers and then we'll come back to do Town. Elemental Vulnerability. That right there already is insane. Gets blade and drums is fun. Yeah, drums is nuts. I used the drums. I think drums with the Aether Bomb Mace would be fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Oh, what'd you say? I meant the first question. Since it's a question, I didn't see it. I'm sorry. Is that all of them? Yeah, it's all of them. Whether I want to or not, I have to sleep. There we go. Drums with Halberd seems cool because of range. Yeah, hitting drums is definitely a lot easier with a longer weapon, especially one that's extremely fast. Usually I say use a sword just because you're going to be hitting the drums very quickly. Um, and so there's not quite as much time where you might be worried about getting hit. But with the pole arm, it feels perfect, honestly. Hytro! Y'all already did the Caldera on episode 3. Yeah, we beat Rust and Vengeance almost the first day. Was it the first day? No, second day. We finished Rust and Vengeance this morning, and we did the faction the last time. We've been kind of cruising. Kind of cruising. Chakram insta-kills every single enemy in the beginning game, so that was insane. Caldera's definitely a little bit harder. Definitely a bit hard. I think the difference is the impact. A lot of enemies over here have more impact. So you're not just knocking everything over every single time you hit them. Should you just start doing a speedrun stream? It would be fun to see how fast I could do it. I just don't think I could do it very fast. Dang it, guys. I forgot. I gotta go get my fishing harpoon. Or, yes. I gotta go get my fishing harpoon. Darn it. 
The thing about a speed run and why I haven't done one is if you were to actually speed run it, you would fight nothing. So it'd be very boring. You literally just run through the game. I mean, you don't have to fight hardly anything other than, I think, two enemies. Depending on the faction quest. For Sorbor, you have to fight the wolf, mer wolf mercenaries at least once. Most of it can be either skipped through dialogue or just... Avoided. Like, you can run through enemies. Dang it, why is it doing that? Caldera is a little bit more iffy on my... Processing, apparently. Okay, now we have the harpoon. Do I want to throw anything else in here? Mm, get rid of these keys that I don't need. I need blood mushrooms. I have blood mushrooms. Would be a good idea to make water or uh, health potions before I leave, just in case. Sorbor is the one faction you can be a pacifist for. Oh my word. Yeah, you can definitely do most of it without fighting for sure. Let's do... Blood Mushroom. That is the first health potion I have crafted this entire character. That's not even a joke. That is the first one. How is that even possible? That's kind of crazy. If we're thinking about it, that's kind of crazy. Alright, so with elemental vulnerability, we can deal some damage there. I need to make sure that I hit the lightning beforehand. Lightning's going to be pretty useful here. Get some greasy fern sheen to make them large. I have quite a few, actually, in my chest. It's a good, good idea. Fantastic idea. How many did I make, anyway? I have four. Yeah, we can do that. We've got good water. Good, pretty, pretty much good everything. I like what we got here. Now, the confusion is going to be the big thing. I think last time I tried to fight the Ancient Dwellers, I did not have confusion. And it's a lot harder to knock them down and deal damage. So hopefully this gives me a bit of an edge here. You always got to be worried about them, though. They're such a weird enemy with a lot of interesting abilities. So they can really throw you off quickly. Very quickly. bang you some music for a bit, you know? Yeah. Okay. Literally nothing to fight on the way there, apparently. Which is a good thing. We don't want to be fighting anything. Not really, anyway. We'll take the stairs this time. It's a bit more appropriate. Who's the oldest watcher in the stream? Um, 41. Nice. Very nice. Let's see. Should I go right or left? I think right's better, right? Right's faster. Yeah. 31. Nice. Excellent. 43. Ooh. Looks like Void might be the oldest one then? Maybe. The most mature. That's what you say. You're the most mature. Unless you're not. And then you just say, um, eh, not mature. <laughs> or you could just make it up. July. We would never know the difference. Never know the difference. What I do like is about after I open this up, the Ancient Dwellers will be wandering around. It'd be kind of fun to fight them. I like fighting them out in the open more. In the Dark Cave is a lot harder. 
Most experienced gamer. Yeah, there you go. There you go. OG EverQuest player. Oh, nice. All right. We don't actually need a buff yet, thankfully. For some reason, I'm not getting a lot of light out of this lantern. I feel like it's a little bit dim compared to what it feels like usually. We're about to enter the realm of nightmares. All right. The quiet. Truly terrifying. You can hear them. You, you can kind of hear them in the dim silence. I wonder if you could see them through the door. Should we go check? I don't think you can because I think they back them. They like back them all up into the bottom. Maybe we can though. It's worth a test. You can definitely hear them from right here. What happens if you fall down? Can you not get back out because it's locked? Should we test this? I don't feel like we should test this. That sounds terrible. That sounds like ruining a character. Actually, can you fall down? You may not be able to. Oh, shoot. They already got the hex on me. That's not what we wanted. Rikia, what's going on? You missed some stuff? Yeah, we're at Caldera now. Well, we beat the Rusted Vengeance this morning and then just moved over here after some goofing off. Welcome to the stream, though. We're going to take on the Ancient Dwellers, see how it goes. Usually, pretty poorly. So, that's exciting. Spookiest cave? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely mighty. It is a very spooky cave. You don't have any idea what is here. Until you pull the lever and it just says. Gives you the steam achievement. You shouldn't have done that. You know. And that's. That's a horrifying thing to think about. I shouldn't have done that. Why not? You don't know until you. Go face to face with death itself. Now we're definitely using a lightning varnish I think. Elemental. Discharge could be pretty useful here as well. I don't know how far I need to get. We're going to hide right behind this rock right here. All right. A little bit of ethereal resistance. Lightning damage buff. Now we want to use the varnish, not the rag. Rags are terrible against these guys. God King, what's going on? And Showtimers, you too. What's up, guys? Welcome to the stream, dudes. Right, I'm going to take meat for health, just in case, because I imagine myself getting hit once or twice here. All right. We're going to bum rush him. We're just going to go for it. Can I impact him right away? Dang it, why is it stuttering every time I get into a fight again? I thought I fixed this issue. There we go. There we go. Okay. All right, that was extremely easy. Let's move on and try to kill the other dwellers before our bus run out, because that was extremely good. It's the grass sheen, the grass... Yeah, probably the grass. <laughs> That's funny. It's all the grass. It wasn't doing it until Caldera. I think the... Caldera does... It's really weird. Even b before Definitive Edition, it's actually much worse. They used to have all these rocks and stones. And it would make it 10 times worse. Anytime you were in Caldera, you basically just stuttered 24-7. Especially if you're on a laptop. Oh my word, it's brutal. Alright, come back up here. Come on. Come on. No, we're not fighting down here. It's terrible idea. Come on, you creepy son of a gun. Get in the hallway. Get in the hallway. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, so the one ability from the Chakram is making this extremely easy. I don't think so. Hmm. 
did get hit there. That was just a skill issue, though. Okay. We're gonna have to rebuff for the next one for sure. For sure. Next one is also ten times harder. I don't know how this is gonna go. I do have the... That mid-range again. That could be useful. Oof. I'm kind of nervous for this. Thought that was a tough enemy? Yeah, it's supposed to be. Go away. Yeah, it's supposed to be. Delicious brains. It's such an interesting thing to get, isn't it? Let's double check and make sure there's no enemy down here. Sometimes there's an extra. Ideally, they'll hide away in their cave. Yeah. Double check. Yeah, they're in the cave for sure. Okay, let's rebuff. I need every single buff I just had. We're actually going to go one of these. More mana region? Or health region, not mana region. I actually may take a marathon potion for this one. The speed is going to come in handy. Shimmer potion too. Literally anything I can get. Ah, oh, that sounds so creepy. Wait, where's my lightning buff weighing off? In 200 seconds. Okay. I need one last thing. What is it? Tor crab sandwich. I believe it gives me a buff that I don't have. And we're going to take a panacea as well to get rid of that ethereal, just in case I get hit. Keep the backpack on. If I can get in here and I can destabilize, that's going to be literally just... Dang it, I didn't do it. This went perfectly horrible. I'm getting hit by too many of those. Chakram is horrible here. That's not good news. Chakram is absolutely wretched. You gotta get her to stop doing that. And otherwise it's just pointless to even fight her. Okay, come on. I can do this. Move in slow. We want melee attacks only. She's not doing any melee attacks currently. Feels really good. Yeah, I'm just... Okay, I gotta go get Panacea. For whatever, I can't get her to do melee attacks. She's spamming that. Panacea, or I get Aether Bombed. That's not good. That's gonna help a little bit. Not enough, but it'll help a little bit. This is the hardest I've ever had to deal with. This is way worse than any time I've ever fought her. I need to get confusion. That's that's the key, is confusion. If I can confuse her, it's game over. But until then, it's literally an uphill battle all the way. There's no way to move in. Not with that. She won't do she won't do melee attacks. She has to do melee attacks for me to go in and fight her. She has to. This is the worst I've ever seen. I've literally never seen it this bad. This is terrible. Wow. Okay, one more. Thank you. Oh my word. That is the worst I've ever done against this enemy. How? I didn't have enough impact in the chakram to actually deal with it right away. Wow. Whew, that was rough. Mana push could help, maybe? Mana push actually would have been pretty useful. I don't know if it would have been enough, though. Your buffs are going to run out before you touch her. Yes, they almost did, yeah. Had to run her out of mana. Could be, too. Could be, too. Get the Slumbering Shield. Very cool shield. Now, I always check down here. I think there's only... Oh my word, it's so dark. It's literally creeping me out. I've played it before and it's creeping me out. Oh. 
All right, did I get a brace on that guy? I think I did. I need enough to use the chakra. I need enough. Okay. See, it's different. With this enemy, I can actually use that to stun immediately. It wasn't doing against the other one. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Don't fail me now, Chakra. Almost did. It almost gave away. It was that close. These don't even sell. Actually, I think they sell for 109, maybe. Uh, would you rather be in real life Halo 3 ODST or Skyrim World? Um, ODST, I think it'd be cooler. Probably be cooler, yeah. Yes, okay, look, here it is. Alright, I knew there would be another sample. That's the second one, which means I can go back up to the ornate chest and we're good to go. That gets here, AI, melee, or it's her AI. She's melee to back spells first. Yes, you have to bait her spells and then bait her melee. But the problem is, she was... I couldn't get in close enough to bait her melee. I was only baiting her, her spells because I was... I was Again, I was mid-range instead of close range. I should have gotten closer to her. But I was a little bit too nervous of getting hit by some of her stuff. Because you can get petrified and just die instantly. Although that is the first time I've been afflicted with Aether Bomb and survived. That was pretty cool. How much money did you farm before Caldera? Almost none. I think I saved up 80 gold bars. I didn't farm any. Those were all just from playing. Um, but I think I ended up with like 80-ish. I'm around there. We're going to attempt to use a lot of samples to fix that issue, but sometimes it doesn't work out. If anything, I can go back to Endmerker and get some more horror weapons, for sure. Usually, I like to say get 500 gold bars. It makes it a lot easier, but you don't have to. Tim, what's going on, man? Yes! One of my favorite pistols. The forged glass pistol. It looks so cool. What's up, Tim? Welcome to the stream, man. Dude, the Forge Glass Pistol looks amazing. And now we're overweight. Every single trip, we have been overweight. Again, how are you doing this without Mephinos? That's what I want to know. That's what I want to know. How are you doing Caldera without Mephinos? Because I grabbed Zorn's backpack. I was going to try and do it with Zorn's. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. It's very weird. How do you plan on paying for the specialized buildings and upgrades? So, what I'm planning to do, which is what I'm doing right now, um, while you are farming samples, so during the building process, you gotta wait five days, right? During those five days, you wanna go and clear every single cave. While you're in those caves, you wanna open ornate chests and get glass weapons and find your samples. Samples can be turned in to give you funds and all your resources, meaning you technically don't need any money to give to them at all. Um, but if you do want to give money, you have the glass weapons, which you can farm from the ornate chest. They sell for 700? I think 700 each. Uh, they sell for a lot, which gives you a lot of that money. Again, I usually say farm up 500 gold bars first because it makes it easier if you don't want to go clear caves constantly. You don't have to. But I went for the farming caves route. Just got off work, got home with some pizza. Glad to catch the stream again. Nice, man. Yeah, good to see you. I, you know what? I do kind of want a pizza. I feel like I always want pizza. I think streaming makes me want pizza. I think that's what it is. Last pizza I had was from Casey's, I believe. It was a jalapeno sausage and pepperoni pizza. Let me tell you, it's delicious. Although, I will say I'm not a big fan of how Casey's makes their hot wings. So what they used to do is they used to put the sauce on the hot wings, like the boneless chicken wings. And then you just ate them, right? They were hot. Now what they do is they give you 
boneless chicken wings with no sauce, and then you have to dip it in the sauce. I don't like that as much. I just don't. Still very good, though. She shouts, I love this community, and Pizza Hut's great. Oh, yeah, for sure. Great community, first off. Pizza Hut is phenomenal. Pizza Hut has one of my favorite hot sauces. That's going to sound crazy, but they have a hot sauce. I don't know why, but it tastes delicious. It's very spicy, but it tastes delicious. Must be in the Midwest if you're going to Casey's. Oh, yeah, Midwest. Yep. Yep, I live very close to Casey's. Uh, there's a Casey's in almost every town near me. Oddly enough. This area of the Midwest just has Casey's everywhere. Try to restrict your prep gear to just your pouch, and for your backpack, just use 10 pounds for tees and your pickaxe. Or pickaxe. Surprised that I was able to get all the way through old Sirocco. I should really do that, yeah. I'll probably manage it a little bit better when I get back. For my Caldera playthroughs, I run the invisible platform puzzle. Huge help, plus I can work it into a legacy chest Dreamer Halberd run. Oh yeah, great idea. Great idea. I did that one time. Um, I did that one time. I got up to about 460 gold bars and a bunch of silver as well while streaming. I think that was on only three streams as well. Got a ton of money. It was one of the easiest runs for Caldera I had. Just paid all the money and didn't do hardly any farming. Yeah, I like wings, but there's no good wing place in my town. I mean, Buffalo Wild Wings is the best, but it's not in my town. There's one I could drive to, but it's not near me. But delicious. Absolutely delicious. My favorite from there is the mango habanero um, bone... Is it mango habanero boneless chicken wings. They are fantastic. They're really hot, though. I mean, you can't just sit and eat them. They're delicious. You wouldn't think mango would go well with it, but it does. I'm in Kansas City, but they're all over. Yeah, there's a lot of them for sure. With just my pouch while getting the forge stone. Oh, that's true, Mystic. Right. Good habit is to eat the food straight out of the loot chest. Usually use the buffs in battle, and it saves your backpack getting jumped up. That's also a good idea. You don't really know what's in your backpack when you grab everything. Don't sleep on Korean-style wings. Uh, I've actually had a few Korean-style wings. The w I had one that was horrible. Absolutely hated it. Um, and then the next one I had was delicious. So I've had really good and really bad. Which is... Yeah. So, okay, you know, What's makes sense. Today? Sometimes so, it's good, sometimes it's bad. What's on the agenda today? 600 for the glass pistol. I don't want to turn that in yet. Never turn it in unless you have to. Learn that the hard way. Mm. Definitely don't need that many stamina potions. I actually need very few stamina potions. I don't know why I have so many. Alright, we found a plant sample, and I think we only have two rock samples right now. No, we have three. Okay. We have enough materials to do enchanting now if we wanted to. That was an issue earlier. I needed the purifying quartz. I only had one at the time. Use a single element build with elemental weakness in your specific hex. You don't need to carry any varnish around. Honestly, true. You do so much damage, it's not going to matter that much. Alright, let's do a little bit of town building, ladies and gentlemen. Which, I believe it's not going to take long. I just need to build the workshop, probably. So, what are we working on today? Hunting Lodge, not the other two. Oh, I want to keep the Dreamers right. I want to do some stuff with that. Sell some goofy items. Pearl Bird's worth taking. I think it only weighs one. Yeah, I, I put it away just because I was not using it, but I should probably use it. Sounds pretty dang good. I see you got your frozen chakram. Oh, yeah, and it is fantastic for sure. Fantastic. Ragtag Squadron, if you enchant an item... That will change in a legacy chest. Will it have both changes apply? Example, Kazite Light Armor with Aegis. Will it turn into Shadow Kazite Armor with Aegis still applied? Hmm. That is a chat question because I can't remember. 
That works for the golden knuckles, but I don't think it works for other things. Someone correct me in chat, because I can't remember. I need timber. Items keep their enchantments. Okay, there you go. But if they upgrade too, right? There you go. All right. Thanks, James King. I It's one of those things I always forget. I know Golden Knuckles do, but that's like the one that I know for sure. Yeah, no problem, Ragtag. Hopefully that helps. Jeremiah, what's up, my dude? Time for a lot of sleeping, then farm and more sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> I like how we all know at this point. We all know what's going to happen. I needed some timber, and I needed some... So, what's on the agenda? Yeah, because we have none, essentially. We still haven't cleared... I wish they'd done this better, too. It's like, if it's a slider, it should be a better slider. I actually might need to put more funds in now. I hate the way that they do that. I think, honestly, when you're in town and it's not fully built, it should show up a menu in the top right of your corner with everything you need to know about your town. Because it doesn't seem like they give you enough info. You gotta do a little bit too much walking back and forth. But it's whatever, you know. I'm really nitpicking at that point. Just, It's not like we're ever gonna get that. Okay, five days. Got it. Popeye's chicken, best chicken ever. Popeye's does have fantastic chicken. Problem is there's never a Popeye's near me, dude. Never a Popeye's near me. Not where I work, not where I live, nothing. There's nowhere. It's kind of ridiculous, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, you know what? I was gonna do some alchemy. That's why I had all that stuff. More health potions. Cool potions are useful. I feel like I should save those, though. Alright. We may do the Caligray Arena, actually. That sounds kind of fun. Um, I have an Alchemy Me backpack. I should be using that. Unless I sold it. I don't think I did. Nope, it's right here. All right. Anything that we are not currently using. I'm going to throw Ambrane in there because we aren't using it yet, surprisingly enough. Pork crab sandwich, pungent paste we're going to keep. Anything else that decays that we need to save? Cooked torque crab egg. More of those. Okra spice beetles could be very good. Gravel beetles are a good one to store away for sure. Alright, we need to repair our pick. Our pick is dead. Our weapons are not, though. That's good. Does your build feel strong enough to farm Scarlet Emissaries? Oh, yeah. Scarlet Emissaries are very easy with this build. Uh, what's hard are Gargoyles. I have had a very difficult time fighting Gargoyles. Scarlet Emissaries, on the other hand, piece of cake. Piece of cake. I don't even think I've gotten hit by them. Chakram's very good for Scarlet Emissaries. Not very good for Gargoyles because they back up too much. What about KFC Chicken? Places that by you at least? Uh, there is a KFC Chicken place near me, usually. Uh, I like KFC Chicken. Not personally my favorite, but it's good. No complaints, really. Alright, we are good to go, I think. We should get more water. Uh, Finn, what's going on? Welcome to the stream. What's my favorite, most fun build to play? The most fun build I've ever played is my Ghost of Enmerker build. Or my Monster Hunter build. Both of those are very good. I think Ghost of Enmerker, simply because Moonswipe is extremely fun. And Dreamer Halberd is epic. So personally, honestly, and I think Ghost of Enmerker is the best build I've ever made as well. I think it's just truly the strongest the most optimal. I mean, you're always having an insane amount of ethereal damage. And uh, really good stamina cost. Really good stamina cost. And mana. Where are my greasy ferns? I need to transform. Oh, I have 19 greasy ferns. Talk about a complete waste. Should be using these constantly. 
But yeah, Ghost of Ember is very, very fun. I truly think Halberd is one of the more specialized weapons in this game that just feel really strong. Should I keep all these health potions? Maybe I will, just in case. I like being prepared. That feels very prepared. Now, we are low on stamina stuff. Now that I'm thinking about it. What do we have for stamina? Let's make some bouillon. I think I can do that. You know the maze mash recipe? Huge for discipline boon users? I don't, actually. That would be pretty useful. I need a secondary thing that I forgot. Uh, this. Here we go. Let's see, it's three, so I need about nine. You never get halberds to work for me. One-handed sword and axes are the only weapon types I can reliably play with. Halberds are different. They really are. They feel a lot different, but... After playing with them for a while and getting used to their playstyle, it just feels so good. So good. Alright, now we have... Is that enough water for me? Yeah, I'm fine. Nine is plenty. What I made... Yeah, let's go do the arena. That sounds like a fun idea. I have a lot of varnishes as well, which will be useful for that. I need to get rid of some of them by just playing. What's interesting to me... Is I know why they did it, but in the arena, the Caligre arena, you don't fight a Scarlet Emissary. This is clearly because Scarlet Emissaries are like obscene monsters created by the Lich. The Caligres would never have captured them. But it's interesting because they have all the other more difficult enemies, such as a Gargoyle and Mimitur and stuff. And you don't fight the... The hardest, arguably. Really funny. Oh, that's right. I have to fight a Gargoyle there, don't I? Oof. Mole pig size too good? Oh yeah, mole pig size insane, for sure. I activated my trap card, nice. Uh, right, not as good as great Popeye's chicken. Uh, yeah, the, the Popeye's chicken salmon is really good. I don't know if I like Popeye's chicken or Chick-fil-A better though. I feel like I like Chick-fil-A better. But that could be because I feel like Chick-fil-A is more... Like, you don't get Chick-fil-A as often. You know what I mean? Chick-fil-A has a pepper jack cheese spicy sandwich, though. And it is to die for, for sure. It is to die for, for sure. It's a delicious sandwich. Delicious sandwich. And they have really good waffle fries. I love those two. I don't know about Popeyes. Have I ever had their fries? I don't think so. I don't think so. Now, I didn't bring along Decay. Decay is really... Actually, I brought one. So we'll use this for round two. We'll use Fire for round one and Ethereal for round three. This is the positive of having a ton of arches. Belly be chicken if you like to eat it with gravy. I don't know if I've ever... I don't even know if I've heard of that. It sounds delicious. Chicken and gravy? Chicken, gravy, mashed potatoes, man. That is a meal for sure. How more American can you get than that? It's a rare sandwich. Yeah, it's more of a rare sandwich, I feel like. There's already a new update for Hogwarts Legacy. Is there really? Dang. That's crazy. I wonder what they added. I'm imagining bug fixes, probably. Hello. Bye. See you later. I actually have not talked to the Primal Ritualist yet. I wish the Primal Ritualist had a sample. You just go in there, talk to him, and be like, here's a sample. Thanks, buddy. Chicken fried chicken with uh, white pepper gravy. Oh, yeah, you're talking my, my kind of talk right now. That's delicious. White pepper gravy, absolutely amazing. Amazing. Kind of like a little bit of a spice on there, but you get that, that nice mashed potato feel. Oh, delicious. Delicious. It's making me hungry. I, I hate how we do this. I feel like after the, at the end of every one of my streams, we talk about food. That's when I'm hungry. <laughs> like every single time. Isn't there a sample place back behind the hut where the butterflies are? Oh, is there really, Hafrin? I don't know. I'll go check it after this. 
That's not something I usually check. I always check behind the wind pylon, and that's it. There is? Okay, I'll go look at that for sure. That's good to know. It's only there sometimes. Right, yeah. Always have gravy in my KFC chicken. I don't usually. I just use it with mashed potatoes. Still good, though. It's a ways up to the right, but close to the ritualist. All right, so it's probably by that little water pool that's back there. I got you. Just put markers on my map based on the wiki. Oh, uh, that's a good idea. I usually don't, but I can see why that'd be beneficial. Uh, thanks for the sub, by the way. Welcome to the channel. New sub. Neat. All right. We'll just go straight into it. Why not? You know? The small placeholder object at every location that spawns a sample. So keep an eye out for them at spots you know they spawn. Okay. I don't usually pay much attention. Just kind of randomly walk around. I feel like that's probably a mistake, you know? Probably not the most optimal way to do it. Probably sleep between each round. What do you guys think? Eh, that's a good idea. Let's not be stupid this time. Let's actually use the fire instead of the the cool boon like we were... Or the imbue. I don't know why I decided to do that. Such a failed moment for me. But it happened and we gotta accept that for sure. Do I need anything else? I feel like I'm okay here. Yeah, let's just rush it. Enough fire damage should be good. Love fries with white gravy, but some people look at me strange when I ask for a side of gravy. Oh, no, I'm down with that, dude. That sounds delicious. We're gonna go Ornate Chakram first. Good idea, I think. Ooh, what? Okay. That was an epic dodge by me. Epic dodge. If I can get them to line up right... All right, does he have the... He, he does have the Hex. Good. It's too hard to use a Chakram with these Gastro scenes. Their window of attack is too... It's much too quick. It's much too quick. I. It's like the second time I found that, and it's just really... Messing with me. How did that hit me? One surely must ask these questions. Not my best fight, but it's okay. I actually think the Gastrocenes and Gargoyles are the hardest thing to defeat with a Chakram for some reason. I didn't think that'd be the issue, but I think because you can't inflict confusion with the Chakram, you've got to, you know, while using the Chakram, it's throwing me, like, a lot of issues. It's very odd. Most part, I fixed the game crashes and reloading saves. Other than that, they fixed some head flickering with hiding armor. Okay. I think I saw some of that. Not when we were on stream, but I think I saw that later on. A W is a W. Hey, you're right, Tim. You're right. You are right, my friend. Luckily, we have enough health potions where we can just keep moving. I was going to sleep, but nah. We got enough health. We did a pretty good job at staying uh, good on the healing items here. Give me a little bit more mana range. What was this one? This was Decay, yes? Yeah, it was Decay. We need resistance against fire, surely. Tor Crab is gonna suck. The Tor Crab may actually kill me here. I always worry about those annoying little buggers. And pungent paste. I should, should I just heal? I'm gonna heal. I'm gonna heal. I wasn't going to. I was gonna wait on it, but anytime you're like second guessing yourself, it's a terrible idea. Never actually done the Caligari Arena. It's pretty fun. It is very challenging. Second round is very difficult, actually. I'm gonna drop this just in case. Don't need to, but I'm going to anyway. Twer Crab is. The one I'm scared of the most. Mm. Oh, 
Mostly because of that right there. He just loves to play mid-range. I cannot... There. Ugh, I hate this fight, really. There's nothing I can do. I These weapons do not counter Tor Crabs or Mimators. There, It's the worst possible combination for this. Each time I'm in a good spot, he chucks something. Okay, this could be the play, though. The play could be just use Elemental Discharge. Now, it's not the most classy of wins. But it is a win. Regardless. Okay, he's dead. Now we're in, now we're in it to win it. I mean, my matures are nothing. It's tour crabs that just kick your butt. How, what is going on with the impact right now? It's been really goofy lately. Anyone see that? The stability bar is full, but it's acting like it's empty. Very weird. Okay, that was the hardest thing I have to deal with. The Gargoyle is not even going to be that hard. The Tor Crab is so much more difficult for some reason. I think Gargoyle is going to be fine just because I'm going to use Ethereal Varnish. Finally home now. Not a fault of laundry. What's up, Corvo? Alright, Smoke Spear. Good to sell. I'll take it. I'm not going to take the Thorny Cartilage because I don't want it. I think this is just one of those builds, you know? I mean, it completely destroyed every single thing up until Ca uh, Caldera. Caldera feels much more difficult. This did not happen with my two-handed mace build. The two-handed mace builds felt strong all the way through. And uh, I don't really know why that's the case, particularly. I think the deal was the two-handed mace build, I used the drums. The drums genuinely make the game a lot easier. That could be why. Alright, I need lightning. Afraid I was going to miss the stream while I was napping. Ah! Well, welcome back, my friend. I need the water buff. I didn't have to get rid of the burning, though. That was nice. Didn't get burnt at all. I'll do speed buff. Speed buff, I feel like, might throw me off here. We'll see. If we get far enough from the gargoyle, he won't activate. Which is literally the play. I mean, if you don't activate the gargoyle, it's ten times easier. I'll do this all day, dude. What do you want to do? Just stand there? You an idiot? Yeah. You're the moron, not me. I, I don't have to come to you. Sit down. Okay. Problem child's been dealt with. I feel like I got screwed because, again, his impact did nothing, even though it was supposed to. It blocked it with Brace and then did nothing. What the heck is going on? I'm telling you, Gargoyles are not working correctly with the Chakram. What is the deal? I activated Brace. Brace worked, as far as I could tell, unless it didn't work and I just misread it. No, Discipline is back up. Yeah, it's just not... I don't think Brace works very well with Gargoyles. It, do, it just doesn't interact very well with them. Hey, catch you later, Gummy. Hey, see you later, Tim. You too, man. That was probably the weirdest win I've had with that arena, but it's alright. Unless I haven't died to a gargoyle yet. That's what I'm kind of afraid of. Another smoke spear? What are the chances I get two smoke spears from the same area? Hmm. Oh, we got little Timmy. Little Timmy! He's a good guy. He's a good guy. 
Gargoyles are the toughest enemy in the game. I find them harder than Scarlet Emissaries. Well, I think the big thing is that... I still think Scarlet Emissaries are harder. Because they just... They feel much more aggressive. But Gargoyles, do I do think they don't work properly. There are many times where you brace them. Actually, it's not even that they don't work properly. It's that they don't work the same as any other enemy mechanically. So whenever you brace an enemy... For example, if I brace a Caligray, he's knocked... Like he's, he's staggered slightly. He's not knocked down, but he's staggered slightly. You can then run up to him and hit him and continue staggering him. But what happens with gargoyles is if you brace him, right, which knocks him to 50% stability, which means if you hit them one more time, they're continuing to be knocked back. The issue is that gargoyles, after you brace them, will take a massive step back. Massive. That's their attack window. So when they go to attack, they actually step backwards and you miss and then you just get hit four times. And I think that's their deal. They just do that and it's very difficult to counter. Which honestly is why I usually try to not fight them until they do their mace attack because that's usually better. But for some reason on this build in particular, I'm getting hit by the mace attack. I've never had that. And I think it may be due to just not moving fast enough, but yeah, you never know. Ooh, we could check this trunk. What if I get it, guys? What if I get the lightweight anything? Dang it. Just hate snails. You have to play defensively against them, unlike Scarlet Emissaries, where you can power through them with skills. And I will say Brace works extremely well against Scarlet Emissaries, which is a major positive to that, for sure. The Astro scenes, I will say, are very annoying. They are very annoying. I have EMI right now. Mm, I'm okay. Usually, the best way to take out Caldera enemies is with impact. That's why I said... I've said many times that impact is better most of the time. is because of Caldera. It's over in this region where enemies are not going to die in a few hits. And you really need to knock them down to deal crazy good damage. And I think that's really the only region that made me feel that way. There we go. Should be doing good damage now, right? Oh no, I gotta move to the other shock room. I like fighting my matures. I feel like my matures very well. They work extremely well for their design. I can't believe I got noble clothes from that. It really does depend on the end uh, the weapon too. For swords, swords work really well against gargoyles. Maces, I think it may be the mace, not even the chakram. Maces are a tad bit slower. Tad bit slower. I'm trying to think of where a sample might be. I'm going to walk there on the way back because I'm not heavy yet. More ambrane everywhere. You know what? Is there... Oh, hey, the arc moved. Where'd the arc move to? Is it in the location I think it's in? Because that would be totally awesome. I think it is. Is that the location? It is. Oh my word. This is going to be epic. It's in the location. We can go get Shriek, sort of. The Rusted Spear. Corvo, any plans for more Hogwarts? Um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I need to at least finish this run here with this build. Um, as far as streaming it, I I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I want to do yet. I would like to play more. I'm definitely playing more of it, but I haven't decided if I will stream it yet or wait till I'm through more of the story or or what's going on with that. What I may do is continue to play through it and then see if I do whenever I finish this run. I might finish it this week. 
We'll see what happens. It's pretty fun, though. I like it. I'm definitely making some more shorts on it. That's what I've been doing lately, is making some short videos on it. Honestly, the easiest way to do it would be to stream it again Friday, but I don't know if I have time to stream again on Friday. We'll see what happens. It also didn't stream very well. I don't know what happened. That stream actually annoyed the crap out of me after I got done. So, the stream crashed on Friday when I was streaming Hogwarts Legacy because the settings and the game were too high and I couldn't turn them down until I was fully into the game after all the cutscenes and tutorial. So, it stuttered and then crashed my stream. Well, when I opened it back up, for some reason my webcam, like for my stream, had, like was like right up against my face. And so, I think it's because I had to restart my computer to get the the stream going again because it was all jacked up it my webcam didn't reset so like it is i don't know it was a very frustrating thing but the game was really fun it was a fun stream watch my bud run through hogwarts killing spells worth it alone oh yeah the, the spells are fantastic the spells are really really well done give me a lot of people trouble i imagine the update probably helps as well that they just released but it was just a little bit frustrating that day. I'm like, come on, man. I had a blast, though. Figured you were working on Outward already. Came out at a weird time. Yeah, it came out at a weird time, and I wasn't sure if it was going to be a game I was going to be into or not, you know. Uh, but I, I do like it. We may... I see what I can do. If I could stream it again this weekend, I'll try. But I'm trying to get my Dark Souls 2 recap video done as well. Just a lot of projects in here, you know, working on some stuff. But yeah, Corvo, it was a really fun game. It was really fun. I think the world design was pretty good, too. I mean, I flew around for a while. I liked all the enemy variety and stuff. I didn't have any major complaints other than that. Every once in a while, the dialogue is a little bit too long. But the dialogue's good, so it doesn't bother me that much. It's like, yeah, hey, there's a little bit too much of it occasionally uh, when talking to certain NPCs, but if it's good dialogue, I'm not going to really complain that much. What do I want to use? I think a lightning. This is a mistake. We're going varnish. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Did I aggro only one? This is, this is, this is the play. This is the play right here. Oh, come on. Look at that. Just shredded. Shredded like he's nothing. Come on. Can I? Oh, I can. I can. All right. I don't really like going into the poison gas if I don't have to, you know? What the heck? What kind of goofiness was that? How'd that hit me? Yeah, that'll hit you. A little bit of an uppercut there, huh? Easy win. I mean, easy win. Nothing. Nothing. I love coming in here and doing that. That's great. Here for the ride either way. Enjoy your content regardless of the game. Hey, I appreciate it, Corvo. I appreciate it. With the killing spell, you can chain it to like six or more enemies plus instant kill bosses. That sounds really cool. I think there's these challenges that I recently found that are in the, the dark forest where they just give the spells to you and you can mess with them. That sounds really cool. All right, we need to step on... What is the order here? Oh, shoot. I forgot the order. Uh, it's the front. Back. Top, yeah, up here, mid, and side door. Dun, da, da, da. The rusted spear. Such an interesting little mini quest you can do here. We loot nothing and we get out of the poison because it's really toxic. It's literally toxic. Huh? 
What happened to my potions? Ah, here they are. I think you can out heal that actually. The longest bandage of all time. All right, let's go in here and we should be able to open up the elevator. Uh, which means when the Ark is in its location later on, we can fight the unique enemy. Which is going to be awesome. I've only ever fought him like two or three times. Because usually I just don't get the Ark done. We're going to buff here. Go back into... We'll actually activate this just in case. Where are you right now? This is the Ark. Uh, it's the Ark that moves around Caldera. I'm in the very back bottom location. That you need to have the Ark docked at a specific place to get into. That's right. Get over here, bud. Come on. You don't want none of this. I have a feeling they're right outside here. Yep, I was right. Hmm, blue Cali Gray is being very odd. All right, knocked them both. Excellent. Nice! Epic combos. Tried to figure that out with my girlfriend. We never got to, to that spot. Yeah, basically what you want to do is get a plant tent and then just sleep outside. Or sleep either outside or inside a cave. Every two days, it should move. Sometimes less than that. And you just wait till it gets to that spot and then come over here. It's kind of annoying, especially when you're trying to figure out how it works, but eventually it'll, it'll work itself out. Um, what do I want to do here? I'll probably go with Bullion, to be honest. There is a Gargoyle. Let's see if I can... Nailed it! Ah, oh, good. we just play the mid-range. If they want to play mid-range, let's do the same thing, you know? Let's just do the same thing. Did I not inflict elemental vulnerability yet? There we go. See, this is what you want. You want the hammer attack. The hammer attack is the easiest to dodge. But occasionally he'll just spam that sword attack and you really gotta... Be careful, because it is very challenging to dodge. Alright, now we pull the other lever, which is actually the one that unlocks the secret door. Well, I guess it's not necessarily a secret, now is it? That's all it is, MTV, just to let them know I thank them for 14 years of music. That's all. Alright. Can we find another sample before I leave? That would be the ideal situation. What I may do is skip all the enemies because I don't really feel like fighting a bunch of Caligrees. They are quite annoying. I don't really have room to pick any loot up either. Hmm. Let's see. If it's not in this room or the other, it's definitely upstairs. And I can't even get upstairs yet. Wait, should I check up here? I'll check up here real quick. Shoot! I was not supposed to come up here yet. Nothing. I feel like maybe killing them would be better, but we're gonna just gonna run past. We're gonna have like 13 Caligrays aggroed onto us at the same time. Terrible idea. 
Yeah, it looks like it's definitely up. And I should be able to see if it's up, too. If I go up here. Look at me dodging these lightning balls like it's a joke. Can't quite see it from here. But I do need to pull the lever. Don't want to forget that. That's a bad... Bad thing to forget when you're trying to do this. Alright, can I dodge this all perfectly again? Oh my word, it's going so swell. Look at this doofus. He's staring at the wall. He doesn't even know what to do. He's confused by my movement. Look at these two morons. Oh, we made it out. Perfect as a as a lightning ball comes behind me. What an epic just run around. Epic run around. Where are we at? Same location? Good. So if we want, we can go get Shriek. I can't right now because my decay resist is too low. I'll probably die. But when we want to, we can do that. Perhaps something dangerously acidic could free it from the rust. Amazing. But yeah, that's probably one of the more tricky ones to figure out. That and the Aether Bomb weapon. Which would be really difficult to find it immediately without any help. Just stuck up in the arc for no reason. The petrified giant over here. This is one of my favorite little mini quests for the weapon. I, this is incredible. I wish they had more things like this where they take enemies in the game and they do something with them as part of a, a mini little side quest type of thing. Caldera may have the most quests if you consider those weapons quests. I mean, they kind of are. All right, now we need our potion for speed. Let's get the heck out of here. Very fun. I don't know if I... I think it was only one day, so the building shouldn't be built yet. We got a lot done in Caldera. Already. And it's only been five days or six days-ish. That's kind of crazy to think about. That's kind of crazy. The fact that this game was made by like 10 people still blows my mind. Oh, it's crazy. It feels like a much bigger project. It really does. And especially once you start getting into the writing and the lore, you know, the actual quest designs and stuff, it's incredible. The amount of work and love and passion that went into just creating some of these stories is amazing and how it all ties back together. Especially Caldera's DLC. I mean, as much as we all hate parts of this DLC, if you do the storyline and you talk to certain people within the buildings that are based on your faction, they'll tell you different things about, you know, your uh, your faction that you chose. And it all made from the town hall, and you'll get this unique NPC, and he'll talk to you about the Cryptea. He'll give you blood infused and tell you a little bit more about the Cryptea. It's just really neat. The stories are fantastic. And how Caldera and Soroborians, both of their DLCs, were all intertwined with the story beforehand in the regular game. Like, they always planned to add these two DLCs. That's why I'm assuming they never planned to add any more, because it doesn't sound like... Like, if we read the story, the only thing else we really hear about is Tremontaine... Or, I guess we hear about four different places, but none of them are really important to the story, other than maybe the area where the Scourge come from. Tremont Tame would be really cool to visit, though. I, or Haboob would be neat, but I, honestly, Aroshi would also be really cool. Aroshi's like a pirate town. I wonder what they would have done with that if they would have implemented it. That could have been such a cool town. It's made of boats, according to the lore. Very neat. We clearly do not need 12 health potions, as I'm trying to not use them anyway. 
But we should have all the materials we need for building the town when we get to that point. Because we're already doing very good in terms of samples. I'm gonna... Should I make alpha... Uh, do I have salt? I might not have salt. Let's check if I have any more in my chest. I'm pretty sure I didn't throw any here. Oh, I did. I can actually make some alpha sandwiches. Or alpha jerky, I should say. Yeah, that is nice. So let's throw a whole bunch of that in here. We've got... 31 jerky. What the heck? 5 alpha jerky, which I don't need currently. We're going to save that for later. More ambrane. Uh, one raw alpha meat, which I should probably throw in there as well. I don't know where that went, though. Did you check pile on for Gep's Blade? I've not even done Gep's Blade, to be honest. I forgot about it. I should probably check pile on when I was there. Good point. Uh, but no, I haven't been doing that. Don't need ice varnishes. I need to stop carrying ice varnishes and poison. Both are not useful to me. I don't want poison. It's just not even good. Okay, we throw a lot more in here. And there we go. 50.5. You ever been defeated in this run? Yes, twice. <laughs> the first time I was defeated, I fell down a hole on accident. Um... It was over in the desert. There's a hole, and I made it a, one of the NPC enemies fall down the hole, and it didn't end up taking damage. It was a goof. And then I accidentally fell down the hole when I went back up. And then I got defeated by a gastro scene today as he hit me with five decay balls at the same time, and I insta-plagued, and it killed me. So that was rough, but that's it. Just goofy stuff. Nothing like a legitimate fight, thankfully. What was the dish with the predator bones? That is... Bouillon de Predator. Three predator bones, one water. Extremely useful. Attack up, 25% extra damage, and... Um... A tier 3 stamina, I believe. Tier 3 stamina. Very good. Uh, well, guys, I think that's going to be about it for me today. We've got a few days left on our buildings. We just started Caldera. We're going to have enough money to get this really rolling when we get into the specialized buildings. And I, we haven't even done every cave in this region yet. So still lots to do, but uh, we may finish it on Thursday. We might. Because... Caldera doesn't take as long when you know what you're doing, thankfully. Wrote an essay about why not to play Outward Hardcore. One of the reasons was that you wouldn't die heroic deaths. Yeah. I'm not the biggest fan of Hardcore, you know? Not the biggest fan, but it's, it's okay. Did you happen to see the Butterbeer on Discord? Uh, no, I haven't checked it yet. I'll go check it after. Did you send it in the regular chat? Because I hadn't checked the... Uh, channel chat yet in a bit. I've been just personal messages mostly. Player would most certainly die and lose many hours because of something stupid. General, I think. Okay, I'll check it, Corvo. I appreciate you sending that. That's cool. Waking up and dying because of some bug or gravity. <laughs> yeah, I... Like, hardcore's there if you really want to challenge yourself, but when you're just trying to have fun and create some goofy builds, it doesn't quite... It's, it's more annoying than anything else, I think. I like this ornate chakra, by the way. That's pretty cool. Well, guys, thanks for watching. Appreciate you being here. Um, love the support. We had four new members today and a few donations. So thank you for that. That's awesome. I am working on my top five chakra video right now. Hopefully it will come out tomorrow if I can get it done tomorrow morning. Um, yeah, thanks uh, for being here, plays. Appreciate that. Thank you as well, Benvis. Appreciate you guys watching. It's a lot of fun. But yeah, Chakram video, and then the Dark Souls 2 recap is my main projects for this week. As well as some Hogwarts Legacy shorts that I'll be making. Frozen Chakram number one. Yeah, Frozen Chakram's clearly number one. Yeah, easily. Easily. I mean, it's it's better than everything. I mean, Sar is... 
I actually don't know if Zara will be number two. I thought about Distorted Experiment. I'm going to have to play around with them a bit to see which is better. But Zara, Distorted Experiment, and Frozen are top three easily. He said or unsub. <laughs> Catch you later, Mystic. But yeah, that's it for me today, guys. I got to go eat something and then do IRL stuff. So, very fun. Uh, but thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on Thursday, 4 p.m. Central Time until 12 a.m. So, later in the day. Thanks for today. Have a nice one. Yeah, catch you later. See you, Jeremiah. Anybody else I didn't get to say bye to, you're awesome. And I will catch you on Thursday. See you guys.